Well, hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining us this morning on Adobe Live. We've got a very, very fun, packed day for you, but I'm so glad to be here next to my dear friend, my dear colleague of more than 20 years, one of the best people I know in the world, Jason Levine. Terry White. <laughs> What's going on, man? So good to see you, man. And you know, it occurred to me, we haven't been side by side on stage. On stage, even on camera. In a while. In it's a, been years. It's been years. So, so great to see you. And pre COVID. Pre COVID. Pre, I mean, yeah. it's years. And we are here on a very special day, perhaps one of the most pivotal days in Photoshop's history. And that's Absolutely. not an understatement. It is not an understatement. And you're not someone who likes hyperbole. No, I don't. And I'm not someone who even gets excited easily, but this is the most exciting stuff that's happened to Photoshop in at least 20 years, in my opinion. It's also um, significant, to me, it's as, as significant as layers being introduced in Photoshop 3, because that changed the way you use Photoshop forever. Right. This changes the way you use Photoshop forever. Well, you're gonna to get to see it all. So this first section here, we're talking about new features, and specifically, I know you're really kind of highlighting the generative. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna get there. Tons of that. We got a so. ton of stuff, but it really is a major, major update to Photoshop. Absolutely. And uh, I can't wait to see it. So, take it away, man. Let's, all right, let's see it. Let's start off with some just the, so first of all, some news because a lot of people ask questions when I when I post a video. Is this available today? Is this or when will this be available? Do I have to sign up for it? Do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? So first and foremost. As of today, as of early this morning, there were two updates that you should be aware of. One is the regular Photoshop update, which is, I think, version 24.5. Yeah. So 24.5 is the new version of regular, everyday Photoshop that just came out today. Then there's a beta right. number 24.6. That is a separate install, and I'm going to get to that. I'm going to show you where to get that in just a few minutes. But two versions of Photoshop, and you can install them both. You don't have to uninstall the main version before you install the beta. You know, I'm side by side. You can even launch them at the same time if you ever needed to. Um, I've had them both running before. Right. No, you can do that these not days. On purpose. It's, it's <laughs> not. It's not dangerous <laughs> right. to have the the side by side right. installs. So yeah. um, you can install the beta. You can whenever you don't want the beta, you can uninstall it. Keep your regular version. Doesn't impact your regular version. All right, so with that said, I'm going to dive into a few new features, four new features in the release version, and then we'll talk about the beta, where to get it, and what's in the beta. All right, here we go. So first and foremost, I'm going to simply turn this feature on. You should have it on by default when you install, but I'm going to, I'm just for so I can unveil it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to uh, turn it on. Under the window menu, you should have something called contextual task bar. And like I said, that's on by default. And if you don't want it, this is where you turn it off, like I did. So I like it. Actually, I, I only turned it off just to show it to you, but I right. will always have this on. Because you might think, well, isn't that the same thing or isn't that similar to the uh, control panel at the top? Because the control panel is context sensitive, right. Right. but the control panel is for whatever tool you have selected at the top. So if you if you switch to a different tool, it'll give you the options for that tool. The contextual taskbar is predictive, meaning that it's designed to present options for what your next step might be. Right. So for example, if I pop over to a portrait, my next steps could be that I want to select that subject or I want to remove the background. So whereas I may not be on any of those tools that allow me to do that in the control panel. So see the difference? Control panel, tool settings, contextual taskbar, what you might want to do next. And this kind of speaks to the whole sort of intelligence concept that we're going with a lot of these right. features. So right? just Photoshop getting smarter and helping you along the way by predicting things you might want to do next in the contextual taskbar. And Speedy agrees, loving the new taskbar. Yeah, I yes. love it. I, I, I like, <laughs> someone said, can't believe it took 30 years to get this. <laughs> was that you? <laughs> no, it wasn't. I, 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 <laughs> I'm no comment. On the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it took 30 years to get this. No. Anyway, uh, and you can move it around. And if you, even if you don't move it around, sometimes it will move on its own to yeah. get to like a spot out of your way or where it thinks you need to be. And I'm going to show you how to pin that so it doesn't do that. But anyway, so I can I can do select subject, click right there. I don't have to go find it under a menu. I don't have to make a keyboard shortcut for it. It gives it to me now because I made a selection with select subject. 
it's now giving me selection choices like right. deselect, invert the selection. I didn't know what that one is. Let's see. Transform the, oh, cool. Yeah. Transform the selection. <laughs> I'm learning. Giving I'm learning you some ideas, learning all the way. Yeah. Masking, um, adjustment layer. So it's giving me all of those things right off the bat. Now, if I deselect, then it goes back to predicting what I might want to do next. So I might want to remove the background. Remove background and boom, it masks the layer, creates a layer, masks it, and does all of that work for me. So loving the contextual taskbar. Can't live without it now. It's like ingrained in my workflow right. as of today. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, eight hours and five <laughs> yeah, minutes ago. Yeah. Actually, I have been using a little That's longer That's right, yeah, that. yeah, But yeah. anyway, ingrained in my workflow. Can't imagine life without it. Love the contextual And to your point, this is, this is that next evolution in Photoshop. This is something which people right. who start using Photoshop now will see this, they'll have this enabled, and they'll want to continue to use this in case. Yeah, and, and uh, a lot of what I'm going to be showing you today, some might say, well, oh my god, that's great. This makes, makes Photoshop easier for me. Some might complain and say, well, I don't want it to be easier. I learned the hard way, and I want it to mm -hmm. still be hard. Turn it off. Right. Go, back, go back to doing it your way. So a lot, a lot of this, we're laughing. We're all laughing because that people get that way. Yes. Like they feel, I learned it for 20 years and it should always be hard. It's It can always be hard if you want. You don't ever have to use the easy stuff. Yeah. Okay, any, anyway. And Oscar Blanco agrees. He's been using Photoshop since 2.5. I've been trying that Firefly. Yeah, I yep. mean... New ways, new things. I know. And, and, and so it doesn't have to change the way you did change, it. It doesn't have to change, right. If you don't want to use it, go back to doing it your yeah, way. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to undo that because that, that's not what I need to do. Anyway, so that's number one, number one, the new contextual taskbar. I'm going to be using it throughout the rest of the day uh, for these streams or for this stream. And um, you'll just see me use it in some interesting ways going forward. Next up, number two is a new tool. And it's a new tool that's in the group or family of content-aware fill tools. Mm. But this one has a twist. So the first tool you might remember that we introduced way back when, I don't have the year, some trivia buff will get that's us right, the yeah. year <laughs> in the chat, I'm sure. But the Sorry, we'll buy you lunch right. if you know the year. That it, With Jason's money. Uh, thank yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the healing brush tool introduced way back when, whenever it was introduced, and it was great for removing blemishes, for removing parts of an image, small pieces of an image, and just simply blending it in with the area you told it to use. Right. So if you would have to hold down your Option or Alt key, click on an area, then use the healing brush to heal with that area. Still works that way. Has always worked that way. The next one up was introduced, I think, a year later, and that is the spot healing tool, healing brush tool. So the difference between just those two is the first one, you always have to pick a spot first to heal from. And there are some instances where I still need to do that. Right. Rarely, but still some instances. Yeah. <laughs> and then once they came out with the spot healing brush tool, I, I pretty much only use the other one when I have to. Because this one, I don't have to pick a spot first. I just click. Like, for example, if I come over here, I select it first. A little old school now. I know. Yeah. If I come over here and I say, I don't, I don't want that one little flower, let's make the brush a little bit bigger, and I click, that one little flower is gone. So I don't have to go select a spot to use. It just uses the surrounding pixels automatically. Great. The next one is the new one. So the new tool in the same family is the new remove tool. Now, the difference between that, the other two, and this one the other two only use either the surrounding pixels or the area you told it right. to use. This one still only uses the pixels in the image, but it uses them using AI, uses them more intelligently. Now, we're going to talk about our Firefly technology and generative fill and all that stuff coming up. This is not generative fill. This is AI, but only with the pixels already in the image. So again, adding more intelligence to how it's filling or removing in this case. Correct. Yeah. So, for example, um, let's say I grab the new remove tool, and I'm going to go ahead and just make my brush bigger, make the brush a lot bigger, and I want to get rid of, like, I, I want to keep these, these are wildflowers growing in the railroad tracks. I don't want this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush, and brush all of that. Now, keep in mind, there's a track, there's say, two tracks running behind it, and when I let there. go, 
it uses AI and hopefully it does a good job and it did. <laughs> filling back in those tracks. Yeah. So if you ever ran into a situation where the healing brush or spot healing brush didn't quite fill in the background, right? right. Because it had to guess using the surrounding pixels, this is gonna help you. Well, and it guessed, and a lot of times you'd get additional foliage, you'd get rocks, right. you'd get something weird that was skewed that you'd right. have to reclone and redo. Exactly. And this intelligently now knows, ah, yes, there are these horizontal well, tracks. So it's, again, it's yeah. looking at the yeah. scene, trying to figure out what you want and doing it that way. We have a lot I, of oh my gods, by the way. Yeah, I, know, I think I have another example. Yeah, Here's yeah, another right, example. Right. This is the first example I ever tried it on. I, I, I don't like distracting objects. So this this light post hanging down, pointing down her head is like, here's a person. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, that's very post, useful right. in that photo, Terry. What are you right. talking about? If I use the healing brush, it will absolutely remove it, but what it won't necessarily know how to do is right, the, the tunnel, arch, yep. the curvature mm -hmm. of the arch. So again, using the um, new remove tool, and by the way, it's inter here's an interesting tidbit, the remove tool paints in pink, the healing brush right. paints in black. in black. So that way you can kind of tell right off the bat if you're in the wrong tool, it's not pink, then it's not doing it. So I'll let go just now, and again, Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> remove the and keep the arch. Yeah. That's the whole point. So the remove tool is amazing for those kinds of things. That's right. One of the things I noticed when you're doing this is, does it make sense to go outside the edges in the, in the similar way that maybe you would have yeah. used previously? Yeah. You notice my brush was a little bit bigger, so I right. went. I always go a little bit outside of the edges to mm -hmm. do this kind of stuff. And Just that's a generally good practice for using that. Now we're going to take it to the. We're going to take it to the next level. Because that one was, even though it had to figure out the arch, right. that was pretty easy. Yeah. Because nothing else around Chat, it. Why don't we do something right. a little more challenging? A little more Maybe. challenging. Yeah. So you see these posts on the rooftop here behind her hat. If I were to use the healing brush to remove the taller one, it will most likely start pulling in her hat. Because it's the next closest object, right. it's going to think, oh, you want some hat over in this area right. too. And then you'll be <laughs> like, no, no, no. You'd have to patch out or get rid of the hat. So I'm going to make the brush a little smaller, and I'm going to, right next to our hat, paint this post, but not touch the hat. I'm just gonna paint this post out. Now keep in mind, there are shorter posts next to it, and when I let go, it filled it in with the shorter post. I just, I didn't get close enough to the hat, yeah. so let me get a little closer. There we go. It did not pull the hat into the area. So, what this is for is removing larger things that are closer to something. So, if you were frustrated by the spot healing brush or the yeah. healing brush or even the patch tool because, again, depending on what you're trying to do and it wasn't quite doing it right, give the remove tool a try. Yeah. That's amazing. I know, right? It's just, again, another tool in the tool chest to make my job easier. And to your point earlier, it just sort of does what you expect it to do right? pretty effortlessly. Yep. And you need to make a small correction, do it again, and it, it, it retains the sky, it retains that ribbon that's on top of the hat. I was yep. looking at that and going, oh, that's what that is. There's uh, like yeah, a- Yeah, it's a ribbon. Yeah, it retained that. Yeah, and I can still <laughs> clean up one little yeah. spot there, but it, yeah. it did a great job in removing all of that, yeah. and especially the spike here at the top, mm -hmm. the lamp post, completely gone. So, uh, give that tool a try if you need to remove objects from a scene. I'm gonna give you another way to remove objects from a scene, though, that's pretty mind-blowing. Are we, are we yeah. going there now? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay, Not yet. okay. We got a couple more. Couple so more, So that okay. was number two. Number three has to do with gradients. So I have a blank canvas here on purpose, and I'm gonna hit the letter G to go to my gradients. And of course, it remembers the last gradient that I used, and I have the new amazing gradient preset. Oh, didn't mean to do that yet. <laughs> I have the new amazing gradient presets. Uh, so if I twirl those down, you get some nice, beautiful presets. So I like that one. And for those of you who use gradients, have been around for years and years and years. Uh, the last update to gradients were to just make them look more realistic, less banding, less to make them look more natural, like they're part of a photo. Right. This takes it to the next level. So taking that technology to make the gradient look better, but then going in and making the gradient more useful, non-destructive, and more editable. That's what we're doing now. So if I go ahead and I just pull out, I, I chose the one I want, there we go. 
and I just pull out a linear gradient like so, it does what the gradient would always do, but with a, with a twist. Gradients in the past would be like painting on the layer. So the painting would be permanent. So you'd make a new layer, put a gradient on it. If you need to make a change, oh well, do a new gradient. Because once the gradient was down, you couldn't move it, you couldn't change it, you couldn't pick a different color, you couldn't do any of those things. But in other applications like Illustrator, you could do all of those things. <laughs> you could pick a different color, you could move it around, you could do all those things. So that kind of functionality has made its way into, um, into Photoshop. So for example, I have the gradient stops so there's the green gradient yeah, stop. So much easier. There's now. the blue gradient stop, and I'm just shifting them around. There's the light blue gradient stop on the end. If I want to change that light blue to red, I just double click on it, go to red. Now it's red. Right. And you can add stops. And I can add stops, right. So if I need a new stop, I can never remember where to click. Oh, there, there we go. So click right below it. That adds a stop. Then you can change that one to a different color. So yeah. let's make that one yellow. And you just go crazy with adding stops. It's actually and, very nice there, Terry. Yeah, well, thanks, nice, right. nice design and, skill. And you again, <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to keep a straight face through this yeah. because of this guy. Anyway, um, I think you lose your train of thought. You maybe, oh, anyway, so the gradient, <laughs> having the four colors there, easily adjustable. So you might say, well, if the circles are the gradient stops, then what are the diamonds? The diamonds amount allow you to control the distance between right. the, the color and the stop. So if I wanted it to be a hard stop, bring it closer to that one. If I wanted it to be a hard stop going this way, bring it closer to that one. So those are always going to be there. So for every color stop you add, you're going to have a new diamond to be right. able to control it. If you want to get rid of a stop, so if I don't want this blue anymore, I can just click on it and hit delete. And now that stop has is gone. And these new live gradients really kind of remove that old, I mean, I think I've I'm not afraid to say it, would pin you and go, which direction do I have to oh, I draw from? I which corner? I, I, oh, that was the other thing, right. right. If you draw it from the wrong direction, oh well, undo. Undo, do it, do do it, it again. No, right. it's still not right. right yeah. Shorter line, yeah, bigger shorter line. line. Yeah, yeah. So now you just yeah. turn it. If, right. if you did it <laughs> right. in the wrong direction, just turn yeah. it to the direction you want to go in so good. and pull it back out. So no longer are you stuck with a gradient that you did, or especially now if you caught it right away, undo. Right. Do it over. You caught it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, too bad. Delete and yeah. do it over. Like, and hopefully it's on a different layer because otherwise you're host. So uh, gradients are, are great. Now, uh, one of the things that I was trying to figure out was like, wait a minute, what if I want to do a new one now? I want to do a, another one, not this one. I want to edit this one anymore. So just hold down your shift key. Let me pick a different color here. Hold down your shift key. Oh, I went. <laughs> Hold on, shift key, I was doing it too soon. And drag out a new gradient. And notice what it does. It adds a new gradient fill. So each one of these is on a fill, on a different fill layer. Now I can change the color, which is what I was trying to yep. do up front. And it changes the color of that one. So I still have that gradient on top of that gradient. I can use blend modes and start blending them in and create some interesting effects uh, just combining the two, yeah. depending on the blend mode that I choose. So that is the new gradients. Oh, and by the way, uh, you're not just using linear gradients. If you want to make it a radial, radial yep. gradient. <laughs> and this is something we saw kind of a sneak of last yep. year at Max. Yep. Yeah. Want to make it a radial gradient? Now you have that control with your radial gradient as well. So very cool. And of course, we can't go without the, the I call it the radar gradient. Yep. <laughs> Boop. 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 Sound effects not included with Photoshop 24.5. I, I'm for hire, though. You yeah, want to right. hire, me, <laughs> you want to hire me to record the sound effects? <laughs> Boop. Ah, <laughs> uh, good one, Mark. Yes. Now, if, to you, the crowd. if you saw a UFO come in there, you'd freak out. Anyway, uh, radar, uh, diamond effect, and I forgot what this one is. This is the reflected gradient. Reflected gradient. And one more. This one is it's the a gradient diamond Palooza. gradient. Yeah, the diamond. That's the one I was looking for. So the diamond gradient creates a diamond look in the middle to give you that. So cool. And again, so want to switch colors. Now switching colors is easy. You don't have to start over. You don't have to draw the gradient again. So we've been in the blues. Let's go to the reds. Very cool. All right. That was number three, gradients.
Are we ready? Number four. Nope. Still no. Ah, oh, you're Got making me hold more. up. Got one right. more. Juan's asking a very relevant question to what is it? about generative fill. He's oh, not seeing it wait. yet. You I gotta know. wait. You gotta wait a minute. <laughs> gotta wait a minute. Uh, I, I didn't fly all the way out here to, to get right. it to you no, quickly. No, you gotta wait. I'm just trying to think what image do I want to do it on. Yeah, we'll do it on this one. So this one has actually caused me some problems this morning because there's a feature you should have in the release version, but for some people it's not showing up. For a lot of people it's not showing up. So the feature is actually um, adjustment presets. Now, if I were to go to the website and I were to go look at adjustment presets on adobe.com and it says introduced in Photoshop 24.5, as I have been telling people, it's there. For some people, including Jason on his release version, it's not there. So we'll have to follow up with the Photoshop team yeah. to see what's going on, why that didn't roll out, because even the website says it should be there, why that didn't roll out to the release version. I'm in the beta, so and I'm going to tell you about the beta after this. So I have it, but or at least I had it. <laughs> Let me check. I haven't checked this morning. <laughs> Let me make sure I have it. Uh, adjustments. And so we yeah, are, I have yes. it. Okay. All right. So yeah. <laughs> when you go to the adjustments Wipe panel, yeah, I know, right? Because hey, then don't worry about it. Uh, uh, what's the uh, neuralizer? Neuralizer. Yeah, the neuralizer. Don't worry that's about right. It. Forget what I just yeah. said. No, it's it's here. So let's go back in time. Right. My <laughs> time stone. What you should have when you go to window adjustments is the adjustment preset panel. So let me pull this out so you can see it. And uh, I'm looking at a few of these. If I were to scroll down, I, oh, hang on, if I scroll down not that much and click more, and then pull this down, there are 32 adjustment presets that you are owed in the yeah. release version. For some reason, they're not there. But as you hover over these, you'll see what they yeah, do. that's great. And it's great that you get a preview before you you know you have to click, undo, right. click, undo. You get a preset of what it's going to look like. Kind of the way the profiles, presets, right. and Lightroom. Yep. Yeah, it's wonderful. So great that it does this. And if I see one I like, let's say I like this one, kind of, kind of makes the sky bluer, so forth and so on, then I can click it, and it adds it to my document. So look at what it does. It adds it non-destructively. So it adds the adjustment layers necessary to make it look yeah. that way. So it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be how many other adjustments it takes to make that photo look the way the preview did. And what's great about these is, A, they're non-destructive, so if you don't want them, you can always just turn it off. Right. Number two, if you if you want to adjust it, you can't. Right. <laughs> right. So if you double click on it and you say, well, no, I need it to be a little brighter, you can right. make it a little brighter for that particular photo. Right. So. It's just a quick way, like presets. Right, in general. Right, yes. presets in general, mm -hmm. to give you a look, and then you go change it if you want, or turn it off if you want, delete it if you want. I love that you have one. the editability, though, for each of the adjustments yep, each of the within adjustments the preset. Within the preset, exactly. so, so, And also, sometimes I know when I've added adjustment layers in the past, again, I think you're probably the person who showed me how to use those 20 years, whenever it was. Um, uh, yeah, making adjustments and kind of understanding how that process worked on a single individual one affecting all layers was kind of sometimes I know, an yeah, because it, it it affects down. Right. So right. if you have three layers in three different parts of the photo, right. all three layers get the adjustment. So right. you could mask the adjustment to a specific right. um, layer, or you could just put the layer you don't want it to apply above, above it, and so yeah. there are ways around it. Mm -hmm. All right, so adjustment presets. Missing in action for some on the release version in my beta, so it should be in the beta, which I'm going to show you now how to get to. Hopefully, that gets rectified and it moves to the release version. I'm not sure what's going on because I just woke up to that this morning, so yeah. I don't know why it's not there. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's time. It's time. It's time. So now we're going to dive into downloading the Photoshop beta. Now, this is available to everybody. Yep. No uh, waiting. There's no waiting. You have to sign there's no up. sign up. Everyone has access to it. Everyone with cur that currently has Photoshop. That has currently access. has Photoshop, yes. And if you've never done it, maybe you've, you've come across them, now you'll know how to access them. And I believe you can still also access like the video betas from there as well, yep. which are I, also for... I don't want to yeah, say because yeah, yeah. I don't know. Because yeah, I yeah. see stuff that you may not see because yeah. I I'm, I'm, I'm work for the company. Yeah. So you should have other betas if they're yeah. available. Okay, so uh, the, those four things, remove tool, contextual taskbar, Adjustment presets, and I always forget the one. Gradients. 
Those four things should be in release version with the question mark around adjustment presets. For everything else we're gonna talk about today, it's gonna to be in the public beta. So you'll notice that my Photoshop says Photoshop beta. That's because I'm actually running the right. beta and I'll be running the beta from now on because it has the magical feature that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. How do you get this beta? Head over to your Creative Cloud app where you download all Creative Cloud apps and it, there's even a banner for it today. So it says, dream bigger, get the Photoshop beta. But let's say that banner wasn't there and you didn't see it. Then over here on your left-hand side, you'll see beta apps. So beta apps is where you go to download any betas that we make publicly available. Right. So if you click on beta apps, then you will see in your list the Photoshop beta and you will see an install button. I've already got it, so it's, it's, it says Just open for me. Yep. But you would go ahead and install it, and um, ew, it even says open on Apple Silicon. So it installs. Someone asked that question too. Is it available for Apple Silicon right. yet? Yes, yep, it is. It's native, yep. And uh, you can just open it, and away you go. Again, you don't have to do anything with your release version. You don't have to uninstall it. I don't even think you have to quit it. You might have to quit it during installation, yeah, but that's it. Yeah. yeah. By the way, and you can, of course, do the same thing in the CC Desktop app as well, whether you're using the, the web interface or a CC Desktop. I'm in the, yeah, I'm in the CC Desktop oh, app. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm in the Desktop app. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's how you go get it. So it's 24.6 .6 is the beta today. <laughs> Maybe a dot one later. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, anyway, you, that's, visual, yes. that's the one today. All right, once you install it, and um, some people were saying, oh, once I installed it, I didn't see the generator field, I didn't see this, I didn't see that. So I'm going to recommend just as a troubleshooting step, if you installed it and you don't see the things I'm about to show you, uninstall it, reboot, yeah. install it, and that has solved it for people in the chat. Yeah. So once they, yeah, once they uh, uninstalled it, re reboot it, installed it, then everything was there. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to get it, what is it? So I, it has the light, it has the white background icon for the PS, so that way you know which one's which, it's the beta. And now we're gonna go into a world of examples. All right. And again, <laughs> set the stage here, Terry, because this is a fundamental change to the way you think about working in Photoshop. It is. That is not an understatement. It this is. will completely change the way you do things in terms of how you not just process imagery, but in many ways, re changes the idea of compositing to some degree. It changes it to a big degree. A, a huge degree. So here's the way I like to like to explain it to people that are like, well, what's it doing? Or or is it doing something like, you know, is it doing something weird or strange or whatever? Generative fill, which is the feature we're talking about, is really not doing anything you couldn't do yourself manually. It's just doing it at warp speed. So where it might take you two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, two hours, two days to do something, it's doing it in about 20 to 30 seconds. That's really the difference. So. Again, for the people that say, I don't want to learn new things, I want to keep doing it my way, <laughs> then keep doing it your way. All right, um, how much gigabytes does it need? It, it, the system requirements haven't changed, so it's the same system requirements mm -hmm. as the regular. If you can run regular Photoshop, you can run this right, one. Right, right. Uh, all right, so let's start off with a simple example. First of all, I noticed that before I even get into generative fill, I noticed this one little spot at the top of the frame here that bugs me. My OCD will not let that go. So I can use the uh, new remove tool if I want to just, even though it's not worthy of the remove tool. Right, yes, use the right, new yeah. remove tool Great example quickly, there, T. Yeah. Get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any of the tools would have got rid of that. All right, next up. So here's the scenario for this photo. Uh, this was in my studio. I, I took the shot and I inadvertently cropped to, or shot too tight and right. cut off her right side. The slice off the arm of course, technique of I the know. photographer. And yes. out of hundreds of frames, <laughs> this is the one they really like. Right. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I really like this one. Do you cut off my shoulder? Right. Bad photographer. Uh, and that's not how she sounds. Anyway, <laughs> that was my... Yeah. That was what stupid. is up with that, that was, Terry? That was, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, she sounds much better than that. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was just, uh, anyway. So 
What are we going to do about it? I could manually copy the arm on the left, right. flip it over, clone it, clone it in, clone, it yeah, distort it, kind of warp it in, try and make it look real, and that would take time to do it. I could right. go find another photo where I didn't crop off the arm, right. copy that one over, Hopefully that one's the same exact angle. Hopefully it fits. Right. So warp is all. And you're usually shooting handheld, so right. it's an oh, added, yeah. it's right. an added problem. But yeah. you could you could do if it. If I move this much, right. then it's not necessarily gonna look right. You could do it, but all those steps that you just heard, that's that's minutes, that's that's an hour at least. It's a lot of time. Yep, yeah. exactly. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our crop tool, hit the letter C, I'm gonna uncrop. I'm gonna uncrop a, a good amount this time. I, I normally don't go this far out. And nothing happens. I just told it to right. give me the space. Right. <laughs> so now I'll use my rectangular marquee tool. I hit the letter M. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a selection. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm selecting not only the white space, but I'm also cutting into the image just a bit. Because yep. it likes to have that reference to kind of, it just knows, it, it guesses better when you don't give it a hard line right. to make the adjustment on. So now that I've given it that adjustment, I'm going to go into the new taskbar, and there's a button there because I made a selection. That's the That's key. That's the key. That's the key. Because I've had people all morning long, I don't see it. You won't see generator fill if you don't have a selection. So here, if I deselect, oh, went the wrong way. <laughs> Woo okay. Generator fill is gone. Right. So you won't see it. Right. It's not there if you don't have a selection. So make a selection. Then grab a little piece of it. Anything, any selection whatsoever, right. and then generator fill will show up as an option. Also, let's say, hey, I don't, I don't want to use a contextual taskbar, but does it, do I have to have it to use generator fill? No. Another way to get to it is if you want to, you can go under the edit menu, and generator fill is there as an option as well. So if you don't have the taskbar, that's the other way to get to it, and that's another way to check to make sure you have it. And if can you do a keyboard shortcut for that too? I imagine not unless you add your own. It's not there by okay, default. Okay, yeah, you yeah. can add one. For but it. you can yeah. edit your keyboard mm -hmm. shortcuts if you want to do it that way. Yeah. All right, I like the taskbar, so that's the way I'll be doing it from now on. But I showed you where to go if you mm -hmm. if you're anti <laughs> taskbar for some reason. All right, generator fill. Now, when you when you bring up generator fill, it's prompting you to give it a prompt to tell it what you want it to do. The only time you need to tell it what you want it to do is when you're adding something right. to, that wasn't there or replacing something with something new that wasn't there. In this case, I don't need to tell it anything. I just leave it blank and click generate. Mm -hmm. And this is where that 20 to 30 seconds comes in. And it's probably longer today because all of you are working in it now. <laughs> so Jason, how's your flight? It's good. I mean, I'm just thinking, how long would it take us to manually repair this? Will it actually do what we ask it to do? There it is. Now, not only did it do it, <laughs> but it gave me three versions of it. So you always get three versions of it in your properties panel to click and choose from. So that arm's a little too skinny. That arm's perfect. That's the one. So number one was okay. Right. Number two was too small. Right. Number three is her arm. It's her like arm. that is it. Yep. That's the one I would use. So here's another quick tip. Because if I hit generate again, by the way, it's just going to keep giving Make me new, three more. Right, I can keep new generating arms. Yep. new ones all day new long, backgrounds. and it's just going to keep giving me three more, three more, three more, three more. So. Uh, First tip is if you don't like any of the three, just hit generate again. If you, um, and see that one's, I don't like that one because that one like kind has of, this yes, weird little bump. Mus little right. muscular right. definition right. there. That so uh, just keep j hitting generate. But if you get to one you like, great, you're done. But don't keep the ones you don't right. like. Like I'm never going to use that one. Right. So in that case, um, and they, <laughs> that's funny. Yesterday, this was a, a X, and you just clicked it to close it. Now right. it's a menu. Right. Things change in the day. But anyway, you can delete it. You can also report it as a poor result, good right. result, and or if just, there's some real issue. And this just helps the the, 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 the machine learning algorithm, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you have bad results, I encourage you yes. to, to report click thumbs down, poor result. If you have great results, yeah. I encourage you to click thumbs up because we're all collectively making the AI stronger, better, faster, yep. more intelligent, 
more better at our results. And if they've played with Firefly, they've probably seen this too on the images generated in Adobe Firefly. So right. super helpful, really does make a significant change to how the AI works. So see, I click poor result and it says thanks for the feedback. But yeah. now I can still go in and say delete that result. Right. I'm never going to use that result. That result's wrong. That one's okay. But here's the thing. Once I found the good one, that's the good one. Why do I need any of the other four right. or five? So I would, get, I would, I don't have to report them. I will just delete, delete them, them because those aren't the ones I want. Now, if you did want to say come back, maybe you couldn't make up your mind. Maybe you like oh, yeah. it. When you say, if you save this as PSD, all of those results stay with the PSD, correct? Correct. Yeah. So two things. Um, what A, what Jason just said, spot on. <laughs> So if I, uh, or maybe I want the client to decide. Right, let like them I want, decide, let yeah. You decide which, which arm is best for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to decide. You pick your arm. Uh, so if I want the client to decide, I would just keep all of them, all except the bad ones, obviously, and let, let her or whoever pick the one they want. And as long as you save this file, this, this image you're working on as a layered PSD file, that layer's there. So it always remembers the generative results you got. Right. It remembers the prompt if there was right, if there one. Were prompts, yep. And you could always come back to that layer and generate again. Even if you close the file, save it as PSD, come back next week, open it back up again, you can hit generate again. Now, um, in the layers panel, you'll see the new smart object layer, a new kind of smart object layer that is a generative fill layer. And someone, I saw this in the comment earlier because it named it generative layer number one. And they thought, and they made a suggestion, it would be great if it named the layer the prompt. Right. Last week it was doing that. <laughs> so it's just, the team knows it's just for this beta, for this release, they took it out for whatever reason they're working on it. So I believe the plan is that it will name the layer your prompt so that way you, you won't even have to guess what you did. Now, even if it didn't name the layer the prompt, the prompt will still be in the properties panel for that layer. Right. So it would just be it, nice to have it's still on the there. layers panel. Hey, Terry, so question now. Kind of getting to this a little bit early, but I know this is something we were discussing this morning. So someone's asking on, on Behance, um, does would the generative fill match the pixel density of the original artwork, 150 PPI, 300 PPI, 600 PPI? Or more importantly, though, what about frame si the, the actual size of the images for using generative fill? In, this in the today? current beta, the generative fills are limited to 1024 pixels by 1024. Now, if you have a higher resolution image, it's doing some resing up to, you know, to make it look good. Going forward, though, the team plans to make it, you know, I, I, I won't say the resolution because then I'll get in right. trouble because right. I gave you some information that's not public yet. But they are making it higher. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so the, the, the goal is to make it a higher resolution result, but right now, today, in the beta, because keep in mind it's a beta, it's not released, it's 1024 by 1024. Okay, uh, and it, again, if you, someone said don't name your layers, yeah, you can name your layers. So we talked about getting rid of bad results, we talked about keeping the layer, we talked about saving as a PSD, and of course we talked about uh, having different results. Okay, let's move on, let's do some, some fun stuff now. Let's see. All right, we did an expand already. I'll come back and we'll do more examples until we're out of time, let's do. Let's do a replace. All right, I like this one. Now, she's standing next to a doorway, a gate, or I think it's a gate. It's basically whatever it is next to this building. And I want to replace that gate with something that looks a little fancier. Now, keep in mind, there's also some shallow depth of field involved. Like the, the gate is kind of blurred out right. because the focus was on the, on the, on the subject. I'm going to go ahead and just grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to make a big rectangle of the whole gate. There we go. And now I'll do generative fill. And then we'll go in and we'll say... Um, oh, you might want to move your taskbar. Where, where it's, oh, yeah, it's yep, behind me. It's behind you. Let's move it up. Mystical... Mystical... Did I spell that right? Gold. <laughs> golden. Spelling counts. Yeah, door. Right. Yeah, if you spell it wrong, you can get some <laughs> weird results. Uh, mystical golden uh, door. So let's go ahead and hit generate. 
Again, keep in mind, shallow depth of field, shallow depth blurry, field, blurry angled, angle, yeah. angled. Right. That's another That's thing. That's another angled. thing, right. All those things. So if you had to replace that door, you'd have to find one that's the right angle or you'd have to distort it to be that angle. Yeah. And there it is. That's one mystical golden door. That's another one. And look at that. Look at the shallow depth of field. <laughs> look at the angle. Look at what it's doing there. And there's another one. And if I don't like any one of those three, generate again. And I keep generating until I got one that I liked. What's amazing too here is, again, now of course it's gonna keep that prompt, you can keep regenerating, you can keep thumbs up, thumbs down, all of those things. I'm just thinking, again, by the time, the time it would take you to do this, even to kind of get it set, okay, that one's not so great, um, to do them manually, yeah, perspective, so much better, so much easier. Yeah, it's, it's just mind boggling what this does. All right, here's one that I did in my own video that I released on YouTube earlier today. This one's just kind of a fun example. Um, birthday coming up next week, so I made the made the joke that I don't like cupcakes. I, I do like cupcakes. You do like cupcakes, I, yes. You gave me a cupcake. The I, big 2-5. Yeah, I know, the 25 next That's week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I make a selection because I'm gonna pretend I don't like cupcakes. And we'll make a selection of that. We'll go generative fill on the contextual taskbar and we'll say, I instead I want ice cream, or no, I want caramel. Ice cream Sunday. Now, in this case, you're replacing the whole subject here. Right. Well, but, not. I'm not. I'm not touching the sparkles. Right. But you got. But, the, but that's what I'm saying. But you got the sparkles and the right. straw, th all that. Uh, what is this going to do? I don't know. We're about to find. Yeah. And also, when I demo this stuff, every time I'm demoing even the same file, right. I, I don't know what's going to look right. like. Right. The result's going to be different. Going to be different. Right. You're kind of asking a lot here, Terry. Rolling the dice. Yeah. Pulling the. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling the handle down. Ooh, I like that one. I like that one even better. I like that one even better. That that really sits on the table. Ooh, that, that one good. actually. Right. So again, beautifully. keep in mind, it had to guess the perspective of the table, sit it on the table, shadows and lighting, lights from the sparkler coming down onto the ice cream. Right. It had to figure all that out. Even the light from the side of the glass right. dish there. I mean, it's... And if I... Want more? Just keep hitting generate. That one actually looks really great too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is uh, F word amazing. <laughs> yes, a lot of expletives <laughs> yeah, in the chat know, right? for those uh, who are parents. Keep your children away. Uh, All right, so cool. That's cool. amazing. Cool. Ooh, look, what are those? I don't know. What Little those candies. Are. They look good. And I'm going to say that that's probably my favorite. I love that one. Okay, so Delicious. now. That was replacing something that was already there. And keep in mind, it's just a layer. If I want the original cupcake back, just turn that layer off. Right. It's underneath it. It didn't actually replace it. It's non-destructive. So let's go in, and even though we have that layer already, let's make a new layer over here, and let's do, this was, this was oh, general layer, general fill. Let's, this is always a fun one for me, because I, I like robots, I like you, science fiction. You really do like your robots, I, do. I gotta say. Toy robot. So, if you ever see me do a generative field demo, there's going to be a robot involved <laughs> at some point. Since we along began the way. testing this feature months ago, <laughs> toy robot. We've seen every robot configuration Wearing Firefly can make. Sneakers. Uh, taking a selfie. That's that's my go-to prompt to test every build of, of Firefly. So, ro toy robot wearing sneakers, taking a selfie, and generate. All right, waiting, 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 Wait doing its it. thing, Wait bringing it in. It. Again, you got some, you got some light overlap. You got stuff happening there with the sparklers. How's it going to look? It's going to feel flat. All um, right, good robot, but not taking good. a yeah. selfie. Not taking a selfie. Taking a selfie. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, that's All awesome. All right, and again, I even like the way he's looking at the sparkler or looking at the phone yeah. oh, in that direction while taking yeah. the sparkler. He or she, I don't know what it is. That's right. Uh, anyway, generate. That's a good one. I like that a lot. That would be my favorite so far, but I, I can keep generating as long as I want. And again, you're feeling sort of the light hitting right. the legs nope. there, kind of works. Yeah, nope, nope, not even close. Oh, taking a selfie. <laughs> that one's cute. <laughs> that is cute. So, these are my these are my go-to characters yeah. when I want to when I want to amuse myself and have some fun with generative fill. So now you saw you saw replacing some content. You saw adding 
new content and a spot in the photo that was never there before. Well, let's keep going. Okay. Let's go in and let's do remove. So Marcy's asking, Terry, does regenerating base the new ones on the ones selected? Great question. And I asked this question, I asked the exact same question to the Photoshop team. Mm -hmm. Today, the answer is no. So like, for example, what I would love it to do is say, oh, I like that one. Give me right. more Iterate of that, on similar. That, yeah. And the website does that. Firefly does do that. Right. You can click similar in the upper left corner, if it, unless it's moved, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> upper left corner <laughs> last week. And uh, it will uh, keep generating new ones based on that one. In this case, it does not. So today, it does not generate based on whichever one you click. David says, this is insane. I know, right? We're, all, we're always about to get better right now. So uh, let's go into this one. And uh, right. I told this story in my video as well. Yeah. This is in Iceland, 2016. I kind of felt like I was back from the crowd because I was just ticked off. I was ticked off at myself for not getting there earlier right. when there were no people because <laughs> there are tons of people here now. And I, I just, I was just not happy. Nice, beautiful rainbow, beautiful waterfall. Normally I would set up for a long exposure, get some right. nice silky water coming down. I didn't bother. But you got up late. Got click. lazy. Okay, click. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one I'm never going to use because <laughs> of all those people. whatever. Right, you know, yeah. Around the corner. Couldn't easy get to get to. Couldn't get out of it sooner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and uh, use our lasso tool. Now, I have the lasso tool set to add by default. So add to the selection in the, con in the control panel by default. So that way, when I make a selection with it, I don't have to hold down the shift key. I just go to my next selection right. and keep selecting. So I'm going to select all of these random people. There's my buddy Scott Kelby in the red jacket. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. He got, a he got a better picture. He got Well, he got up earlier. Yeah, That's, he got a better know, picture than yeah. I did. Had the motivation. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got all the people selected right. now. Generative fill. Generate. So again, no prompt here because no prompt because I'm not. I don't want it to. Rep if I wanted to replace it with something, then I would type right. in what I want to replace it with. But in this case, I want it to simply, hopefully, right. remove them. And it it knows, the AI knows. And I'm just waiting. Question is, uh, could I tell it to put the long exposure in on the waterfall? Yes, I didn't like the results. Yeah, I, I tried it. I did try it. Yeah, I did say, oh, select the water. Right, yeah. Long exposure, and, and it just replaced it with a new waterfall. So right. it wasn't making this one long exposure, it just gave me a new one. Right. And I didn't like any of the new ones, so I, and I keep regenerating. All right, there's uh, result number one. Wow. Result number two, which is the one I would use. Result number two is the one I'd use. Result, yeah, number two. There you go. Now, what I did do on this photo after I got rid of all the people is I'd use the path blur on this waterfall to blur it down right. to make it look good. And let me show you. Just amazing. Let me show you the waterfall with the long exposure. Here's the one I actually took. Oh, I mean, I took both of them. But yeah, here's the one right. I actually like set up for the long exposure right. to make it a, 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 the waterfall one. Yeah. And conveniently cropped out all people right, from below. Right, That's right. right. Yeah. Just Shot a little, uh, angled a little bit uh, higher up. up. a little yeah. higher. Yeah. <laughs> just, more just, sky, more, more sky. sky. More sky. But yeah. again, I never liked this one. Right because it's not true. It doesn't show the water hitting the bottom. Yep. That's what a good waterfall is. That's the funny thing. This actually looks like you did something to the water, even though I know it's yeah. like exposure, right? Because of the, the composition. Yeah, it just, it's not right. Right, that so, doesn't feel like a Terry White shot. Let's, let's zoom out. And I, again, neither one was ever usable for me because of those problems. All right, let's go crop. Let's uncrop this down to about here. Let's grab our rectangular marquee tool. And let's make a selection. And generator fill. I don't have to tell it anything because I think it will guess what I want. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of stuff where it just blows your mind. It it's does. about to. Well, it may. We'll see. It does. We, we, we never really know. <laughs> he says, playing devil's advocate. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know what I got last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's kind of similar to what I got last week. So now I have water actually hitting the right. water. 
Now, and so you might say, spill. well, wait, yeah. wait, it was flat before. It doesn't know what this waterfall right, is. Right. It's just giving me the bottom of a waterfall, but carries the rainbow down, lets me blends see the water, in, blends yep. everything in, and gives me more choices. Right. I like that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. But that's the one I would actually use. Right. <laughs> because in real life, I could have been off that's to the right. side shooting this. Compositionally, right. that feels Compositionally, like a shot you would have taken. this is the one yep. I would have taken if I was trying to hide the people <laughs> that were there. <laughs> so this is the one I would actually use. And again, I can keep generating more results to keep going, but I'm done. <laughs> this would be the one I'd use. All right, we got about five minutes left. Yeah. Let's open up one more. And Fernando, to answer your question, way. Way, way, way. Yeah, way. <laughs> All right, another Iceland shot, and let's just go ahead and grab a rectangle here, and just we're gonna add something, and let's do a gender fill, and let's add a rowboat. I thought you. I thought you were gonna go robot again. Row no, boat. no, no. Okay. One, yeah. one robot per stream. One robot per stream. Okay. Per stream. That's uh, in Terry's rider. I get to have one. Mm-hmm. All right. Now again, if you were to just composite a rowboat into this shot, I have to find one at the right angle because again, you know, this right. angle. Right. I'd have to find one that, and I'd have to make it the same tone, tone, the same color, light, time, light, lighting, right, yeah. all of that, and reflect it in the water. Right. Oh, God. I mean, first try. Look at that. Can you zoom in a little on that? Sure. I'm. I mean, I'm curious. I, yeah, I feel like we don't zoom enough. Yeah. Reflecting in the water, yeah. same nighttime feel, or early, this was sunset, so sunset feel, and... Even the fall off on the reflection I, I know, there right? from the mist, <laughs> from the off, mist the water. off the water is still there. I mean... So I put the reflection under the right. mist in the water <laughs> of the reflection. like As you do. Right, yeah. as of course if it were really there. Yeah. And this is the stuff that blows my mind. If you're not smiling, you should be. You know what I, I told a, a Photoshop user that I know that we're, we talk about this stuff all the time? I said, what generative fill does is it takes the cringe out of an assignment. Mm. I want yeah. you to remove this person and yeah. fill it in with what would have been there had they not been standing there. Eh, the cr right. <laughs> how much? How much you pay me to do? Right. Okay, okay, it's going to take a while. It takes that out of it. Right. It takes the cringe out. Like, you don't have to, oh my God, that's going to take me hours. Oh my God, it's going to be so much work. It feels like things are actually more possible. Yeah. Right. More achievable, more easily achievable. Faster. Faster. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Can we do some, can you generate a couple more? I'm curious uh, oh, sure. how, how else it iterates in our last couple of minutes here. Sure. And again, we've got more of uh, generative fill in the Photoshop beta coming up. Oh right yeah, after we're, we're going to be doing all gender fill for the next. I've got a couple examples too. Oh, great. I'll, awesome. no, I'll jump in a little later, yeah, but yeah, yeah a couple no. fun ones. I mean, I, yeah, I reached back into the archives, and that's what I've been doing, going back to right. photos that yeah. I didn't want to use before. Now I can use, yeah. and that one actually added a person. So there's oh, a person nice. sitting in the water or the rowboat. Oh yeah. wow! With their reflection too, right. which is so cool. Maybe missing a hand. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know. <laughs> okay, but anyway, there we go. Oh wait, wait, wait. We we don't stop there. <laughs> yes, Carlos. Art of visual. Does it fix six-fingered hands? Nah. Well, it's better. It's keep. It's going to keep yes. getting better. It'll preserve some for any uh, Princess Bride references. No, actually, it doesn't do those kind of references. Nope, it doesn't about. do nope, any. It does not branding. do pop pop culture branding. Nope. Yeah, Ivan's saying we could keep the. It's going to take a while. Along with it's going to cost a bit more yeah. and relax. So now, exactly. That, that particular polar bear I don't like because it looks like it's standing on top of the water. Right. I don't like any of those, so I would keep generating until I got one that looked like right. it was in the water. And a good opportunity there would probably give the thumbs down because it's... Yeah, yeah. it, it, it if, interpreted it wrong. If and you I feel may, so inclined. And I may need to push the selection back. Right. So sometimes your selection is just in the wrong spot. Right. So in this case, I'm going to turn that layer off and I'm push my selection back a little bit. All right. And we've got about uh, a minute, a minute and a half or so here. So we want to thank all of you and encourage all of you to stick around for another hour of generative fill awesomeness here in Photoshop with Mr. Terry White and yours truly, Jason Levine, as we are generating more animals here. 
on the water. And by the way, you could say polar bear in the water. Yes. Polar so bear. give it a better description. Give it a better description. Yes. If it's not giving you the result you want. There we go. So just pushing the selection back a little bit. Get, look at the reflection. It's mm -hmm. giving me the polar bear in the water now. Now the lighting's off. A little too bright. Yeah. For this. It gave, gave him his own iceberg. Oh, oh an iceberg. He's a little surfing. On. Yeah. All right. That's very cute. Yeah, but it, it's doing it. It's, it's giving me in the water and giving me the... That one's like, yeah, that's a thumbs down. That's just no. Yeah. And delete. Right. Really important to take advantage of that. All, All right. right. One more. Have we got... I oh, think we're, I think, we're done. Uh, yeah, we're done. We're done. So, well, we're going to pick this up. We're going to pick it up. We've yeah. got lots more to show, lots more to cover. Thank you so much for joining again on Adobe Live. I am Jason Levine with Mr. Terry White. We've got more of the Photoshop Generative Fill AI in the beta that you can access today, version 24.6. We will see you in just a couple of minutes. So have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening. And until next time, we'll see you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Jason Levine here with Mr. Terry White. Hey everybody, welcome <laughs> back. And uh, today we are here to talk more generative AI tips and tricks in the newly released version of Photoshop Beta 24.6. We just saw some amazing stuff, Terry. Thank you. Blowing minds. I wish I could take credit, but it's, coast it's to coast. just generative fill. Yeah, 
And uh, we're going to be doing even more of this again. This Photoshop beta is accessible to anyone who has Photoshop already on their machine. You can install it. There's also a regular release version of Photoshop, which we just showed earlier. We covered so that. So you can catch that you stream if you're get that replay. looking to binge more. A couple of quick shout outs here for everyone tuning in. We've got Andrew and Fernando and Lola and Wade and Shiva and Pietro and Art of Visual and Shaw and Oscar and Manuel. Thank you so much for joining. Another hour of the two of us together. And man, it's so good to see you. I, it is good as to I see put you my hands person. upon I you, know, Terry. Right? We when haven't was been the last together. Time we were this close. I mean, it's it's been a while. <laughs> Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Uh, it's been a while, so it's really the nice to be. The road tours, the That's world right. tours, the on stage in every country you can think of. And we've now been, we've been doing it for years. We've been doing it for years, and now we get to reach just as many, right? Just like this in a cold studio with Paco, who you can't see, but we couldn't do it without him. So thank you, Paco. Absolutely. Um, all right, so we're going to talk more about generative fill in Photoshop. We yes, just saw sir. a couple of crazy examples. I've actually got some. I got more crazy examples. More crazy stuff. And we're going to do some stuff a little bit outside of the box. I know I think you've got some of your sort of fashion style oh, examples yeah. Yeah, yeah. and do doing that. crazy things like changing clothing and all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to show some generative ones. Again, dipping into the archives of, and fixing some old photos. And that, that's the thing. It's just like what this made me do is go back and look at my Lightroom catalog. And, right. Oh, yeah, that photo I, I didn't like because of this reason. Right. I can now quickly fix it instead right. of spending hours, which wasn't worth it. Going back and like fixing landscapes and adding um, things to portraits, removing things from portraits, just so much easier now. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hit it, man. People want to see it. All right. So just a reminder, just quickly, for those of you who are didn't watch the last stream, just quickly... If you want to get the beta, because you can go in and update. So when you go to updates and you check for updates, that's going to update your regular Photoshop. But notice I've got the Photoshop beta installed. And where you get that from is you manually have to do it. So it will not do it automatically. Right. You have to proactively go install it. So you go to the beta, beta app section of your Creative Cloud desktop app. And you uh, click there, and you will see Photoshop beta. And right now, it's, it's telling me, so it'll prompt you if it's not already doing that. But you'll see it in the list. Install it. You don't have to uninstall your regular version. And then you can open up the beta and do what we're doing. Now, some people are saying, I open the beta, and I don't see the feature or whatever. Quit the beta and relaunch it. Because sometimes it needs, a, it, it needs a launch to get the beta open, but then it needs a relaunch to activate the beta features. So if you're not seeing the features, just simply quit, relaunch. Worst case, uninstall the beta, reboot, reinstall the beta. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So we've been doing generative fill for the past half hour. I showed you the first few examples. I've got tons of examples to show. Jason's got some examples, so we're going to just dive right in. I took this shot in... I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in LA, some pond. And, and I, I like these kind of lily pads and things, but you know, you always expect to see a frog at some point, but you can't wait for a frog all the time. So let's put one in. Let's do, let's do a rectangular marquee selection. And you have to make a selection to do generative fill. Even if you select a blank canvas, you have to do a selection to do generative fill. So if you don't see the generative fill button on your taskbar, it's probably because you don't have a selection yet. And also the other way to check it, if you're not using the taskbar, is to go up to Edit and choose Generative Fill from the Edit menu. All right, so now that we've got this, um, this rectangular marquee selection, I'm going to hit Generative Fill. I'm just going to type in Frog. We'll keep it simple. Now, someone was just asking, Terry, we're, we're using the marquee a lot, but mm -hmm. you can use other selection tools. Oh, yeah, tools. I use the last, remember, yeah, I use yeah. the lasso to remove people. You can mm -hmm. use whatever selection yeah. tool you want. For generation and for right. removal. Yep, yep. So just to be really clear about that, it doesn't have to be rectangular, square. It doesn't have to yeah, be. Yeah. There's frog. <laughs> There's frog facing the right way. Yeah, right. Because I would want composition. That's right, to be to looking at the way. flower. All right, to be looking at the flower. There's another frog. I, I don't know what your frog taste is these days. Right. But, I mean, <laughs> but yes. This would be my choice. I'm partial to frog number two. Right, frog number two. And if you didn't like frog number one, two, or three, you can hit generate again. Generate some more. And generate again. And generate again. And you keep generating more frogs until you get to the one you like. I mean, now, I want to try something with this one. Yeah. Uh, we'll let this finish. Yeah. That's going to give us three new ones. So, new one number one. Oh, I like actually That's 
See, yeah. sometimes regenerating gives you that even a better even nicer, choice. Yeah. I like that one nicer. And yeah, so I'd stick with that one. It's actually doing something a little more interesting with the shadows and the right. light too. Yeah. I thought, well, what would happen if I did it in the water? Mm. Oh, and, and to your point, let's go grab the lasso. Yeah. So it does not have to be a rectangular marquee selection. You can do a lasso. To me, it's just harder. <laughs> yeah. Because well, yeah. I don't have my mouse. That's right, yes. I don't have a pen either. Uh, and we'll do gender fill, and we'll do frog. Oh, is frog spelled correctly. It is English, and you do have to spell it correctly. These moments. I know. And you know what's so funny? As fast as this is now. It's like, oh my uh, God, I gotta wait. Get it done seconds. already. Hurry up. Uh, yes, I know. But that's the thing is, it really is so, so fast by comparison. Uh, <laughs> it's like this one's trying to go in the pad or in the water. That one's coming up at the angle I want it, but it doesn't look like it's in the water enough. And I could change my prompt. I can say frog coming out of the water. There we go, let's try that. So if you're, pro it could be your prompt, it could also be your selection. If you're not getting the results you want, switch it up. Yeah. Creepy face, Creepy, I agree. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not a fan of frogs. They're all right. Yeah, see, there we go. That's what I was oh, thinking yeah. about, coming out of the water. Ooh, that that's cool. Interesting. That looks like a slightly unalive frog. Right, but... yeah. <laughs> that is just a bad result. So bad result, poor result, and delete. I'm never going to use that. And since we, since you're doing that anew now, we want to point out, much like in Adobe Firefly on the web, you have the option here to sort of rate good result, right. bad good result. Good result, bad result, and that helps improve the AI. So the more you tell it what it's doing right and what it's doing wrong, the better it will get yeah. for all of us. Super important to do that. It's kind of one of those things you're. There we you're, go. You're, you're less ten. Oh, that's great. Look at that. There we go. This is kind of. That's the, even better. The, the kind <laughs> of that's the best one. This is the kind of results I was looking for. So coming out of the water with the shadow, everything in place. And again, if I take because sometimes the results so good you don't think to give it a thumbs up. You can give it a thumbs up right here on the on the contextual taskbar as well. And if you want to give it more detail, like if you want to explain why it's good or why it's bad so they have the context, when you do um, either one, whether you do it from the menu or the, um, or the contextual taskbar, you'll get the option to tell us more. So that's where you can go in right. and be very detailed about what it got right or what it got wrong. And you can even put in your own text. Oh my God, the shadows were off, or right. it was great, it was amazing. Whatever it is, you can, and notice how there's no in-between. Yeah, right, yeah, that's right, yeah. You're reporting it being great or you're reporting it being horrible. That's right, there is, there. well, that's it. There yeah. really kind of is yeah, no in-between. You're, really, you're not just saying, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, and that's kind of the benefit of being able to regenerate, too, is to see how, how quickly it gets there. Right. You know? Now, this was an interesting perspective shot, and I wanted to see what it would do if I didn't make the selection in perspective. So back to the rectangle tool. I'm just gonna make a rectangular selection right about here. Or let's say here. And I'm gonna type in my prompt, school bus. And as we were saying before, this one, it's interesting, right? Because again, perspective, how it's shot, direction, how it's going to place this thing. A nice shot of the street, by the way. Sort of Abbey Road-ish, minus not being in the UK. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> also a great way to probably remove people from Abbey Road if you've taken that shot, as we were talking about earlier. I have a couple of those I need and, to revisit. Look at, look at oh that. my God, zoom in. Dude, you gotta zoom in. Look at that. A bus with, with some weird reflections, but, and some text that is just, right. you know, whatever. But the, but the shadows. shadows on the ground. Everything else, the perspective, the perspective. of the bus. The again, fall off of, of the that's perspective. That's just the first choice. Oh, look at that. There's second choice, third choice. Oh, that's that's crazy. And again, it's, it's assuming that there are buildings behind you in the reflection that it's reflecting into the windshield. Right. This, is, this is just mind boggling what this stuff does. Now keep in mind, it is a layer. 
It's got its own mask. So if I wanted to keep that one road stripe right. by going down the middle, I would just paint the you mask. Just paint it back in. Yep. To paint it back in, so I keep that stripe. Mm -hmm. Now uh, Max Chrome is asking, can you select things and have it change what's already there, like colors and other stuff about the picture or subjects? Sure. Um, let's do. Let's make a selection of this building. And let's say we want this to be, um, Jason, where do you want that building to be? Well, it's a high rise. Maybe make it a, I don't know. What do you call it? Low rise? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I to... like trying to think of, okay, look, you know what? Let's, let's, Spacey just, restaurant? I don't know. I'm just know. curious to what it would do. Let's try a schoolhouse. Yeah, schoolhouse. That's I, I have no idea. I've never tried this until you suggested it in your prompt. So, but, I mean, your, um, yeah. in your question. By the way, while, while it's generating, and I have a question for the chat. Just to put a bus into this shot with the shadows, into that perspective, in this way, people who do this kind of composite work, I'm just curious, in the chat, tell us, how long would that take you in the traditional way. First, you got to find a bus. Right. right. That, well, that's part of it. Yeah, that's part, part of the you time. Find the bus so, that's in the right perspective. And be honest, you know. All right. It gave me one version of again. I don't know. What, yeah. It's like it doesn't know what a tall schoolhouse looks like. That's an interesting. Uh -oh. so that looks like a terrifying yeah, schoolhouse. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't want to go to school there. <laughs> <laughs> that one's okay. That, that one, one looks like a modern school. Yes, school that, that building. sort of fits. But yes, you can um, select areas and tell it to replace. So, for example, if I go, oh, here's here's a better example. So let's say I go here. I was going to say, yeah, could you replace that with maybe palm, palm trees? trees? Yep, that's what I was thinking. Oh, all right. Great minds right. think alike. Palm yeah. trees. Generative fill. And let's replace this with palm trees. But Rob is saying 15 minutes. S is saying <coughs> 10 minutes. OK. It's very honest. I like that. After you found the bus. After you found the bus. Uh, Stefan is asking, is it possible to change the sky? Blue sky. Now, of course, we have other tools we for doing that. We have sky replace. Sure, you can tell it to generate a new sky. Yeah. Palm trees. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there we go. I like that one. That, yeah, okay, now zoom in. Let's see how realistic. it did on the sort of blending it in with the other trees there. Yeah. That one looks more realistic yeah. like it's really there. Look at that. And again, all I have to do is regenerate if I don't like it. So yes, and again, <laughs> you're not, awesome. so you're selecting an area, you're telling it what to replace it with, but you're not physically replacing it, it's not destructive. So if I turn off all these layers, I'm back to the original. If I turn on the school bus, if I turn on the palm tree, but don't turn on the building, I don't have the new building, I have the right. palm tree and the, um, and the school bus. All right. By the way, Judith is saying two hours for this process, sounds about right, getting the angle right takes forever. Yep, shadows, angle, yeah. lighting. Color Fix, tone. Right, fixing perspective, color matching, adding shadows. Yeah. All of the above. CG Slav says you will be so tired while finding the bus in the right place. I know. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize yeah. Yeah. the putting it in part's yeah. not the hard right, part. Exactly. Finding one that's yeah. the right perspective yeah. and right look. That's that's what takes the that's longest. That's most of the pain right. involved. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, I got some more examples here. Let's do do. Well, and I'll tell you what, I uh, I was going to do a, a quick... Oh, you want to do one uh, yeah, real quick? Yeah, a ahead. quick uncrop one. All right. So that I... you inspired me to try this out. Um, so this is, again, this was from one of our... I know. One of our and safaris. I can already tell where you're going with this, because tightly cropped elephant. Wish yeah. you had more. Yeah. And uh, and I'm not even going to go over the whole thing, but I was... So just... and So we did this safari. Actually, Pete, Paul Trandy was with us as well. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> we are very fortunate, and we got the opportunity to borrow a bunch of lenses. So I believe this was shot with the 400 millimeter, with the 800 extender, right. handheld, handheld, in a completely open in moving Jeep. Jeep. Right. So, and because I was on that huge lens, assuming things would be so far away, that's yeah, because you can't get any further can't back. Can't get any further back. You can't zoom back on right. an 800 millimeter lens. It is what it is. It is what it is. So first thing I wanted to try was to see, well, can I just get back just the top of the head and the ear, right? And I think that's probably good. So come in here. Let's get a little bit generative fill, and just generate. And this oh. this shot has bothered me for ten years. Hey, son. Uh, can you get the beta still? Absolutely. The beta just became available this morning, so it is wide open for anyone to go get it. All right. 
doing its thing. Again, nice little shallow depth of field there with the, the brush and the, the, the twigs behind it. So very curious what it's going to do. And the lighting. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> now, same thing here at the bottom. Like, all right, I'm not going to ask for much, but I really would love to have the legs and maybe the trunk. And just so you know, he's doing it in multiple steps. You could have done it all in one. Could have done it all in you one. You could have expanded the top, the back, and the bottom right. and selected all three and told it to generate, and it would generate all areas of the prompts at once or, or selections at right. once. This is almost like, can it really? I just want to see. Can you put the Beatles in? Um, no, because <laughs> you can't use recognizable people that we know. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Hold on. There you go. Holy cow. And Holy he, elephant. And if he extended the back, it would give us the back of the elephant as well. Do we want to try the back of the elephant? Why wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> right. Excuse me. OK. Yeah. Let's go for you, it. You, All right. I mean, if we're, if, we're, if we're going for <laughs> right. look at this amazing shot that I got. Yeah. Let's go for it. Now, you might ask, I mean, you know, I was very proud of the of the look of that old photo, but when in doubt, I mean. Sometimes you need a whole elephant. Part of an elephant just won't do. Just won't do. I blame that 400 millimeter. You remember me holding that? Oh, thing? yeah. No monopod, yeah, yeah, no know, nothing. I know. Probably built up a lot of bicep strength wielding that thing over a couple days. And remember, you have three choices. Right. So you've just been using the first choice. Oh, yeah, I've just been using the first one, right. Right. You got that one? Ooh, that one's actually pretty good. You got that oh. one? Oh. I don't know which one. This one I kind of like because it's sort of obscured by the grass down yeah. here. So cool. So cool. I mean. Now, for the people in the chat, how long would it take you to fill in that elephant? Come on. You'd have to go find an elephant that looks just like it and then fill it, clone in the environment, oh, so forth and so on. This was before I did the other side, but look at yeah. the, this trunk is even better. Yeah. This was the one we went with, but holy, I mean, that's just crazy. I like how it's kind of leaning forward a little to sort of match yep. the trunk. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's unbelievable. All right, back to you, Terry. All right, so someone said, add a baby elephant, so make a rectangular marquee selection. Oh, let's add a, bottom, okay. and add a baby elephant, okay. And add a baby elephant follow. Now, do I need to be on a specific nope, layer when nope, I do that? it's just gonna add it on top of everything you're on. All right, so let's just add maybe and it can, it can overlap, right? Yeah, I would actually select the top layer because that way it'll, it won't put it underneath one of your existing right. layers. Okay, yep. All right. There you go. We can have a little baby elephant down here. Generative fill, baby elephant grazing. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, and again, keep in mind, it's going to not only just hopefully put the baby elephant in, but it's going to match the scene. Right. And that's the key part. Right. And that sun. God, that light. Remember that sun? Yep. There you go. <laughs> matching right. the look of the mother, matching the look of the scene, everything that's around. What is that? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a very weird, that's a very weird strange leg baby on elephant, that right? elephant right there. But it, oh, but it just leg. extended out. Right. Uh, so you can generate again. You keep going. But again, this is <laughs> just... If you had to do it manually, you could, but the first task would be finding the right one to even start putting in. All right, that one, uh, color-wise, I like I like that. It's a okay. little, little odd, but that's the closest so far. But again, yeah, like the shadow, the perspective, even the feet being buried slightly. I mean, look at that, yeah. the detail. The details. Of the feet being in the, uh, in the brush and that same light Hitting the back side. There you go. We zoom into elephant butt. Crazy. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Brain cells missing already. That's I know, mind right? blown. All right. I got a couple examples of, of working with people. So first off, let's go ahead and open up this one. And this was a fashion shoot I did way back, I don't know, like eight years ago, something like that. And again, one of those where we, we, we messed up collectively as the team doing this shoot, we forgot to put earrings on. She's got all the jewelry on, but we forgot to put the earrings on. We had them, just didn't put them on. 
Now, I could take, if I still have them, which I don't, could take them, photograph them separately, remove the background, try and bring them in, size them down, get the right color, get the right shadows, reflections, anything like that. But I don't even have them anymore because okay. the person that brought all the accessories <laughs> left with the accessories. Right. So let's grab the rectangular marquee tool. And you, again, I could draw it with a lasso, but why? <laughs> I just don't have to. This is easier. So we're going to go to generative fill, and we're going to say um, fashion earring. Now, this won't be the exact accessory, obviously, because right. it doesn't know which one we didn't use. But it should give us one. It should give us some choices of ones that work. And this one, I think, interesting, too, because you have the shadows there. You've got some hair, you know, little... Yep. Lots of overlap. And there we go. So wow. I'm already okay with that one. <laughs> like that one. Look at how it matches. Oh my gosh. Look at how it matches the rest of the jewelry. Yeah. Right. This the, 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 is the silver spherical ball there. It even looks like it indented her ears slightly. Yep. That one works. That look one at works look too. at how it matched the beads. Yeah, yeah. Beads. That's look, the word I yeah. was like. Sphere. That, look, it even That's put it big. through the ear. Like, <laughs> wow. That's incredible. That, that could, first one's actually know, pretty spectacular. I know, but I could just keep hitting. If I, these are all great, but I could keep hitting generate yeah. until I got one that was even greater, if that's possible. Yeah. All right. So do we go for broke? Here, let's do this. Let's grab our lasso. This time I am going to do the lasso because I'm doing it at an angle. Let's come out a bit. In a bit. So Don's Will, uh, Wilson's asking, tuned in late, but is this available in the monthly photography plan? So again, yes. if, you, if you have if you have Photoshop, whatever plan you're on, you can go download the beta of Photoshop that has this in it. Yep. From your Creative Cloud app. All right, Jennifer Phil, what do I want? I could do a scarf. I could do a necklace. She already has a necklace on, so yep. let's do a scarf. Let's do a scarf. Fashion scarf. And someone before. Uh, I missed it. Was asking was asking about prompts. How specific do you need to be with the prompts? Now again, because we're not doing brands and things like that, you wouldn't say Fendi scarf or, no, or right. something like that. Yeah. Fashion scarf, you know. Fashion scarf. As descriptive as you want to be. And, and again, like these are thin. I could say thick fashion scarf. Uh huh. I could also, by the way, let me. Yeah, uh, that looks more like very tight yeah, bandana. I know. You know right. So choker. here, <laughs> what, so a lot of it has to do also a the prompt and right. b your selection. Where you're selecting. So yeah. let me come out further and and I'm going to change this and the prompt. I come in here and I'm going to do fashion scarf. I'll try that first, but I was going to do full, let me oh, go for broke. We'll see. I can always change it if I don't like it. Oh yeah, Mine. and Marcy's saying you could add silk or satin to match yeah, there material you go. Silk, and color. Fashion scarf, exactly. Yep. Beige, silk, fashion scarf. <laughs> Two fashion easy this year. Very didn't, specific. Didn't think of fabric at yeah, all. Yeah, that's no, perfect. Not at all. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Oh, too weird. I'm not like the results are being hidden by something. All right, let me go back to this one, and just let me try silk fashion scarf. It is a beta. Sometimes there will be a bug. Yeah, and Max is saying you can just start from scratch. Maybe I just start adding things, build up a really large high resolution AI. Yeah, I mean that's that's again we talked about sort of reimagining reimagining. That word's getting overused, but it is compositing in general. Right. You could just keep building and iterating upon on top of this original image um, and dress dress it up however you like. Dress it up. Thick silk. Yeah. Flashing. Or I should say wide. Yeah. Wide silk. Yeah, you're scarf. definitely getting into the, I don't know what that, yeah. <laughs> it's a very thin scarf. It is. Not for outdoor weather. There we yeah. go. Right. There you go. I there you go. thick, and that That's gave nice. me a thicker one. So just, again, either change up your prompt, change up your selection, or both to get the results you want. I like how it That's also is it. matching the, the luminance of the dress. There you go. Look at that. That's actually very fashionable, Terry. And again, nice I keep job. changing either one. I can go back to the other layer and change earrings. I love it. That's the look I would go for. All right, I got another one. This time we're going to do something different. We're making some more believers. I saw someone saying they didn't really love the result. Now I'm seeing, wow, just wow. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> first 
thing. Let's do this. Let's make a very irregular selection. Now, a lot of times you'll be tempted to just make a quick selection with like the object selection tool. Right. And the object selection tool does a great job of selecting the object. So if I just wanted to select her jacket or her, her blouse, I could use the object selection tool and it would do a good job. But I want more than that. I, want, I don't want just the clothes, I want also under her neck. Because I'm going to change all of this to um, medical doctor, um, what do you call it, Cl uniform. Now before you even generate, let's, let's set the stage of what we're doing here. This is, you're the photographer, mm -hmm. you're doing a photo shoot, you want to try different looks Yep. Clothing. We're going to be able to do this with a selection and generative fill. Right. Go. And we almost, you almost, you almost need silence because this, the, the first time Terry showed this to me, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not speaking in hyperbole here. It, it just completely blew my mind. Okay, there's one. <laughs> there's two. I like two. <laughs> oh. Stethoscope. There's three. Yeah. Stethoscope because across. Medical doctor right. uniform. Right. That's what Which, a by the medical way, doctor would I gotta like. say, what, what lab coat? I couldn't have come back. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Medical doctor uniform is right. so generic. Right. It's still got what you wanted. You have the stethoscope yeah. on there. You want the shirt. I love the shirt on that yeah. one. You it want looks this so one good. Where this one looks like, you know, the real deal. This one looks like the real deal. Okay. Great. Now I want to replace the background. Now I could have replaced the background first. That would have made it easier to select the, um, the the person's clothes and change the uniform. But now that I've done it after the fact, oh no, I'm going to uh, make a merge layer. So Mac Command Option Shift E PC Control Option Shift E, and that just gave me a merge layer of everything. I didn't lose anything, just creating this merge layer because now I can use Select Subject of the whole look because it's all one layer. So Select Subject of the whole thing. I'm going to use the contextual taskbar, so I just click select subject, but I'm not ready to generate because we don't, right. it's she selected, I want the background selected. So right here on the contextual taskbar is an invert selection. So I can just click invert selection, now everything is selected except her. Right. But remember I said in the last one? Key point. Don't cut into the edge. Right. So I mean, you want to cut in, you don't want it on the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click expand right here on the contextual taskbar. I don't have to go to the select menu. I don't have to go here. I don't have to go there. All the options I want for what I'm doing are right there. So I'm going to just hit expand. I, I call this the magical 20 pixels because right. 20 pixels just seems to work on everything I try. So 20 pixels expanding the selection into her. Right. Now generative fill, and we'll go ahead and do a prompt of... Um, Medical. Oh, Are you gonna do a hospital? In. Yep. Medical. You gonna do generic medical building? Medical lab <laughs> in hospital. Medical place of business. <laughs> Terry's gonna do a prompting show right after this. Oh no! Just yeah. where she works. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Words. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Now I gotta say too, man, you you inspired me so much with this. You got one? Yeah, after, after this right. is done, we'll do that. All right, that's one. And he's even putting up a hand. That's interesting. I love that. Two, another hand. Oh, that's pretty great. <laughs> Number three. Oh, she's uh, holding, what, a tube, a test tube? Yeah, with gloves yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's a generator good. And again, perspective, right. Pers depth of depth field. Depth of field, right, the lighting. The lighting. Everything. Lighting from above on her hair. You right. can see it yep. actually looks like it's reflecting some of the light. And the, the collared shirt is just So now, it's all my Photoshop, there we go. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's the one. That's what I was looking for. That's so all my one. Photoshop, pro, oh, look, I like that hand, actually. All the, that's a weird hand. That's <laughs> so a weird that, hand. that would be a bad result, yeah. poor result, report that result, yeah. delete that result. My that's hand just got a, in there somehow. That hand's way too long. Um, generate again. But, um, what, I forgot what I was going to say. I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. It wasn't important. All right. We can switch over to me just for a sec. I just want to point out again, getting a little more specific with some of the, the prompts here. Uh, so just in terms of, I, I'm not going to redun, rerun it. I already did it, but also to, I just pulled up the Photoshop file that had some of these. So this is a picture of me, I got the perfect one. circa 1986. Yep. And uh, I liked my 80s clothes. Again, note the collar, but I wanted to see what it would do for you know additional 
80s men's suit with shoulder pads. <laughs> so, um, kind of brought some of these looks nice. in there. Nice. You know? I like the John Travolta look. Yeah, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this was the slightly tweedish looking one that I think you have with some of your others. Uh huh. And then I borrowed some of yours, Terry. You, you, you made me get into space. So, this is a futuristic space suit, brightly colored with wearable tech on front. <laughs> But see, but okay, so again, great look. But here's the thing I was talking about. Notice your neck showing in all of them. Yes. So if you would have selected up right, to your right. chin, then the outfit would cover all right. of that as well. Yep. I like this one. This looks very, very spacey. Okay. All right. Back to you. Back to me. Yeah. So here's the result that I ended up with that I like. That was from that one that was processing when Jason left. So that would be the one I'd use. And can we show the original again just sure. to show where we started? Go back to the original. That's what we started with. Yeah. Someone outside, casual, beautiful day outside. Nothing we, about this feels right. like medical doctor. By, by, like you wouldn't know that it was corporate, the same right. shot. Corporate doctor. What? In, in practice. And this is the thing. You could take that shot and go, oh no, we can use this for a medical ad. We could use this for a, a, a school teacher ad. We could use this for an outdoor right. brand just by changing all the elements and keeping the subject, the beautiful subject, front and uh, first, um, psh, easy for me to say, in the foreground. Now, Unbelievable. As aside from this being crooked, let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, this, is, this is a classic shot I've had one for of your, years. One of your classic faves. I uh, shot this at Horseshoe Bend on just the crappiest <laughs> sky day. Yes. Like someone asked It never earlier, looks like this, by the way, living uh, fairly. Oh, I, I know. Yeah. Uh, like, you, you I got, got the, the worst the bad day. day. Yeah, you got and the bad I got, day. And I got, I, true story. I got back to my hotel. I went solo on this trip. I just wanted to get away and do some photography. I got back to my hotel. I put my memory card in the computer and started looking through the images and I was crying tears. Not of joy. <laughs> tears of disappointment. Yeah. Like, I can't believe I flew all the way out of here. I can't believe it. I hiked all the way to this thing and I blew it. And what I ended up doing to, to save the day for this shot, this is what I ended up doing. There we go. Looks great now. No bad sky. Because I could, no matter what I tried back then with right. Photoshop, I right. couldn't get a sky that looked good. Nope. I tried everything. I just never was happy. Like the sky never looked real. So let's undo that. Let's go to our rectangular marquee tool. Let's select that. Bad, god awful, nothing sky. Generative fill. All right, Mr. Arizona, <laughs> describe a, a sky. Uh, How about uh, golden hour? Oh, I knew you were going to do golden hour, which will be interesting because the image is not quite golden hour. Desert. It's one one S, right? Desert mm -hmm. sky. All right, let's see what that looks like. Now, I know you've shown this in previous times using the sky replacement. Oh, yeah. Right, which... Got better. Got better. But I was still never happy. Right. And then I used Firefly. The last time I did this, Firefly generated a sky. Right. And I brought that one in. Right. And I get... Yeah, it's not golden hour. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's change the prompt to afternoon. Yeah. But look at, but look at the difference. Even if I was, re even I was accepting that, it looks... Better than the nothing sky. Right. Afternoon, desert sky. So all I'm doing is changing the existing prompt right. and regenerating based on the change I made. Oh, I remember. I remember you lamenting about this. <laughs> Dude, I was in tears in my room, just crying, sobbing to myself. Oh, that's interesting. That's, oh, that's, that's the, the one. one. That's, that's the one. one. That's an Arizona sky. That's because I got out there right at sunset, and that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And again, you could even have put the sun in the corner. You know, uh, afternoon desert sky with sun on the left. Yeah. Well, let's try it. With sunset. I love how you can just kind of continuously add to the field up there, yep. too. The, I like to call this stuff out in terms of UI UX, where we get it. We just get it right. You're not you're not having to move around. It's it's in front yeah. of you where you're making those selections, choosing the fills that it's generated. Um, it's really good. It just it just feels very fluid and just kind of works. <laughs> it doesn't know left from right, but it got it. Those are cool. Yeah, those are neat. 
That's but a little bird. This is the one. That yeah, I that's would the use. one. That's the one. All right, someone says, well, it's not nothing, so it's overcast. Okay, it was still disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> I was just not happy with it. Yeah. I could never get it to look the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Now, I could be very specific. One, one more time, let's try this. Um, evening sky over horseshoe bend. Because it, it does know geographic locations, right. famous locations. Yeah, because chances are we have many, 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 many pictures of Horseshoe Bend, horseshoe bend right. uh, as the um, the ML references. And that's a key point, too. You can use you can use public, geographical geographic public, public uh, references. references. Yeah. Nice, beautiful blue skies. Look at that one. It's kind of weird and funky. That's very funky. And just keep refining your prompt. Keep regenerating. That's pretty cool, too. Now again, even if you went with something like this, you could imagine where you just use a little a, a, a gradient or some kind of adjustment layer just to tone down some of the blue to match kind of the the hue of the water there. Yep. You know, just to give it a or a slightly more reflective kind of look that's more um, harmonized. I guess you could technically use the harmonized neural filter there too. Sure, because it's a layer. Yeah. So you could do it to harmonize you want to the two layers it. together. Yeah. That's another great idea. If I do say so myself. <laughs> that is a great idea. And I do say so. <laughs> Someone would say, you know, okay, now I, I, I have my next several hours of fun. Yeah, I mean, we both. Again, boat, shadow, water, so perspective, cool. perspective, angle. Looking like, from above. Looking from above, it knows that. Skewed, yeah. Skewed. Oh, that one's pretty cool, too. Oh, that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool too. I mean, that's that's what you wind <laughs> up doing. You just, I end up just stuttering. Yeah. I, 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 I just can't believe what it did. Yeah. Now, all someone right. was asking Terry. This is a this is a personal question. I mean, it's doing all of this. It's doing shadows. It's doing perspective. How much does this sort of invalidate knowing how to do this old school manually? Does it invalidate? I know how to walk to work, but I prefer driving my car. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't invalidate walking. Right. So if you can't, so one of the things that will happen is you may you may need a very specific thing that it can't generate. Right. You may need to, like I said, like we're talking about, well, the sky is good, but I would adjust it a little bit more. Right. Those are things that you could spend time on the prompt or you could spend time with your knowledge of Photoshop right. to make the result more personalized for you. Right. Yeah, we can get to that sky in 20 seconds. Right. Now we but spend. But now I'm like, I just want to tweak. I want to use the adjustment presets. Right. I want to use um, right. adjustment layers. I want to tweak it and get it to match the tone. I want to use a neural filter right. to kind of match more of that particular uh, set. So that now turning off Firefly, turning on my knowledge of Photoshop yeah. to go do those things. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's super important, actually. That was a great question. Thank you, whoever asked yep. that. Uh, because I think that is kind of a feeling with some of this. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> uh, replace. Right. I think it's one of those things too. We've seen it a couple times where maybe it, it does a nice shadow, but it's not, it's not quite right. Right. Maybe you need to blur, you know, brush out well, or yeah, blur and again, the Yeah, I can keep regenerating right. until sure. maybe I get it right. Right. Or, or I could just dip oh, into your own toolbox. Fix it myself. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, I got a couple more examples here before I get to a, a really interesting one. Um, so many choices, so little time. All right, let's let's do this one. This okay. Here here's a here's a Photoshop taking my time versus <laughs> Firefly example. And I've used this example. I, t I tell jokes about this example all the time. So here it is. I open it up. This, I shot this at a at a party, and the guy standing in the background does not have a giant afro. That's a tree that happened to be perfectly positioned behind his head. And we all laughed. Like, I got home and I was cracking up at right. this shot. I posted this on Facebook. We were all just cracking up that he just happened to be standing right in front of this tree to make it look like he has a huge afro. Now, I would then just close it and move on with the rest of my demo. Because what it would take to Photoshop that tree out is having to make up what the corner looks like. Right, exactly. Exactly. 
it wasn't worth the time. And you can <laughs> see as you zoom in, it's green. Right. And, and, and had the lighting been different? Having to make the yeah. corner yeah. and that thing coming down from the ceiling to look right if I get rid of the tree wasn't worth my right. time. Right, enormous amount. No, of work. I just went on. We just used right. this as a joke, and we went on to the other shots. That became the best shot right. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, the function. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but here, let's let's grab our lasso, and let's go in. Now his hair is actually really short. Let's just go into his hair. Again, doing this with the with the touchpad, still with doing touch a nice. Pad, right. Uh, yeah. I'm, still, still pretty good angle though. I'm there. using multiple fingers switching yeah. on yeah. the touchpad. <laughs> Holding my hand down. I'm, uh, I'm going quite, all around. I'm quite hopeless on the touchpad, so no judgment. Yeah, for I, me. I switched bags and forgot to bring the mouse. Yeah. Or the tablet. Yeah. All right, so let's, okay, so now I made the selection of what I want, and I'm just going to hit generate to fill and generate. And again, I, I tried this once. Right, what's so it going to do? I don't know what it's going to do this time. There is that moment of nervousness. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, worst case scenario, it either works or it doesn't. It works or it doesn't, but you know. Got a lot of people watching here, Terry, so. What? Now. Now this is a result this you is might a have result, gotten yeah. looking at like content aware. Right, or but sampling. look at this. Right. This is the part that was hard. Right. I can go fix that, that's right. easy, that's right. easy. Exactly. This is the part where I would have, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No. I'm not trying to figure out what that corner That corner like. angle. All right, yeah. that's the problem. Now I can keep generating, Right. and maybe I'll get better results on the side here, but right now, I'd be happy with this. Because yep. the other stuff's easy. That's right. And case in point, right? Go to the toolbox. I, now I go to the room tool. Right. Go to whatever. Right. The and, hardest and fix part. The, edges. the hardest part was done. Right. That's bad. Right. That's bad. That's bad. So. Hey, kind of nailed it in that first. That first yeah, one. Yeah. Bad result. So poor result. Delete. Because it, it just stored at the background. Poor result. Delete. So let's say I went with. That one's okay, because this one actually wouldn't take much to fix yep, that. Yeah, to fix that. All right, abrupt. so I'd probably go with that one. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll make a new layer, so I don't I keep my generative fill layer. Okay, I got a new layer now, and then I would just go into maybe the remove tool, maybe the patch tool. Let's try the new remove tool. Smaller brush. And I just want to remove this stuff from the side of his head. A little bit more. Done. Look at that. Zoom out. Yeah. So come on. No Look at the stopping ceiling. you from using both. Yeah. But that ceiling, I never did it because I never wanted to take the time to try and make that look right. Jennifer Phil to the rescue. Insane. Yep. Okay. Insane. Yeah, Marcy was saying the remove tool might work for this one too. Oh, so good question. So do you think you could have used the remove tool? No. You tried it. Yeah. No, yeah, I just yeah, know it yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, like yeah, right. that that because again It's looking at pixels. It wouldn't know right. how to make that corner. Right. That's I really can try weird. I can show you what the remove tool would give you. Yeah. I can show you. Yeah, we could do it quick. But I know that would not have worked. But who knows? I could be shocked. Yeah. Well yeah. That's right. All right, let's let's, see. let's try with the remove tool. You are seeing it live. And I don't expect this to be as good right. as what we had with the um, using with generative, the fill, generative yeah. fill. Yeah. Oh, it did better than it, I expected. It actually, it did okay. But you could see that the yeah. But this it's still would very need uneven. Some work. It's a lot right. of work, and it's fixing that is more work than you're ready then, to put the yeah, time in for. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I never did yeah. it. Yeah. So generative fill better in this case. Um, all right. Let, let before I want to get to this example before I. Run out of time. S is saying, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if that guy was never there to begin with. He's AI generated. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, now this. This is the one. Yeah. As I'm playing with generative fill all these past few weeks, I wanted to really challenge it. I wanted to, okay, like, because you, you keep getting yourself, oh my God, that's so good. Oh my God, that's so good. But could it do this? Like, you keep asking yourself now, could it do this? Could it get rid of this? So. I wanted to see, I don't have a reason for doing this, but right. I wanted to see how hard would it be to remove the guy in the middle? So ask your question of the, of the, of the chat. How long would it take you to remove the guy in the middle? Yeah. Because so, keep in mind, 
you got to rebuild the steps. Right. Yeah. And you got to rebuild the guy on the right. Exactly. So, and if I were to say, looking at this, it never. really, it couldn't be done. No, it couldn't <laughs> it be done. Be, it can be done. But it, it's It's like, never going to look right. Give There's me a too time much... estimate right. of how long it would take you to do it. You'd have to really, I mean, you'd have to paint. Look, there's so much of the other guy's body there. Right. To the naked eye, it might look okay. Zoomed in, it would never look perfect. Okay, so now, that's my, true that's story. My estimation. I'll, I'll show you the selection. Maybe. I'll go to my, um, my load selection under select. I save the selection just so I don't have to redraw it. There it is. That's the selection I made. So I went around him, all the way over here, past the laptop, underneath him, around this guy, around with, this guy. With your stylus, I imagine. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> with, under this guy's arm, under this guy's leg. So that's the selection. The first time I did this, it took five generations. Generate, generate, three results each time, generate, to get to the right one. I have the right one in the layer. I have it turned off, but I'm going to generate it for you just in case. Like I have the other one just in case it doesn't work. So generate one year after I learned digital painting. Yeah. <laughs> Again, still valuable. Now the warning is it's going to think to put another person there or other things there. Like okay, this time put a backpack there. It put um, a, sh a shoulder there or something. It removed him. Third try, third, third look. And, and again, this kind of looks funky, so I regenerated again. But third try already got so close. Let's try it again. And last time, like I said, the first time I did it, it took five times to even get this yeah. close. Backpack. <laughs> a person. <laughs> Someone new. Someone new. Bottle. Backpack and bottle. Now that's actually, that's pretty creative. Oh, but yeah, what is this? A leg? <laughs> what's, what is that it's random? A leg backpack? What random yeah. something there. So this is generation number three. But look at the steps. It's already done a great job on removing him and getting rid of the steps. I mean, putting the steps back in. <laughs> random kid. There it is. Wow. Let's take a moment, Terry. There it is. Zoom in to the center, please, if you three, if you'd be three so Three times this time. Let's zoom into that center area because you talked about the steps, which by the way, look, steps in that little area between the the, yep. the check shirt and the white pants. Same perspective. Steps going along the back. Regenerated derriere and back. Yep. And shirt with flex. Yep. It had to make up his left, his his the whole his right side. His whole of his right body. side of his body. This didn't exist in the original. Here's the original. <laughs> right. Here's this. Right. I don't know what this white stripe <laughs> is, but easy, easy enough easy, to remove. Again, easy right. fix. Easy, easy fix. fix. Holy cow! Come on. Now here's the one on the fifth try that worked. That's the one that I, five wow. times of hitting regenerate. So a total of and two look, minutes. And look at the shirt at the bottom of, just at, yeah. the, at the base of I his know. butt right there. Right look here, at that, yeah. how it's. <laughs> so original. That's crazy. Take him out manually. Tell me how long it's going to do. How long it's going to take you to do it. Shadow. Yep, got the shadow. Yep. Again, I think one of the most amazing things too is because those those steps are almost over bright. Actually, his shirt is right. The highlights yeah. are kind of blown out. How it that lighting flows so perfectly with that added shirt and pants with a shadow. You, you'd never suspect otherwise that someone was I know was living in there, living sitting. I, I know it, it's it's just unbelievable. Okay, another extend example. Tightly cropped, missing the shoulders, <laughs> crop tool, hold tip, hold down your option key or alt key to crop both sides at the same both time. Sides, yep. Marquee. Cut in a little bit into the image. Shift. Watch, I don't have to hold down the shift because I got it set to always right. add. 
But shift add for nobody who right. doesn't have shift the preference add. turn on. Generate. Generate. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Hold on. I don't have it. I don't have it. Hold on. Oh, did you only have the one have side? I don't have the option selected. Okay, oh, now we'll add. Glad we called that out. Because it looked like, is that other yeah. side still selected? There we go. I'll admit I couldn't see the dancing. No, <laughs> <that's nice. laughs> I was playing there along, playing along for the cameras. And this is like, well, maybe I just want a slightly uh, a wider shot. It, it was tight crop. Let's 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 redo this after the fact, yes. right? Corporate photo, change it. What? Come on. Let's see that middle one again. Which one you like better? Yeah. Actually, this one looks great too. Yeah, first. One. I like the, the little indent on the shoulder yep. there. Okay. So someone said, oh, the middle guy's reflection was in the glasses. Sunglasses. Select the sunglasses. Right. As a, add that to Again, the selection. Right, right. So it generates that out as well. I just didn't see it. So that's an extend example. Here's an extend and add example. This is one I was telling you about earlier this morning, Jason. So crop tool. We need more table. Need another, we need a table for two. Generator fill, generate. I mean, you could just do this all day. I do. I know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you really just start I doing do. this on all kinds of things. I do. Ma putting stuff in, taking stuff out. That extending. library didn't get built by, by That's itself. Right. No, it, it got did built not. from examples. Right. All right. Oh, just decided to add something That's on the cool. table. I'm not really happy with those tables. Yeah. Hang on. Could do a better job of blending. Do a better those, job of blending the table. Blending so the table I'm together. not happy. Keep going. It could be, you know, distressed wood with stain, right. though. Yeah. Maybe that's an additional thing you add in the prompt there. Better. Nice. Yep. Better. No. No. <laughs> so that's just a that's bad a, result. Yeah, that's a really weird result. Yeah, poor result. Delete. All right. But anyway, let's say we go with this one or this one. Let's say this one. That one's kind of more to mm -hmm. the point. Now, look at the angle that the coffee was shot at. So it's from above, but not directly above. Right. It's still at an angle, so it's right. more like this right. going down. If I were to make a selection, my selection is rectangular. I'm not using right. no polygonal lasso. Right. Exactly. I'm not doing perspective right. selection. And I'm going to go to generative fill. I'm going to say plate of um, eggs. Maybe eggs and bacon. And bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we a little plate of eggs and bacon. It'll be a little. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting back. Okay. It's <laughs> uh, one. Nice. Those are very, very over easy eggs. I don't see eggs. bacon though. Yeah, hey, where's uh, the bacon go? Let's that's do... just that's just an egg, right? Oh, I did plate <laughs> plate eggs. Oh, plate so plate of yes. Scrambled. Someone was asking uh, about prompt classes. Um, Scrambled eggs and bacon strips. You know, a decent a decent command of language is all you really need to, to prompt, well, to be no, honest. Well, no, there's an art to it. There's, there's an art, there, yeah. but also, just speaking clear, by simplicity, actually, yeah. will get you there. And by the way, that egg's not even on a plate. No, it's not. It's just on the table, <laughs> just as, as you often yeah. see. There we go. So plate of scram. So again, just changing the prompt to yeah. plate of nice. scrambled yep. eggs and right. bacon strips. Basic command of right. the language there. Uh, ooh, that looks really good. Also, the shadow, the perspective shadow of the plate. the plate, perspective of the plate, angle. Yep. And the prompt. Yeah. A little plate of eggs. A little plate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right. so good. What are we doing on time? All right, we've got two uh, we got two and a half minutes left. I was going to show you just one more thing, oh, and then we can close yep. on one of your images. So again, going sure. back to the 80s for a second here, just to kind of talk to. This is a picture that I took of my mom a very long time ago. You can tell what era this is. And uh, so like Terry showed with the woman putting her kind of in a, in a medical environment, I always wanted my mom to be, she was a, a, an instructor, to be sort of in a gym environment. So I generated this background, 80s. Uh, you can actually see the prompt here. 
a fitness center in the 1980s with visible weights and treadmills in the background. Very detailed prompt. Detailed prompt, right? But nothing rocket science, like he described what he wanted. Nothing rocket science. But here's the thing, when it masked her, the phone cord cut out because it was sort of invisible behind mm -hmm. her. So using your same technique, now I'm, I'm very shaky with the, uh, with the lasso here, but I'm going to make a little skinny lasso selection. Generative fill. Let me move this so you can see where I'm typing here. And let's do, uh, whoops. Curly uh, 80s phone cord. Actually, just curly phone cord. I don't think I need even 80s in there. Curly phone cord. Probably could have gone to the end of the, to the corner there, but that's okay. Let's see what it does. Now again, that's probably something that wouldn't be too hard to clone in, but it's covering the jacket, her arm, I'd be, it actually would be kind of a pain to try and recreate that exact same look. Come on. There you go. And anyone who had one of those cords in the 80s knows that yep, they would get I know that cord. completely tangled up. I mean, yep. this is, this is so true to form. Also with the shallow depth of field as it goes out of the shot. All right, so uh, quickly on my screen. Thanks everybody. We just wanted to uh, like encourage you to go to Generative Fill and try different examples. <laughs> like I said, I wasn't joking when I say I'm in this all day, just trying different stuff to see what happens. These are some of my favorites. The yeah, corduroy, know, right? the corduroy and the headphones. Problem is I want some of these clothes Yes, now. <laughs> it's gonna be very expensive. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks Cheers, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody. Bye.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to the future. Uh, we're here with Voodoo Val. Hi, Val. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, so good. So we have so much to show you um, in Photoshop today. I am a brand identity designer. I've been working in Photoshop for 10, 15 years. What about you, Val? What do you do? About, about, a, about a decade in Photoshop, specifically, actually. I am a digital illustrator. I am also a graphic designer. And today, um, we are coasting across the galaxy. So we we are, are kind of astronauts today. It's honestly. true. Yeah. In the future, very sci-fi. So we'll be yeah. making a poster today because we want to show you a real-world workflow with some of these new tools. So we have the contextual toolbar. We have some awesome gradient updates. We have some uh, preset. Uh, Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> Adjustment <laughs> presets, I forgot how words work. Adjustment <laughs> presets, and of course the hero. What's the hero of today? The hero of today, in my opinion, really, I, I believe is the generative fill. This is uh, this is my, my favorite so far, um, and I'd love to show you guys uh, all about it if you want to. Do we want to jump in right now, or do I we think want so. to go through? So okay. let's cut to my screen first, okay. because I want to give you all the hottest tea update about how to get this. Um, we're going to show you a lot of cool stuff, but that doesn't matter if you're not working along with us. So go ahead, open up your Creative Cloud desktop app right now, and you're going to see a giant banner. I was going to show you where to get it, but there literally is a gigantic banner. All you need to do right here, click to download Photoshop beta. That's what we're going to be working in today. We've got generative fill, and we have all kinds of updates. Some of those updates are also in the general release of Photoshop that went out this morning. If you want to, you can click on updates right here if you're not seeing things, and then you actually can click on check for updates. And so if you don't see it and you are looking in your Creative Cloud app, you really want access to this, go to updates, click on check for updates, and it should show up. I didn't have it right away, and so you may not have it. Click on check for updates and you can have it. And then everybody can join us right now. Post on social media using hashtag Adobe Firefly with whatever you create. Um, and if you have questions, hi, chat. We can see you right here. Hello, everyone. Wave to chat. Uh, so if you have suggestions for us today, if you have questions, we're here to answer them. And we're here to design with you collaboratively. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. All right, so Val. Mm -hmm. Let's hop over to your screen. Okay. Tell us a little bit about like your zone of work mm -hmm. and what we're going to be working on today and how we're going to incorporate some of this new technology. So this is pure magic, you know, um, and I'm very excited. So what I kind of wanted to do, because we're going to be creating a poster, um, is I've got some images which I think I'm just going to kind of start throwing in here and working on. And you guys will kind of see where the, the magical things happen. And I'll explain um, as we go along and let you folks see what we're doing. Um, but as always with these streams, I want to hear in the chat as we go along here, things that you would like me to add to these images, what you want us to do with these images, yes. um, because we definitely want to take some stuff in from the chat. So I'm going to throw in um, just a futuristic image here. Um, all of the images that I'm working with, by the way, are all available in the free section of Adobe Stock. So if for you would free? like- For free? For free. <laughs> so if you would like um, to use any of these images that I'm using, they are available to you. Um, and so I'm just going to... And um, that link, by the way, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, stock.adobe.com mm -hmm. slash free. free. Yes. That's how you filter the freeze. Um, our moderator will drop a link in chat for you if you want to go explore some futuristic images, get the beta, get some future, and join us on this mm -hmm. journey through space. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually, um, I'm just going to kind of crop up to the edge of this image here. Um, and what I'd like to do is add a little something something to this for now. Um, and really what I think that we need is, this is like some kind of futuristic hallway on the edge of a building. We've got yes. this cool window going over with this like panorama of the city, but I feel like it could be more future. That is a professional term. More for future. Yeah, more yeah, future. More future. Um, and so what I'd like to do is I'd just like to add um, kind of a spaceship, like if you could imagine a ship just kind of hovering outside the window here. Maybe that's not a window at all. Maybe that is an entry, an exit, you know? And so oh, you could, you know. it's like a little like docking bay. Yeah, like yeah. somebody's just pulled their, um, their spaceship, their hovercraft right up to the edge here. So I am going to, just with my lasso tool, I've just circ circled a little area. Um, and you can see up pops uh, this new little generative fill button, which I can click. And this allows oh, it's me. It's behind me. 
which the contextual toolbar, there we go. There Again, we go. <laughs> if you ever have that issue that you're live streaming and your head is over a toolbar, <laughs> the contextual toolbar is your new best friend. This mm -hmm. is a new feature and anything that you're selecting or doing in Photoshop, it will change and just like a good best friend will be like, hey bestie, are you trying to do this? Let me help you. Mm -hmm. So we made the selection and it said, do you want to put something here? And we mm -hmm. clicked on generative fill. And so now it says, describe what you'd like to generate or feel free to leave this blank. But we're going to describe something. So I feel like we should do like a hovering vehicle, a future, we could say futuristic, futuristic, please let me spell everything correctly today. <laughs> yes, which that is a good uh, pro tip as you type. Uh, it, spelling is very important. Uh, if you don't spell something right, it thinks you're uh, typing in a language that it doesn't understand and it can't generate an image based on a language it doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. So check your spelling always. And the tips for writing a good prompt, try to keep it between five to eight words. If you mm -hmm. get more destructive, you can really get into the nitty gritty uh, and then leave out action commands. So don't say add this or do this, just type in what you want to put in that zone. Yes, um, and so what I've done there is I just added that sentence sentence there and I hit enter. And so now it's going to do a little thinking, doing a little, doing a little loading. Um, magic takes time, but boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun! <laughs> so not only that, not only that, it really doesn't stop there. So we have um, kind of a little vehicle in here, but over here in the properties panel, you can see it's kind of transformed a little while, or a little bit, because in our layers, this has kind of generated a brand new kind of layer here. We've got um, our generative fill has created um, a layer on top here, which I can toggle on and off. Um, and when you have your generative fill layer selected here, you can see in the properties panel, it shows you the prompt that you have added. Um, you can actually um, re-edit this and generate, uh, regenerate more um, uh, variations of the prompt, but it also has a variation section where it gives you three different examples or three different um, uh, creations. So we can actually cycle through there and kind of see what we get. Um, I honestly feel like we need to add a little more pizzazz to our Ooh, prompt. So I was zhuzh? thinking, yes, yeah, some zhuzh, some yeah. Zhuzh. yeah. Um, that is such a good word. I, I so love that you just said it that. Is, yeah. <laughs> so let's go, instead of um, futuristic hovering vehicle, I actually want to see if we can do like futuristic, like a flying saucer. Like like I feel like it needs to be, cause this kind of looks like a cryo sleep chamber. It That's does. just like kind of part. Like, yeah, like you know? somebody's like, I'm gonna take a nap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's say futuristic flying saucer. And I believe I spelled saucer correctly. Um, and also we have our wonderful chat, our, our wonderful chat here, our wonderful friends hanging out. So if anyone has any ideas as we go along in this, Please feel free to put any like ideas for the prompts and everything in the chat because we will see them and we will incorporate some of your ideas. Absolutely. So we'll say futuristic flying saucer. I'm not gonna denote color. Yeah, I'd say I go for it I because will. we can change, uh, we can work on color if we need to. Yeah. Again, using collaboratively with this technology and the tech of Photoshop, if we need to go in, change a color, add an adjustment layer, we can do that in conjunction. Really, this is just a tool to help us speed up our workflows. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the things that I have done in the past, oh yes, uh, a lot of things I've done in the past in Photoshop, I am still doing incorporating generative fill into it and using that lovely contextual toolbar. So this looks amazing, by the way. That is fabulous. I feel like that definitely gave me everything that I wanted. It also is like, looks really, really good with the colors that we have in our image so far. Yes. Um, and we can switch around to some of the other ones, but one of the things that I'd like to call attention to is that we do have our previous generations here um, that were within that layer already from our previous prompt. Um, and if I come over to one of those previous uh, layers there, those little variations, um, you can see that it shows our prompt, but if I come back to these newer flying saucers, it changes so you can see which prompt um, uh, I used for that particular generation. So um, I love this and I think that works for me. Um, you can also just, you know, on our toolbar here, you can actually cycle through with the arrow keys as well. You can also change here and hit generate and do all of those things. Um, it's really up to you how you want to use it. This is intuitive for me personally to be able to um, see uh, everything in my little layers or my little panels over here because that's just how I work. Yes, and what's know? really cool about this uh, that I didn't discover until like yesterday, uh, 
it's basically functioning as a smart layer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so just like you would add filters to a smart layer and you can go in and edit it, it is going to save this. So if Val saved this PSD and sent it to me, mm -hmm. this would be here, right? It's it's not just throwing pixels down, it's actually creating a smart layer that blends with the background. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what's so interesting is a lot of times when you're generating things with generative fill, it looks like it's just kind of tossing an image on there. It's filling the entire selection that you have, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can kind of adjust that as you need. I'm just gonna kind of move this around so we can see a little bit more here. I hope that gives yes. us a I little I do more love visibility. when buttons are close enough so that I can tap on it. Yeah. It reminds me of like a Legends <laughs> of the Hidden Temple where they're like jumping and grabbing bananas and stuff. Yeah, I, I will myself leave there. this right here so that you can um, oh, reach yes. up and point at our Generate, things. thank you. Generate. Um, um, all right, so where do we want to take this? Uh, to me, it's feeling a little claustrophobic. It is feeling a little claustrophobic. I wonder if we, we could add something to this hallway. I also have some other images which I felt would be like perfect for some of the other fancier things. That Ooh, we let's can do, do that. Let's do some fancy. With generative films. So let's do some what fancy. I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna snag all of these um, and group them, um, and we'll call this the uh, uh, we'll call space. this space one. There we go. Got it. Space one, just so that I have it, and I'm gonna go ahead and just hide that for now. Um, and I'm gonna come over to my libraries. And now I, I thought this would be a perfect image to use for today because we have like literally a whole area set up here that just like does not have anything in it. Yes. So we can do a whole lot here with this. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm just going to grab my crop tool and I'm gonna bring these edges in because I don't want that space on the side there. But I do want to maybe do something with the um, empty space that's up here. Maybe uh, bring it up a little okay, bit, yeah, you let's think, add, you know? Yes, enhance. Yes, enhance. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna drag this down here and what I'm gonna do is I am going to snag, um, actually, let's do crop again. Got it, yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna pull my crop up just to kind of make this long, like a poster. Like because a crop we top, do, like yes. crop in the top. Like. Yes. <laughs> And I'm it's gonna, like a reverse crop top. <laughs> it is a reverse crop yeah. top in the future. In the future. That's, that's future how they Future reverse crop top. They just wear the bottom half. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to, with my rectangular marquee tool, I'm just going to come in and select uh, the top of this. And I also think I'm going to grab my polygonal lasso tool uh, and I'm going to hold shift and just add some things to it um, just because I want to select like kind of this oh. sky in here and okay. just go ahead and snag a whole bunch of the area here. Yes. I almost, because this is a pretty hard edge here, I feel like we could also get away with like being a little cleaner with that, maybe with like a subject select, but um, And maybe... we could, in theory, this is basically, so again, we're talking about incorporating our current workflows with these new workflows. Yeah. Uh, we just saw Sky Replacement come uh, in the last update in Max, right? Mm -hmm. uh, awesome Sky Replacement. And now this is an extension of that, right? Yeah. We're doing like sky extension, extension. And we could <laughs> then do sky replacement on that extension if we wanted to using generative fill. So what I, the reason why I did want to select all of that stuff is because I figured um, we were about to make some magic up here as if the image was always this uh, ratio, but Love it'd be it. really cool to have like, some buildings and things coming up oh, from the skyline, okay, kind let's see of it. reaching a into sky the sky. Line. Yes. Um, and so how would we describe that? Let's go ahead and kind of experiment here. I'll put this right there. Um, and we could do something like, there you go. <laughs> I, I went to the wrong side. Um, we could do something like. Um, futuristic uh, skyline at dusk. Maybe we change the time of day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK. Few. Uh, and some questions from chat that I want to answer real quick. Uh, someone is saying, can you already use the results and share them via social media or commercially? So it is being built and trained to be safe for commercial use. It is not safe for, or it is not uh, for commercial use yet. It is still in the beta, so not for commercial use, but feel free to share on social media. Um, use hashtag Adobe Firefly with what you're generating so that we can see it. Um, and what's really cool is if you are running Photoshop, if you have been running Photoshop, your computer can handle this. I see some questions about uh, how much weight does it add to your machine, uh, same specs. So it is, again, if you're running Photoshop, you can run this, don't be scared. Go in, download the beta, give it a try, and oh my goodness, look at this. So we've got like a pretty dramatic 
uh, kind of sky here. And so I think what I what would probably be best to do is to so select like a smaller area here and add skyline specifically. I did add a lot of extra words to our prompt. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and just like in this area here between like that top extension of the sky. Actually, sorry, know. while we're doing this, can we like kill this selection? Yeah. And yeah. I want to show just a combination of tools that we have that are newer, that are in our workflows, and these new tools. So the object select tools that we mm -hmm. have that just got added again at Max. So if you go to the magic wand right underneath that, uh, actually, it is already selected yep. right there. I use it all the time. <laughs> yes. So again, what this is going to do is it's going to find everything. So I could technically everything. do this, or I could do it in reverse, honestly. Yes. I could drag. Um, you could hover over, and it will highlight for you. So I could select this um, if I wanted to. And I could also start clicking around and selecting other pieces. I think it really depends on how you'd like to do things. We could just select only the sky because it looks like it got a pretty good highlight over the whole sky there. Um, and I think it kind of is oh, up to you how much you'd like to clean it up. Yes. But Yes. It looks like it's selecting um, the extension of the, it's selecting like the, the mask pieces. Uh, is, that's what yeah. the selection got wonky. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so you can use the object selection. You can use all these tools in conjunction with generative fill. Uh, it is not all about pushing a button. It is a very helpful button, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a kind of addition to your current workflows. So what should we do next? I feel like I, I definitely also want to take some ideas from the chat as far as what we throw in here. I, you know, think that it would be really great to add a city in the background. I feel yes. like that, you know, kind of building it up into sort of a futuristic um, space. But let us know if you have anything that you'd like us to throw in. Um, I'm just going to go for it here unless you feel like we should be picky and clean up. Um, this little area. I mean, I think we could we go for it. Okay, let's go ahead and go for it. Um, There's no rules. And we could say futuristic skyline, city skyline. Let's like add the word city. Oh, in that's there good. Yes, yeah, so we have like yeah. buildings or skyscrapers, yeah. maybe. Futuristic. Maybe I shouldn't do it in caps. I don't know. It feels right. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I like the energy, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Futuristic city. Skyline, and we could just try that for now, let's unless you think that we should add some more. So let's go ahead and see where that goes. And while that renders out, um, if we cut over to my screen, I want to show you something that is available again to you all. Uh, so firefly.adobe.com. Uh, today you can go in, you can start playing around with some of these tools. Uh, and if we click on text to image, this is something that has been around for a, a little while. You've probably seen it on a stream before. Uh, but let's say that I wanted to try to mirror something that you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of say futuristic city skyline photorealistic. Re realistic. Whew. Uh, the amount of realistic. <laughs> uh, that's anytime I'm generating. So I'm going to uh, generate one of these images. Looks great here. And I actually want to do photo. Uh, this time so that it looks a little more like a photo that we could be using. Mm -hmm. And watch what happens is there's a new button that is right up here. You can see it has generative fill. And just like in Photoshop, we're here and now we have the tool to be able to use it in the web experience. Mm -hmm. So I can add in, let's say that I want to add a spaceship like mm -hmm. you did. All I need to do is click on add. I have my insert and I'm just going to select the area that I want to add a spaceship. And then I can type in sci-fi spaceship flying saucer. And when I generate this, what it's going to do is it's going to plug that image that it's generating into the image that I have right there. And you can Amazing. see it's matching the lighting, the sun rays. Everything is kind of pulling together. So you don't have to do a lot of the compositing work. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just speeding up your workflows, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to be sitting there cutting things out, making selections. Boom, you can do it here way faster. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's cut back and see what we have landed on. I love this. <laughs> I cannot wait. So we have, I think, I think you know, before we didn't just do like adding clouds and stuff, we also added a time of day and everything, but just adding like futuristic city um, uh, skyline has like 
taken this look, sort of, like the similar look yes. and this similar material and like created what I think is a pretty good looking concept space for like, uh, I feel like I'm in the courtyard possibly yes. of like a really important like corporate building in like 3247. Yes, it feels, <laughs> it I mean. feels like very Blade Runner, but like if yes. Apple did Blade Runner. Yes, exactly. Um, so someone in the uh, chat actually has a suggestion for us, which I think okay. would be great. Can you indicate some, uh, Futuristic vehicles in the space below. It looks like a lot of sp parking spaces. Yes, spaces. yes. I love that. I think that's a fabulous idea. And I was also thinking that this large structure here looks like some kind of you know important building. So if anyone has any ideas for what we, what we could do, maybe like a big banner, like Ooh, yes. you know, just like drop down the side of this. I'll work on some of that. Okay. Yes. All right. And then in the meantime, we are going to take that idea from I believe that is Creature Ten, um, adding asking for a parking lot for spaceships, um, some hovercraft areas, and I think that's a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm thinking we could um, create because we can come in with our polygonal lasso tool and we can add like some lines or denotion areas. And I'm thinking one of the first things we could do is maybe this entire space is not a parking lot, but maybe we can have like um, right here, we can kind of have some kind of sitting area. Like we will, let's bring this right here. I'm just gonna kind of do that in perspective. And we can like maybe put some kind of wall separating like this is the front courtyard of this area and then there'll be some like hovercrafts over here. Yes. So something, let me actually, let us let me re-select. And um, when you're selecting, another pro tip here, we're mm -hmm. here to help. Uh, when you're selecting, think about perspective. It will match perspective, so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But think about kind of where things are going. So you can see Val is drawing a rectangle kind of at perspective and think about kind of helping it put it where it needs to be. Uh, this also has something for scale. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to put an apple on a table and you make a small little s a selection, that apple is going to be a tiny little apple. Mm -hmm. And so you wanna make sure that you're selecting the entire area that you want to put something in there. I'm just gonna see what happens if we generate just futuristic like sort of wall. Ooh. Like a little like, you know, area there and then we can like do a line of spacecrafts kind of thing. I said transparent and it made it invisible. Maybe <laughs> so, glass? Oh, that actually, I feel like that, hold on a second. I kind of like almost like that, like just cleaned that area up and made it look really nice. And it is kind of like a little glass-esque. I should have put glass because yeah. I thought about that at first. It but I might leave that here because I think that just looks really nice and subtle there. But let's do something interesting. Let's actually put some spaceships in here. Um, I'm thinking that we could add, uh, I have tried to add rows of spaceships and you actually can get legitimately a row of spaceships extending someplace. Um, so if I go like this and I bring this down in perspective as we were discussing and I do something like a row of Space ships extending into the distance. Distance. Yeah, let's see if into we can space. do that. space. I have tested it out a few times and it did do something actually that was pretty cool. Um, and I wanna see if we can do that again. Then I feel like we definitely need um, a bunch of spaceships up here, maybe a spaceship that's like hovering and overlapping. Let's see where this went. I wonder, let's try that again. Let's try a different sort of prompt. Let's just do one large I was like that we're still in all caps. <laughs> we are still in all caps. Um, I will take caps off. Let's not do caps. Let's say, um, just like a white hovercraft. Hover car, I feel like that might give us car stuff. Hover spaceship. Yes. I feel like we will get more um, like actual car shaped things. And I don't know if we want actual car shaped things. I think we want it to look a little, uh, a little alternative, you know? 
Alternative. Alternative like, I, is a good I word like for it. Uh, and something we, we might want to try too is uh, maybe merging everything down yeah. and then building on top of that one. I more think time. that's probably. Uh, so I think a it's good sampling idea. stuff that is already generative filled. Yes. And so it's it's gener generativing on the generative. <laughs> uh, I just went ahead and made it a smart object yes. um, so that I can get in there and look around later. So now let's try that again. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to do just my polygon lasso tool again and we'll do like a big large spaceship kind of like parked in here. Big boy. Um, yes. And let's go ahead and do the same kind of thing. We'll say um, futuristic, futuristic hover. Craft? Can I do hover craft? I don't know. We'll work? see what happens. Yeah. Let's see if that throws something in there. Uh, and like for might. those of you saying you met, you don't see it in the Creative Cloud Desktop app, uh, make sure that you go click on that check for updates uh, and see if that will bring it up for you. Um, it also is not available to anyone under eighteen. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Okay. okay. I like. That's like a almost like a. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I want to. Uh, that feels like the space version of like a sea do. Yes, it does. <laughs> Honestly, I'm here for it. This almost looked like some kind of like this is way larger up here than we thought because yes. if this is like a building. But I do actually really like this. I think that's super cool. I feel like we could probably do another few things, um, sort of like this, to kind of create that um, like parking area like what you know everybody was talking about so let's kind of bring more of that let's like do another one like um i want to find the edge of that there we go that's good enough for me um cool and we could enough. do give me uh give me give me a word we haven't used in our hovercraft spaceship sort of generation prompt yes here because, Chat, give us something i think maybe yeah. like a surfboard kind of thing could be cool or like a can like we a, add the? We can add the word surfboard and just yeah. like I'll interpret it. Okay, Absolutely. let's see. Futuristic surfboard because it doesn't have to be. You know, I feel like you can experiment with prompts. Why not use words that aren't actually what you're looking for specifically in the prompt, but because it's future, so you can make it what it's you the want future. it. It's the future. So futuristic surfboard um, with wings. Oh. Like a flying surfboard, yeah, like, that, a, like a flying surfboard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think we'll see what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if the uh, if the selection might be too small. But let's that, see what it's it possible. I can grab. <laughs> Just put it, it's the, it could be. Surfboard. I mean, yeah, it's surfboard, surfboard. So let's go ahead and um, oh, a capsule. That's a really good idea. A capsule. A capsule, like, like a, a big... like something that you would sleep in. Okay. Uh, that like is just parked there. All right, all right. Uh, so while you generate that, okay. we can cut back over to my screen. So I've been working behind the scenes secretly uh, with a conjunction of Firefly, of Illustrator, kind of pulling things together because I want to show you another tool uh, that is available now in this Adobe Firefly beta that you can see. If you scroll down just a little bit past the stuff we've been talking about and go to Generative Recolor, great new tool. You can click on Generate, and all I'm going to do is click on Upload SVG. And I'm going to grab this SVG that I just created right here. And I'm going to kind of come up with some colors. And maybe we want it to be a very summer, bright, fun, and electric. So we're going to hit Generate, and it will take that SVG, find some color palettes for us. Uh, if you've used color.adobe.com before, this is helping us kind of speed up that process. And again, just work faster. Mm -hmm. And so you can see. This looks great to me. Uh, I love this. We can hit shuffle here, and it will shuffle into different variations of Amazing. that. Amazing. Right? Pretty fun. And mm -hmm. then I can click download, and it will download that SVG back for me very quickly. So maybe we can use something like this for the poster that we put on the side of the building. I love it. I love it. All right, so let's see what we've generated over on your parking lot here. So I went ahead with the like capsule sort of idea here. We did actually get some pretty cool things. I kind of like this. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it screams future to me. This is really cool though. It's like the I feel future. like this is like a yeah, this is definitely the future. So I kind of want to leave this one. I think that was an excellent idea, um, and I believe that was from uh, Fabiolita Draws. So thank you for thank the idea. You. I feel like we also though we. 
we really, really need um, more like spaceships flying. Like I'm imagining like, you know, the whole Futurama like, you know, yes. with the- with the, yeah. with the streets? Yes, so I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, come over here and see if we can experiment with a little something. Um, let me do like, let me grab my polygonal lasso tool. I am, you know, one of the things that I'm really learning just as like, you know, sharing a little bit of my personal experience with the generative fill, um, just in case you folks run into this as well, is like being mindful of the size of my selection yes. as I start to add things, because I have an idea for like, kind of what I want to go into a space, um, but it may interpret what I add a little bit differently. And so leaving a lot of breathing room for anything that could possibly come about um, is I think a pretty good rule of thumb. Yes. You know? Um, so let's go ahead and let's try this again. I wanna try um, a line of multiple space. Let's do, let's do flying saucers because flying saucers seems to be the name of the game today. Okay. Flying saucers. A line of multiple flying saucers. Okay, let's see. Because I feel like we could do that like disappearing behind the building and then yes. I could do another line coming in from the other area and it would just look like air traffic, you yes. know? Uh, and once we do this, I think that we can play around. We were talking before the show mm -hmm. about generating textures. Ooh. We got one, okay. we got one, that works for me. Let's look, we can look at the other ones, yes. but uh, continue. And what's cool here is again, we can do a more traditional workflow. We can mask out uh, one of these and mm -hmm. then keep building with a whole bunch. We mm -hmm. can generate as many as we need to. Um, and what's really cool here is once we get done with this, uh, we're gonna show you a way to generate really great textures and effects and then put them onto your photo. So we're still gonna be compositing, traditional compositing, mm -hmm. but we are going to be combining the power of generative fill with the power of Photoshop. It's gonna be really, really fun. So Indeed. I'll generate some of those textures for us okay. um, while you continue over there. Um, let's go ahead and hop over to my screen and I'm just going to have a white layer. That's right, it is just a layer that is just white, very easy. Uh, so I'm gonna make a new layer here by just Control uh, Shift N is going to be a new layer and I'm gonna fill that with white. All right, so white layers. And this is something I'm still kind of playing around with and discovering. Mm -hmm. I think it will work. Let's okay. give it a shot. So let's say that we want to add maybe some lens flare effects. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll kind of just make a selection here and then I'll generate and click and just generate, uh, let's say lens flare um, on black background with sparks. Mm -hmm. So hit generate, it's going to generate this for me. And thinking through the foundational basics of how we use Photoshop, right? One of the best things in Photoshop is blending modes. And so when I'm thinking about generating things like this, uh, I am thinking about blending modes. Uh, let's see, what did I? Oh, okay, I spelled lens wrong. Uh, so let's just do a uh, light flare. Not only did I spell lens wrong, I also didn't think about lens being glasses. So <laughs> if you have an unexpected result like that, mm -hmm. think about how to communicate it a different way, mm -hmm. right? So I'm doing mm -hmm. like a kind of light leak on a black background. Let's see what it like pulls in here. like a burst, burst. Could oh, like be a kind light of a, burst. Yeah, like a, yeah. a light burst on a black background. Um, okay. Light gradient, you, you know, I, just yes. kind of and thinking actually, of different. I'm going to make it black here and let's just do a uh, Sparks and uh, light glows. And let's see what happens. If we're doing it on a black background, I'm doing that so that I can then merge it down mm -hmm. and then send it over to Val to kind of overlay on there to have something on the image. So let's see what it generates. I have done this with textures. So doing like concrete uh, textures mm -hmm. is really good. Okay, there's some sparks. Okay, so what I can do is I'm going to merge this down real quick 
And then I'm just going to drag it into our shared library, mm -hmm. and then we can show how we can incorporate it uh, on your side. So okay. you're continuing to generate uh, ships over there. What do you got going on on that screen? Um, we have got kind of a little cluster of uh, I don't know if these are invading flying saucers. I think that they're they're this they're is just where they're from. For the day. Yeah, they're, yeah just, they're just you know out. they just had a day at the office. You know, it's been a little stressful. They're going to you know hang out with their friends, play some video games. Oh, the video games this world probably has. You know, this is uh, I think that actually looks pretty cool. So we've got like you know some flying saucers happening um, in the sky. We've got our like future Corvette here, which is what it's starting to look like to me a yes. little bit. We've got our like sort of capsule sort of uh, structure here. And it almost to me looks like this is a building of some kind um, and that this uh, vehicle here is much larger um, than I originally was like sort of seeing it. So maybe this is like a bus of some kind, but we've got like kind of a cool thing going on so far that I am really loving and I think that but, um, it would be really cool to, I mean, what else does it need as like a base for a pretty cool poster? Cause we are gonna get like some light leak kind of stuff, hopefully like kind of throw yes. some stuff in there. Um, I feel like we might need to experiment with a little bit of text, you know, um, could be cool. Uh, let's uh, do some gradients. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's play some gradients. Yeah. So let's there is that. a gradient in which we were freaking out before. Again, we've been using Photoshop forever. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been using Illustrator forever mm -hmm. and we're so excited. I, like, generative feels amazing. <laughs> I do think that I may be, like, equally as excited for the way that gradients work now in Photoshop because yes. it's going to just be so much easier. So I'm going to come in here on my gradients panel, um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know, kind of go through and just look at what's available to us by default because I think um, we've got, like, kind of a, a mellow color palette right here, and I feel like we can choose some of these really soft, nice tones. Uh, maybe something like this uh, could work, and I'm going to make sure that I have my actual gradient tool selected here. So as I kind of toggle that on, I can come in and start to, if I can, yes, um, start to kind of play around with how this gradient is uh, interacting here. And I think I'm gonna maybe change the distance. I might also turn this to the side before we um, maybe experiment a little bit with blending modes because I know that my sky is up here and then we have kind of a different color down here towards the bottom. Um, we can also kind of come in a little that way. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I think that works for now, but let's throw it on a blending mode just so we can start to see through it a little bit. Um, and I think what we will <coughs> use, I'm gonna preview these because I don't want it to be so wild and crazy. I feel like overlay honestly really blends everything super nicely together. If we can like peek at that, I feel like it just yes. kind of really tied everything in very nicely. Um, and one of the things that's cool, so we've got that blue, um, kind of stretching up into the corner there. We've got like this, like kind of a soft blushy pink. I love down. this toning. Mm -hmm. It's looking very like vintage sci-fi. Yes, very much. Um, and we can also, if I hover on the edge here and go ahead and add um, another color to my gradients, I can do that. Um, and I, what I'd like to do is change uh, the color, maybe something um, just like sampled straight from there, if I can. Uh, and if you notice, if I want the to. gradient tool interface is very, very different. Uh, so you can just like Illustrator kind of click to add a dot of where you want to add a color. Mm -hmm. You can drag things around. It's giving you live previews. So no more of the days of like gradient, 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 right? <laughs> we, I know that we all know that workflow that we like just keep dragging out the gradient again and again until we get and it right. And just see if you can figure it out. Yeah. Yes, the it's just here. It's just perfect. Uh, Honestly? So, Sorry, I was, you know, no, when no, you're something good. cool is happening yes. and then you just kind Tell of me start. About it. So I was just realizing that with this darker color, like kind of in the center here, it almost like keeps us with that tone, but adds like sh like a like a dark tone underneath where our um, where our flying saucers are hovering. And I almost like it, but I kind of, I don't know, I might just. <laughs> a designer's journey. I know, it's I just like, like, I it. don't hate it. Yes. But I might I might leave it as is here, just because I do kind of miss that like 
bright open tone. Um, I think that actually looks pretty pretty cool. I think yes. I might leave that, especially with that pink. I don't know why that looks so good down there, but it sure does, doesn't it? It does. So uh, something that uh, I just added into our library, okay. I added in a little light spark explosion, and this could be something for like a portal maybe. Um, and you'll see, again, super mega hack. Generate on a fully black background, mm -hmm. and you can get great light leaks. You can get orbs. You can get textures, and then all you need to do is set that blending mode to screen, and watch what happens. All that black floats away, and now we have this really cool effect that you can put onto your image. So, oh, you know what we could do with this? Tell you know me what, what we, we could do with, do with this. We are going to um, transform this, uh, and we're going to get a little interesting with the perspective is what we're going to do. Ooh. Let's go into distort, I think, because I'm just going to eyeball this. And I think we can start making this look sort of oh, like, like it's, it's the like, energy co like coming yeah. out the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just kind of, if I am I going to do it properly. I know what I'm doing. I can I, do it. I, <laughs> you know, when, but when you start messing with the distort. Yeah, yeah like you, you get into your regular process and this happens all the time here on Adobe Live. If you've never uh, watched Adobe Live before, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, make sure you subscribe. We are live pretty much every single weekday, uh, giving you awesome content for you to learn, level up your skills. Uh, and if you've ever watched before, you know that this is the workflow that we're in right now, right? Yes. Oh, look at <laughs> we have a little animated graphic. Subscribe to our yes. YouTube channel. This um, way, this way, this yes, way. Yes, this way. So we want to show you, like us, we are real creatives. We mm -hmm. are figuring this out with you. We mess up, and a lot of times we get into our actual workflows which is what we're doing now. And then we have to reassure you that we do know what we're doing. Yes. Uh, because our normal workflows are very chaotic. Uh, and we love that. So hopefully your workflows are just as chaotic as ours. Uh, and you can kind of relate to what we're doing. And if you are creating using generative fill, hashtag Adobe Firefly, or if you're using firefly.adobe.com, share on social media and let us know what you're creating. Is this like something that could be interesting? It's like they have like little force fields underneath here. Oh, so yeah. So That's maybe they're like landing thinking. and this is their like yeah. afterburners. Like a little, honestly, they could just like not even be flying saucers. This could be like, that could be a bar up there. That could be, you know, oh, yeah, like, that like could you be like a up, hangout. Yeah, yeah, you could, you that. could, that could be a hangout up there. I honestly, I'm trying to figure out. Maybe I'll put it on one of these. Um, and while you perspective with those, let's go ahead and cut back to my screen real quick. Yeah. Uh, I do want to show you because I know that this works 100%. Uh, let's say that I want to add texture to an image. All I need to do is uh, a question in chat was, do you need to start with an image? Absolutely not. Mm. Uh, anything that you can imagine is now available and uh, easy to use here in Photoshop. So we are going to have a white artboard, completely white. There is no image here except mm -hmm. for whiteness. And we are going to click on generative fill. And then from here, I'm going to go broken concrete texture uh, with, uh, let's do maybe like grit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to type in black and white just to make sure. I don't probably need to put that. I actually don't need to put that because I can use an adjustment layer. Uh, but. We're going to generate that in here, and we are going to generate a texture that we could then use on typography. We could put over a poster, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and in my past experience, it's been awesome. Yeah, there we go. So we have a really awesome texture here that we could use. Uh, one there and one here. I'm actually going to Love use it. this one here. Uh, and I'm real quick. How are we doing over there? Still perfecting? Okay, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm I just want to make sure stuff, that I'm not taking, taking over too much. Okay, so no, what I'm going to do so here good. is I'm going to merge this down. And I'm gonna get really a little more advanced. If you've never used, <laughs> this is, I just got excited, so we're gonna do it. <laughs> um, if you've never used displacement maps in Photoshop, so check yes. this out. I've generated this texture. It is black and white. There's a lot of gritty goodness on it. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I'm gonna save this file as texture and hit enter. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to type out some type on white. So we're going to grab the type tool by hitting T, and I'm just going to type in Adobe Live. That's us. That's all of you here with us right now. So I'm going to type this out. I'm going to put my type here. It's going to kill me if I don't fix this. And the great thing with the contextual toolbar, it's all right here, right? If I need to change anything, the font, whatever, I can do it right here. Mm -hmm. um, so check this out. I'm going to go over here, and I am going to change the tr kerning, tracking, tracking, tracking. Tracking. Uh, Distance between top and bottom tracking. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do this. 
And then watch what happens, is I'm going to take this layer of my type and I'm going to use that texture that I just had generative fill on, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna rasterize my type just to be safe. And then I'm going to go to filter, distort, displace. And we want to just keep these settings for now because we're trying things. And then we're going to put our texture in here. We're going to hit open. And now it displaces that type. And look at this gritty, delicious Amazing. texture that we got. Uh, and again, that's what I wanted to show. In the workflows that I use, I'm always texturing type. I'm always trying to get those rough edges. And generative fill is a great complement to my current workflows, mm -hmm. right? So I can generate texture, work, put it as a display in my map, use it in my regular texture, it just speeds mm -hmm. everything up. Because how awesome. long have you spent on any occasion when you're trying to make a displacement map, like hunting for the oh, perfect texture? I have spent hours. Yes, I like hours. literally will take pictures of like carpet and like mm -hmm. on my phone go for a walk and I'm like, okay, I need the con concrete, whatever. Um, it just, like I can do it all here and I can do most of it from this contextual toolbar that is floating around saying like, hey bestie, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have some beams happening over here. I'm it looks like you're back beams. into generating. What are we <laughs> I think we don't have to do, we don't We don't have to. We can move on to another thing. I just wanted to see if possibly I could do like a, like a, like a cotton candy pink beam me up Scotty moment yes. here. Um, which I'm not sure how I feel about it, but. Really? It, I love the it, first one. I do actually kind of feel like, do you like the first one or the second one? I feel like the second one is kind of okay, a second, little softer. Yes. But I kind of, I kind of like it. I think we'll leave it in there. Um, so what do we need next? What are we doing? Because I feel like we uh, could do text. We could go through. Uh, so let's do some text. Okay, let's Why do not? some text. Yeah, let's do some text. So as you do some of that text, I do want to answer a question that happened somewhere in chat. There we go. Uh, can you use a generative on a transparent layer? That would be easier. So in theory, yes. But uh, doing it, it needs something to generate from. Mm -hmm. And so doing it on like a white layer or a black layer, it at least has like pixels that it is generating from. Mm -hmm. uh, and so doing it on a blank layer, I don't think will work. Let me actually check. Uh, I don't think it will work on a blank layer because it needs something to generate from. Okay. Um, I am going to dive into text, dive. but if you want to generate another burst oh, of yes. something, maybe you can try to actually generate a beam. On oh, a let's on try a black to do that. background, yes. you could do that as well because okay. I think that that would be really cool. All right, chat. So let's go ahead and while Val looks for text, um, I am going to and we're using we're going to use Adobe Firefly to mm -hmm. render out some text, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. But I will go ahead and see if we can get on a transparent, just a triangular beam. And I'm actually going to be very specific about the uh, kind of shape that I draw here. Let's go ahead and kind of just make a triangle and let's see what happens. I'm actually very curious about trying to generate on a blank. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> also, our poster, because we are making a poster, we need a, like a, is it a movie? I feel yeah, like it should be. Yeah, I think it's a, a movie. And, and what is this movie? We need a title chat. Who Who is it starring? First of all, because I feel like we could snag somebody from the chat to be the star of our movie. Absolutely, I feel oh, like yes. that has to happen. It's I think Chad. Chad is an Chad is an awesome Photoshop guru. Yes, yes. And Chad, I think. Chad Rolfs. Okay, yes. Chad Rolfs is the action hero of our futuristic movie. What is this movie called? I'm gonna need to know the um, title of this. I'm thinking. Um, I'm gonna stay away from the obvious futuristic movie titles that I. <laughs> Yes. That I want the future. Yeah, the future. The future. Um, but we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna just start mess messing around with um, text looks. I also love that we both to... are doing this little thing. Yes. That we're like ready. Okay. So here is why I was generating on black or white. If mm -hmm. you make a selection on this, is what I, th I thought was gonna happen. If you make a selection on a transparent background, it mm -hmm. is going to fill that whole selection, right? So we talked about it, uh, kind of it's making that smart layer and it's filling in all that space. So mm -hmm. when we generate on a black layer, it is actually generating the black as well, right? And so mm -hmm. it's just taking the context. And so if we do it on a blank layer, it doesn't have anything to go off of. And so if we do a black layer, it is 
it is still generating that black, but we won't be able to notice it because we are going to be screening that black out. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why it's still important to know the basics of Photoshop, how it works, and how you can use it along with this new workflow. So we're gonna generate in that same prompt and we'll see the difference between the two and how we can kind of use this system to incorporate into our workflow. Love it. Um, I also love that your screen just says Chad. <laughs> That's, he's the star. He's yes. the star of this whole thing. So obviously, you know, but I feel like we, like this is what I would love for like the movie title font to be in, yes. you know, like, but we, so I, we just have Chad for now, but we definitely have to have like a, a title of sorts. So I'm gonna look um, and see um, what we've got. A Day at the Office starring Chad. <laughs> I, I mean, it could be a futuristic office. It doesn't have to be an can, action film. Can it be like, can it be like, just like a future, re like it's like they decided to reboot, reboot the, of office, the office, but yes. like in like a thousand years. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So we're gonna we're gonna do the office and Ooh, then it's gonna be like Val. starring. Ch Ooh, that Look is perfect. who's got some sparkles. Oh my gosh. It's good. I love, So I love so much. Uh, to show you what's going on here again, because people were asking about the uh, transparent background. This is on transparent background. It is not rendering transparently, it is rendering the black, but mm -hmm. that's because it's taking the context of what's around it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when you're trying to do stuff like this, render on black, render on white, use multiply, use screen, and it'll be super easy to pull it off of that background. Um, another thing, so we're gonna, this is gonna be the office, but I feel like, what's a futuristic word for office? Because I, I feel like uh, it shouldn't be the office, it should be like the landing uh, pad. I love <laughs> the, that, the landing pad. The I landing like the landing pad, pad yes. So while Val does that, I am, uh, again, I'm using Creative Cloud Libraries, which if you haven't used them, they're amazing for collaboration. I just grabbed this layer directly in Photoshop, hit plus, added that graphic, and check it out. Val now has that in her libraries that she can use on that uh, moment. And someone's saying, that was a bit too fast. I'm not sure if you're saying I was talking too fast or it's scary how fast it works. Um, I'll take both. I'll slow down my talk <laughs> and I will celebrate the efficiency of Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and like throw this in here. We've got uh, some landing pad text. I feel like we could do some sort of something here where I will, you know, use a, the gradients to like kind of give us, cause right now you can't read it. Um, so I feel like we're gonna like maybe fill in the top here with like kind of fade it. Um, uh, with a we'll gradient, have, using the yeah, new gradient tool? And using the new gradient Ooh. tool indeed. And we got about five minutes okay. just for time check. So oh, goodness. this is when we start to scramble. Yes, time flies. Um, I will, uh, I'm gonna hide it uh, and UFOs. use what you have given me in the library. It might take me a little um, time to load it here. Um, so good. Uh, maybe and I can uh, while you with gradients. Do that, I'll show what you just did uh, when your screen wasn't on, is yes. Val was actually using on uh, the text effects. So if you go to firefly.adobe.com, mm -hmm. you can play around with, uh, ooh, the inno Innovarium. I love that. Uh, someone to Nintendo systems instead of the office, the Innovarium. Oh, that's perfect. Right? It sounds okay. really good. Yeah, we might so have to do that. What instead. Val was doing was clicking on text effects and then typing in the text that you want. So Innovarium, I love that. And then describing it. So maybe we want it to be futuristic, sci-fi, um, maybe white and blue, we can designate some colors, mm -hmm. and then hit generate. And then from here, we can actually pick different fonts if we like a font. I always use Source Sans just because I like this font a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it will generate some really cool text effects. Ooh, I love those. Uh, <gasps> Right? That's, and it has like blue in it, which I think is like, like that blue is gonna look really great with yes. in a variant. Oh so my gosh. So I'm gonna yeah. download that. And then what's cool is, right, we're working in Photoshop. Uh, that's okay. I'm gonna open Illustrator because I'm dropping it into this library uh, that we've been using. And I can very, very easily just come into this library. And in any Creative Cloud app that has libraries, all you need to do is open that library. And I actually can just go to my downloads. Where are you? Downloads? Downloads, there we go. Uh, there it is, right here. Uh, and I can bring this into whatever program, right? So I literally mm -hmm. just dragged it in. Mm -hmm. And then I can add to library. So with it selected, go to plus, and then click on graphic, and boom, that graphic is now in there. So you can do that Photoshop, uh, you can add, they, go, they go into Express, mm -hmm. anywhere that Creative Cloud libraries are available, super easy and super fast to be able to do that. Uh, so 
You're doing one more gradient. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I probably should not waste as much time as I'm wasting on this though. So, <laughs> so we so got five we, minutes left. Okay, okay, let me get into the details of a gradient. Yeah, <laughs> mess with it. Um, I honestly kind of I was debating rather or not we actually wanted to wash it out that much, but I almost kind of feel like it gives it like a sort of like stylistic vibe to it, um, which I might play with a little bit more. But I feel like if we kind of do it like that, then we can get um, a little more readability on our title. So I'm gonna oh, go yes. ahead and leave it like this um, and just go with that. And um, we can throw the title in and um, see where we can get to in our last five minutes. So I'm just gonna drag that in here. I feel like that looks pretty yeah. good right up there. And make sure that you stick around uh, after this. We're going all day here on Adobe Live. So stick around with us all day. If you're working on something, keep us on in the background. Uh, if you're driving, don't look at your screen. Just like listen to us yes. or whatever. We'll, we'll, <laughs> We're we'll a podcast. Yeah. yeah, so there is text that is being moved around the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully you're joining us for the rest of the day. Right after this, uh, I believe that we have Paul Tranny coming up, which is going to be a really fun time. Uh, yes, indeed. I'll be hosting him. So it's going to be completely off the rails and so much fun, and we'll be taking a lot of your suggestions from chat. Uh, I believe that we might be trying to build some monsters, so mm. that'll be fun. A little spooky. That should like, be a blast. Yeah, I like it. That's that's right up my alley for sure. Contextual toolbar. Contact, yes, contextual toolbar. So I like have all of my stuff here, and I'm just you know I'm using um, my text tool, um, and I'm going through and adding things. And just as I'm switching from tool to tool, it is pulling up here on this toolbar. Like, is this what you want to do next? Is this what it's you're looking so for? Really so I don't have to. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have to like move around and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, it, honestly, it, in a way, it's gonna end up clearing my workspace because I have all of these things yes. open that I use. But if your contextual um, Hot keys? Is just, we don't know her. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah. just we just need um, to have this out yep. next to what our workspace, and it can like kind of ask us. So I'm gonna leave that there. That's um, good to me. Try not to be precious with everything, but I think so, I'll add Chad Rolfs eventually. Yes, we love you, Chad. Uh, if we are, we are, we'll post it on social media. Absolutely. Hashtag Absolutely. Adobe Firefly. If you are going to do that, go ahead. Tag Photoshop. Hashtag Adobe Firefly. Um, have some fun, stick around. We'll be back in five minutes. And by we, I mean, I'll be sitting right here and then <laughs> you'll stay in this stream and then come back and it'll be this exact same shot. Val, thank you so much. Any parting wisdom or advice to our friends who are getting creative today? Um, let your imaginations run wild, folks. Yes. There's not there's not a lot of limits here. So um, definitely check it out, make some cool things and let us see. Have fun, bye everybody. Adios.
Hey everybody, welcome. We are going to be showing you everything new in the future of Photoshop with the one and only Paul Tranny. Hi Paul. Hello, hello Andrew. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. So if you want to design with us and create at home on your computers, your machines, all you need to do right now is open up the Creative Cloud desktop app. And from there, you are going to go to a few places to check. First, you are going to go to Updates. Click on Check for Updates. There is an update to the general release of Photoshop as well today. And then if you want to see if you have that little beta fun, you can click right here on Beta Apps, and it will give you access to the beta app. You can download it, and that is mostly what we'll be working in today, right? Mostly working in Photoshop you Beta? You got it. Cool. Photoshop Beta. So we'll be working there, and Paul, Tell us a little bit about you for maybe some people oh. who have stumbled in, and then tell us about what we're working on today. Oh, this is, well, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Paul Trani, evangelist for Adobe. Uh, yeah, traditionally a designer, so this is a lot of fun. I think this generated, I've been doing Photoshop a while, like oh, maybe like a lot of you. But this is like, what we're gonna cover today is like the biggest thing to hit, you know, Photoshop since I don't know when. Yes, I was thinking this morning about Design School Me, and I remember when they showed, uh, they took a cigarette butt out of grass for when they did content to wear fill. And I mm. lost my mind. Yeah. And I woke up this morning and I was like, this is that moment. Like that mm -hmm. big, like wow moment that kind of changes the way that we work as creatives. Yeah, it's it's true. Like it's gonna it's gonna change things. I think it is the biggest thing since Content Aware Phil, which is again like 10 years old. Uh, but you know, it's like, you know, I like being in this design field, design slash technology field, because things are always changing. So it's yes. it's like never boring. And you're, we're all living in the most exciting, pivotal time for design, probably even the world as well, uh, if we want to go more broad than that. So it's going to be super fun. Yes. Yeah, so what are we going to be doing today uh, um, on this stream for the next hour or so? We're going to do all sorts of fun things. So Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of, um, you know, we'll, we'll, I want to show some like real world examples. Okay. But we want to go sort of real to into like the surreal. So we're going to start out, Ooh, you know, that. very practical and then we'll just like make some fun stuff. Too. Yes. I love so. that. Grounded and then slowly floating away. Slowly Perfect. floating away. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is this is really fun for me. All right, so we're going to start um, in Photoshop beta app. Yeah, let's right. do it. So let's hop over there <laughs> and get started. Yeah. So, and a lot of you have seen this. It's just so easy. Actually, you know what? I want to switch over to Sachi, who is on the uh -huh. um, cre Creative Cloud like collaboration team, we just took this photo, by the way, in the other room, uh, and this is a case where like, what will it do if we expand this out? Ooh. So all I did is, you know, just use the crop tool. You'll see that a lot. Yep. I actually don't Pulse use the crop area. tool that much. I I often go to, uh, and I think this makes me very old school. I go to canvas size. Like all the time. Oh yeah, I mean, like but I think I'm the only. Am I the only one that does this? It's not the wrong way. It's a, <laughs> it's a different way. I just like get. I just. I don't know. It's just so. It's just so interesting. We love being unique. Uh, uh, yeah. And the fun thing about, uh, I think. Paul, you do a lot of demos and a lot of time we have like, oh, we know what we're going to get and we're going to end at this point. It's a lot of like kind of baking show. Mm -hmm. What's really fun about working is like we never know what we're going to get. Uh, it's new every time. And yeah. so if you're playing around and trying to do stuff, just know there's no right or wrong answer. Just keep experimenting and trying stuff until you find something that you like. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. That's pretty cool. What? Look at that. So we have our before. And then our after, right? So I want something square to post on social media, whatever. And that's what it came up with. It did, it did my arm. It got looks like it had a really it got my whole python there, which it's is good. Okay. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> it's got that. I mean, it that was serious work Boom. the AI had to do. But here's a cleaned up version. How interesting. Oh, that's interesting. And it's it, really cool. It decided she had shorts, she needed short sleeves. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hey, it's probably <laughs> it's probably warm in that room. Uh, what's cool is it gave you a blank canvas again for combining generative fill with your traditional workflows that you picked that one that just wiped all the text off. Let's put something on there, right? Mm -hmm. Using perspectives. Uh, yeah. And really this cool. this this is pretty typical as as you may or may not know is the spelling of things. Yes. So it'll get a little wonky there. It'll get like the idea of letters. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and that is okay. Now, and yeah, that's amazing, Paul Weaver. Like I just did that. I did this earlier too. Like here's some other versions that it made and uh, you know, this is why we'll have the properties panel open. Like she kind of does a weird thumbs up there. But yeah, pretty cool. So, this is one example. I'm gonna switch so cool. to something else really fast because what what we'll typically show is Nature. like 
Yeah, we'll show some nature. And we'll, we'll like, honestly, you're going to see lots of people just, like, filling in both sides at once. Yes. But we only have, like, sort of, like, a 1024 by 1024 type of pixel size. Okay. So what I'd really want to do in this case is, like, if you do it sort of one side and then the other side, you're going to get more, you're going to get, you're going to get, better results. So basically. doing multiple selections at those kind of big sizes is usually better than doing one giant selection. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So run, do do it one here and then we'll go to the other side, do the other one there. It's still it's always going to grab sort of this 1024 by 10 roughly those same limited numbers of pixels Okay. and then they'll slap it in there. So this is going to look much Ooh. cleaner probably uh, so, especially if you're doing um, like high DPI type image, yes. where you're you know doing a lot. So we didn't does that. Let's see what it does to the other side. Just run through generative fill. And you can use multiple selections. So let's say I, I've seen a demo where they add bubbles. You don't have to just be like, here's an area, put bubbles. You can put this area, that yep. area, and this one over here. Fill those with bubbles. Uh, just hold shift, make your selections with all the areas that you want to see yeah. generated. Yeah, for sure. Oh my goodness. And I want to go to there. I know. Can we go there? Look at that. I didn't even go through the different versions. They all look they all look pretty good. Uh, yeah, so pretty standard. But that's what I love because like there's there are other there's other in painting and out painting, but like just being able to jump in and draw something and say put something like right here. And we'll do this right now. We'll do a smaller area. Let me zoom in on this. Generative fill. Let's do a sea monster. Mega and see fill. What, see what we get. Generate. It'll go through. And do they? Ooh. Obvious. I see. Oh yeah, Anna. You'd go to canvas size. Thank you. So I'm not alone. That feels good. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, you can't add a, an image to the prompt box, but you can add an image to a layer and use the tool to change it to suit your image. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's that's too much for my There's, brain to comprehend right now. Yes, we have we have both been awake since like four o'clock this morning. Oh. So we're the, it's oh. look like it's like really close. Look, it's it looks like it's trying to do the reflection. It, it does. It looks that way. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Let's see the other monsters we get. Okay, there we go. Hey, uh, guys. Ooh, see, here's... Oh, that one put it under the do. water. Yeah. Look, oh my gosh. That, sorry, I've been playing uh, this for a long time. I've uh, never seen it, like, submerged uh -huh. out of water. That's, that is very cool. Uh, but even when I see things like this that I'm like, oh, it's not perfect. Like, I, I actually feel useful in this situation because now I actually get to use... <laughs> Use some other tools, okay. <laughs> don't you? Yes. Like, oh, I actually get to like adjust accordingly. Um, so, and we can we can even talk about how to how to blend this together, which is another conversation, or not. It's actually the same conversation. It's <laughs> I'll just adjust the I'll just adjust the transparency. And boom. But it's nice that I actually get to push pixels around because all I've been doing lately is doing generative fill, generative fill, <laughs> and then when it's not perfect, I'm like, oh, like finally I get to do something. Like I know all the other tools, yes. so it's fun for yep. for me. And being able to combine all those things, right? That if you think of it as like this pantry, we're just getting new ingredients to cook with. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can use all the ones that we've had for however many years with this new one, which is really fun. You, you like that underwater? This one's also underwater, which is kind of cool. I, I like can't comprehend how it's pulling up the oh. ripples on the edges. Like that I is don't even know. amazing. And provided, I'm so glad we have variations because they this is a, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So with every amazing example, trust me, there's probably going to be one that's like, well, you kind of missed the mark. Yeah. Because how vague was I? I just said sea monster, right? Yes. And then even I tried, you know, I tried some scuba divers. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. That I like so the ridiculous. one that's like skydiving into the lake. I know, right? Like he's, he's on like, his I'm way. going yeah. for it. I got it, YOLO. But uh, notice, this is why this this is typically just called generative layer, because you could have as many variations in here of as many different things as you want. So uh, if you want to get more specific, like I did, you could rename your layer. But that's why they kept it generic, just because of oh, all the different yeah. versions. And what's cool is you have all those ones, right? We didn't see you generate all of those options, but no. they're all there because they were generated on that layer. It saves your history. You can go back. If yeah. you wake up the next morning and you're like, I hate this. I actually like that other one. You don't mm -hmm. have to redo it or find it. It's already there. Yeah, totally. Which is oh, and someone's asking a nice. great question. How do you get six variations? I only yeah. see three on mine. Let's How do, do you get it. to six? We, we, can, we can even go back to the original one that we made. Um, we'll open up this properties panel and write in here. This is this is where you type in scuba diver. 
But let's, I mean, we could do the Loch Ness Monster. We can try L O L O C H E N E S Monster. Yes, chat, let us know if there's not an E. Can you can you look it I, up? I'll look it up. I got it. I'm here for spell check. No, no, no. That's my role here on this stream so. today. <laughs> uh, it is no E. Ah, uh, So yeah, who, who would who would think the most crucial part of our job as a designer is how to spell? Spell ninety percent. Because again, if you misspell something, it doesn't know what you're talking about, and it's not going to generate mm -hmm. the right thing. And so what I'll do, like this is where you're kind of change. Oh yeah, that. So there we go. We're still getting like the perspective is on. I yes. feel like the perspective is pretty good, because it's still and the water edge. The water edge too. Uh, there it gets a little wonky. That one looks pretty good that too. That one looks really. I oh, and I, I have the opacity. Up, that down made me a stressed bit. when that just came on. <laughs> yeah, this is this is where I would jump in. I would make this a smart object. I'd add a new layer mask, and then just start painting out some of this. Around it, just to like push to give it, it under a little the water. More of that dimension. Yeah, like this one will be, actually, flow will be at a hundred percent, and then opacity would be like twenty, uh, twenty percent. That's just something we'll play with. I think like Val would know. Val probably, She's, yeah. She knows everything. Uh, so so like, if you, you use more specific parameters, does that work better? Do you have a take on specificity versus broad? Yeah. So so I think. Th think in, uh, well, how I usually start is broad, and then I'll start adding detail. Um, if you start, if you go broad, you know you're dealing with this larger sample data of just like monster yes. or person. Um, so if you get more specific, it's choosing from, you know, a smaller sort of data set, if you will, of, of images. Yeah, so. so starting the suggested, start with five to eight words. Uh, and you don't have to put in any action verbs that you want the program to do. So you're not talking to it like, add this, or try that, or warp this. Uh, you don't need to tell it to do anything. Just type in whatever you want to see generated. Um, and then, again, you can keep going on that, mm -hmm. and you can do as many different variations, right? All you need to do is select that layer, type it in, and it will keep iterating on that generative layer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it'll... It's okay. It'll get messy and weird, just like all our Photoshop files do. Oh, you yeah. Know? Um, Which, thankfully, if we have the tools and the knowledge, we can fix the weird mm -hmm. very easily. But we also like the weird, too, huh? It's fun. <laughs> Especially in this. I, I think that this has just been so fun to see the weird stuff. Uh -huh. and, and it's cool because it like can be inspiring to other stuff. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, I would have never thought for that to look like that. Yeah. This could inspire yep. something else that I'm going to composite something together that looks similar yep. because it like was just out of my brain. Yeah, I like because it's it's like, you know, AI has to, has to return something. Yes. And, oh, interesting. And I don't have to. And provided sometimes in Firefly it'll say, you know, add more detail. But overall, it's like it has to return something, so it's just that's the fun part. Yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah, like, like so giving, brainstorming like, with like ideas. the concepting side of things. Yeah, is like so much fun. I think it's been really inspiring for me because I've been doing, I've been getting into really weird surreal stuff and just using that, just doing all that surreal, whatever, and just seeing what AI makes. If I yes. say create a surreal animal, what do we? I love here? this. You ready yes. for tell this? Me, tell me about I it. I just think this is amazing. Well, let's try it, actually. OK. Uh, so right in here, uh, this is the hand. Let's try generative fill. We'll see what we get. I just want a red apple. And we'll click Generate. And again, like fairly generic. Most apples, photos of apples, are red. Um, so this should be like a pretty simple and data set. We I talked think. about this last time. Come oh on, now. Gosh, the fingers in front, though. What? Like the shadow, the shadow on the pinky, <laughs> like sitting on the apple. They probably got the lighting right. Yeah. Are are uh, you not also, impressed? Paul, this Look, could there's be, another one. Okay, this could be a really, really great tool for photographers, right? If they're trying to figure out like where are the lights or like how oh, do they yeah. light the shot right? Oh, that'd be interesting. Do something that's reflective and yeah. see where it puts the lights. I and then it's, it's giving you a peek kind of behind the photo. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, so something that we did talk about the last time too is oh, it is going to fill the entire area that you select. So like this, if you were doing an apple and you select a smaller area, it's going to put a tiny apple in that hand. If you select the entire hand, it's going to be just a massive apple. So you want to make sure that you're imagining like the area that this apple will uh, will take over. Chrome blob spheres. What's the 
What's the, it starts with an H and I always forget this word. It's like really reflective and halluc not hallucinogenic, but like. Oh, uh, like, iridescent? Ha yeah, let's wake up and do iridescent. Uh, but I have to spell that, so that's not gonna Air happen. <laughs> Hallu Shiny. <halluc> <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Like, uh, holographic. Holographic, Hologra yes. Holographic. Um, you know. Holographic, yep, that's right. Also, just know if you guys see me typing, I'm not working on anything. I'm spell checking as we uh, say words. <laughs> That's what's happening over here. <laughs> uh, Multicolor. So, anyways, just again going from like the real to something fun. We'll just see what we get. We'll, but uh, man, aren't those fingers? Isn't that crazy? It's it's crazy it's that it did that. Crazy. It says I got it. <laughs> and like just the thank you, Josh Catcher. Oh wow. So there we go. Like there's our little. Oh, now I'm holding this. Oh, that's <laughs> oh! I'm gonna look, die. And put in the studio the reflection. And then the what? Table. If, and then what if we we're in? What if we we're in the photo? It's just us. Ah, it's just <laughs> like live streaming. <laughs> it's watching it's just us. Just our faces. That is wild. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's, it's watching us. Come wow. on now. That would be so funny. It just generates. It's like there's Paul's face. Uh, so like I've I've done this. I've tried different things. We could do it even with all of this. I liked that prompt, by the way. That's like not bad. It's kind of kind of fun. Blo I could add more blobby, like you were saying earlier. Like, if you want to add some more fun blobby things, we still have the prompt in here, which is great. Yes, and which I'm going to steal. This is how we got to the six uh, variations there. Sorry, I, I think we didn't circle back to that. Uh, huh. But that's how we got to the six: is we generated something, and then we changed the prompt and hit generate again, and it's saving our entire history of prompts on that mm -hmm. layer. Yeah, it's just like so, so nice. Yes, These are textures. all great words. So Preston, like, and, and and it's just good to keep this stuff in mind. Like what what you use, what works for you. I don't know if you have like, I'll have I'll I'll save these notes. Oh, like yeah. I have like Evernote that has a bunch of just. It's a mess. Yes, I definitely have like weird keywords that I've tried that have cool results. And I'm like, all right, we'll just stick that in the back pocket. A uh, question from Behance for you, Paul. Yeah. Can you add stylistic details into a prompt? Uh, stylistic details. So it kind of depends on what you mean by stylistic details. You can add, I, I will put like highly detailed, but no, when it comes to style, it tries to pull from the image. Yes. And I'll, I'll show you what I, I mean by that here in a second. It's So I had this cover the whole area, by the way. So it threw a sparkle, sparkler in. See, look at that. This is freaking blowing my mind. It, it might not be perfect, but like, I, just the fact that it like, how, it just like, looks like hey, it's a little wonky, but and come on, the fact is that so crazy. The, like the way, like the fact that it's holding it, that I it know. changed the hand to hold it, because uh -huh. it's like, oh, this is an object that needs to be supported. Yes. Uh, that is oh, Let's wild. do a stylistic. I'll do, I'll do just one more. Let's see what happens if we could do like. <clears throat> and if you're talking about stylistic from like, uh, and this may not be what you mean, but using like art history and movements and stuff, uh, it will pull a lot of those styles. That if you're talking about like Renaissance painting, or if you're talking about a style that you've seen as an art movement, a lot of times it will pull those. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially in Firefly, if you're working, you're like da da, like poster uh, paper, it will pull that through. Ooh. So here's a situation. Just just so you know, if I click on this, like this is my mask selection. That's my selected area. Yep. So that, that's why it put it clear over here. So it's kind of more my fault that it's not fitting in the hand perfectly. <laughs> I had one job and I screwed it up. Sorry, that one almost works, but I did a, I tried to just a different material. And it's rendering the rest of that hand in, mm -hmm. which I think is crazy, the detail, and especially the tones, the texture, and the like shadows that are happening on those fingers mm -hmm. are all cohesive. Uh, ooh, hello, American Gothic. Sorry, you, you did mention paintings yes, and, we're and here. things. Um, and I like with paintings or any photo, just kind of be aware of like any of this. Uh, I don't even know. It's, it's like I don't know if it's a, a vignetting or something that happens. Clean that up. But we'll just. I'm just gonna run this really fast because we're gonna see what this American Gothic painting creates. And a great question from chat: Can you use this to fix hot spots on a shiny object? I think absolutely. Um, we can. We'll we'll test that. I'm gonna look for a good shiny object reflective kind of bottle image, and we'll give that uh, a test. And then, of course, the question that's come up uh, a lot in chat today: Would these images be safe for commercial use? What's the guidance on that currently? Yeah. So this is currently beta. So um, the answer is no. Uh, yeah. So per personal use only because we're still working on all the details. Since this is using Adobe Stock and you know public domain images. 
Uh, so yeah, we, we realize we're, uh, we're transparent with where the content comes from and yes. plan on acting accordingly. Uh, but for sorry. personal stuff, post it. Be like, hey, I made this hashtag Adobe Firefly. Yes. Uh, accreditation is like most important m more than anything. Yep. Uh, sorry, I looked <laughs> down for a second. I looked back up and this painting looks different than I've ever seen it. I know. And then realized that's because we right? did some fill on it. We could go, I feel like going further and further and further out with this, but I mean, this is just amazing. It's just, it's just a pretty incredible. Yes. That's crazy to extend. So someone asked, taking hot spots away from objects. Yes, if you want to cut over to my screen real quick, um, I'm going to use my lasso tool to just make a selection. So I'm making a selection of this hot spot on this wine bottle, right? Uh, and let's do one more. This one over here doesn't look great. It's not a good selection, but we got close enough. Uh, and I didn't hit shift. Andrew, pull it together. Literally <laughs> one job here. All right, so we're making these selections. And then instead of generating something, you can actually use generate fill to take things away. So if I hit generate fill, and then I just click generate, don't type anything in the box, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, what are we generating? Nothing, let's put nothing in here. And it's gonna take everything around it and pull that into the selections that we have. So watch when these hot spots just disappear before our eyes using gener oh. Oh, it's interesting. Interesting, I wonder if it's oh, pulling maybe. from up, like pulling from this area. It, it I, won huh, I wonder. Interesting, oh, let's do some cycles. I wonder if it's pulling because this bottle has other reflections. You, you know what's on happening it. right now is like content aware is like, yes, I have a job. Uh, yes, exactly. Content aware is like, please <laughs> like, remove yeah. all the screaming in the background. I think this is still a good point of like, you know, it's it's not the answer to everything, which is good. Yes. If there was something on it, like a sticker, it'd probably remove the sticker and keep the highlight. Oh, a hundred percent. And again, looking at some of the traditional uh, doing a fill here and doing a content aware fill. Let's just look at the difference between these two. And again, we just have more tools now to be able to find the right answer. So content aware fill did a little bit of a better job. And you can see there, you can kind of just explore to see what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we've got more paintings I'm over sorry. here. We've traveled through history. I guess we have. <laughs> you turn away for a second. Yes. Uh, and somebody and... trying to sing, can you turn him into RuPaul? Okay, I have a quick comment about this. Uh -huh. I've actually used Firefly and Generative Fill to uh, select a face and then generate like drag queen makeup looks or like a sharp smoky eye. That's cool. And it will generate really good makeup looks that then you could bring into the real world and be like, I'm going to put that makeup look on my face mm -hmm. that was created by Firefly. Yeah. So if anyone wants to do that, any makeup gurus out there, mm -hmm. uh, tag us on YouTube. This is so fascinating. I'm, I'm into it. All right, fantastic. I, I, got, a, I got a little more yeah, complex. I just, let's go. You know, because we already did kind of the fill. Oops. Um, so that was like this layer. And then I just like, it doesn't, oh. this is, this is a, you know, a Van Gogh painting. So it started to do some things, you know, again, it's, it's a messy painting. So it's kind of doing its best and I'm kind of into it. Um, and we could see the different versions. And then you could just start layering stuff on top of that. So I'm like, okay, let's generate an arm right there. And that's what I did right on top of it. I said, you oh, know Oh, so what? you're generating pieces. Yeah. Oh. Give, uh, give this a, like skeleton, you know, put a, a skeleton arm there. And then I, I started playing with this one, which I'm not like done with. Like there's there's the other one I'm kind of kind of working on, but you know, so it's like I, I would just do some compositing, but I love that it matches the lighting and all that stuff. Yep. I and tried this is yeah. fantastic reference if you're an illustrator. This is amazing reference to like figure out angles, lighting, mm -hmm. like some bone structure ideas. Yeah. I, I have discovered with some bones and skeletons, it's uh it gets a little weird. Like Firefly and Generative Fill will sometimes um like block it sometimes. Like oh, I had a hard time with pelvis today for some reason. And so I don't know how I created this. Actually, let's take a look. Hip so. bones. The hip bone is connected to- Skeleton the... lower body is what I had to say. Okay. So anyway, so we're, 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 we try to be conservative. Maybe we get too conservative sometimes, but that's also why I'm glad we, um, you know, have the ability to, you know, flag the results, et cetera. Oh yeah, yeah we right actually haven't here. talked about that on either of the streams. Uh, how do we give feedback? Yeah, I mean, this is the very least you can do, but if you go in, you can also like report the results and write in here. So this is where, uh, you know, you'd, you'd report any weirdness 
ultimately. Yes. Yeah, so but I also want to report like, hey man, this is okay. I just want a skeleton pelvis. Don't make it. I'm a. I'm an adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something. It's looking great. You're doing great, honey. <laughs> uh, and when you do your generative fill using a selection, it actually pops up on the contextual toolbar. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It generates, and then it's like, do you like it? Do you love it? Tell your friends. Uh -huh. uh, and then that way, it it helps us a lot. Um, be able to serve you better. The hands, like, try this with anything. It's just so amazing. Like, I, I have so many crazy examples. I'm sorry I don't have, like, mu much of a theme. Like you were talking, eventually everybody's going to have their own. They're going to start changing their clothes. Yes. What's fascinating about this is I took this, I expanded it out, the canvas, and uh, I could do it, like, right now. I would still do it in pieces, but it will actually, like, what's going to happen with that pattern in the background, I guess, is the question. I want to use Adobe and Capture the, to get the that rest pattern of it. in the background. That pattern's right? gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it is so cool. Uh, That's I'm, in Lisbon. It's so complex. It is pretty complex. And by the way, it's going to be ridiculous because look at how much it's not going to, there's no way it's going to generate yeah. the rest of it. If it generates body. your body on gonna, the background, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like I'm going to leave the stream. Yeah. Like it's Okay, good. It okay, just like okay. <laughs> just fuzzed it out. But again, talking about this top part. It got pretty close on those tiles. Oh, wait, hold on. What? It, it, it's, it's doing no better. No way. It's doing okay, better. It's doing better. I mean, I, remember, like, before, after. Oh, that's crazy. That's pretty good. And like you said, doing large amounts of area sometimes is worse. So maybe if you yeah. did the edges and then You're you did right. the rest of your body separately, uh, I, that's pretty dang good. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I, I ran this earlier. I'll show you my earlier examples. Please do. Because they weren't, they weren't always the prettiest. Let's see. In chat, uh, if you have ideas or things that you would like to see, please put it in chat for us. You, you mentioned um, the smaller area. So I did just the smaller area, and it did, it did a better job. Like, the detail's just better. The, the, even the fact that it's catching, that, like, one is going this way and one is going this way on every other tile. Mm -hmm. Like, the pattern yep. is staying. It's, that's crazy. It's just so nuts. Like, we're trying to break it. <laughs> we're, we're trying and to break it's like, it. Not today. Which is funny. It's like, Dude, it's your first day on the job. Yeah, when we not try today. to break it, it's working. And then we don't try to break it, it'll give yeah. us a weird result. It'll get a weird yeah. result. <laughs> Still gonna be that way with hands and stuff. It got a little funky with the with the legs. I like look at that's ridiculous. Oh yeah. I extended look at a, that's ridiculous. a photo of myself. Uh, and I was like, man, the legs got so long. And then I like looked again, and I was like, no, I think that's actually just what my body looks like. Uh, I'm a little, little too tall for my. Oh, what are you it, it's here? weird. Like this one's much better. Okay. But like I went through, I said, hey, you know what? The hands look weird. Let's generate hands. I get it, but not my hands. Oh, I use a lot so of sunblock just on my hands. You're doing just the pieces. I haven't yeah. thought about that. That's interesting. So I was like, because that's what gets jacked up a lot is the hands. These got really wonky. So just turn around. You know, made that selection. And you know, just typed in hands, and that's all I did. Like, life doesn't have to be that complex. Hands. Uh, a great question from Quentin Scribble about Van Gogh adding an artist's name to the prompt will not affect the results in that <sighs> case. Uh, no, I mean it's it's sampling from that image, so it could care less about who painted it. Yes. I'm sure it cares, but not really. Yes, <laughs> but I did point that out to say, it's 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 going to make m make it match whatever you have going on there. Yeah, the context. Uh, like public domain type, you know. Like if I, I I haven't done like just straight up Van Gogh. That should yeah. work. Generating. Do you want to just that style? Yeah. Do you mind just even a blank canvas or Let's maybe do it. that Let's see what or happens. whatever? I don't know if you want to. Also, I help, love generating stuff on on like <laughs> blank canvases. Help okay. me. <laughs> while while. <laughs> While you do that, yes. we could also like enjoy, or I don't know, maybe it's weird, but I, I went through and did all the clothing fun stuff as well. Okay. Did, are you, did you, you went from being at the party to bartending at the party. Oh yeah, so yeah. you're exactly right, bartender. Is well, that what you typed in? Bar, bartender, <laughs> that's what it gave me. Uh, make me look like a doctor, it's a doctor. I, insane, isn't it? It's, it's so much. Oh, I'm having to spell check Van Gogh. Oh yeah, here's a, here's another cocktail. Basketball. I decided to do a suit. So this is like, this is really important, I think, too. You know, because uh, you know, it's just it's just nice being able to like, ooh, feel dressed up. 
Uh, question from chat. Chat, we're here for you to uh, tune in. Can you make an astronaut in space with that photo? I think that that would be very easy that for you to make with be, that photo. Yeah, that would be cool. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's see. Okay, so cut over to my screen. It actually did a pretty good job. I did Van Gogh uh, painting of a city. And it's done a pretty great job at getting that style of this kind of uh, painterliness. Gosh, even the texture of this is awesome. So mm. it did pull that style. And what I'm guessing is it's kind of seeing the style of Van Gogh or like mm -hmm. whatever is in Adobe Stock that's being tagged in that style, right? With the um, palette knife kind of pointillism and then pulling it over. So it did it did affect the prompt uh, pretty well. So thanks, Quantum Stribble. <laughs> It did, it did the thing, which is awesome. Oh, maybe it's this one. Ooh, how does Firefly uh, generative fill rem handle removing or replacing a person in a relative close portra portrait or photo? Um, uh, so removing a person close in a Close-up portrait? portrait. Uh, yeah, it'll it'll handle it great. Like, yep. I've we have examples of that. Here, here I am in an astronaut spacesuit, though, by the way. Do you have these just ready? Yeah. Just in every context, yeah. I think everybody goes to the astronaut. Yes. The, the key thing for like an astronaut, it's, it's gonna be a bulky, it's just gonna be a bulky area. So you need to select sort of that larger area. If I needed to give myself, you know, a, a helmet, I need to make sure I kind of follow that size of, a, of an astronaut helmet. So astronaut helmet. Which is a little Which, bit of a different way of thinking that it's not just like, oh, select my head and put a helmet on it. It's like, oh, select the space that a helmet would be yeah. and put it in that space. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I've already done this as, uh, I probably spelled it wrong. <laughs> 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 but I already did it here anyways. So like, disregard this crazy, where's my, where's my astronaut guy? Anyways, here's an astronaut helmet That's that I did a earlier. a chef astronaut. Yeah, disregard that. Here's, here's another weird. Wow, that's so cool. <coughs> Piece things together. You might um, appreciate some of these. Like, look at all this fun stuff, by the way. I didn't get to all the fun ones. Uh, that's not it. This feels like the beginning of like a video game where it's like, choose your character. Oh, it does. Like, you might appreciate that that, that version. Yes. Maybe. That's, yeah. This is the Drag one. Drag Paul. I... Drag Paul, love it. Yeah, it must be cold um, where I am. All right, so let's go ahead and build some surreal pieces of oh, yeah. things, maybe. We can, uh, let's do that. Let's try to build maybe some kind of creature or person mm -hmm. or monster. What's the zone we want to head into? Uh, I want to. I don't want to go too scary. Okay, I agree. You know, Every now and then I try to light. do something that's like spooky monster, mm -hmm. and then it's really scary. And I'm like, <laughs> never mind. Thanks, Firefly. I'll uh, start with a blank, uh, just a, an image. We'll actually just click over here. Here's here's one. So again, our environment. We'll like be mindful of like the lighting and stuff, but I, I think I would probably still, we want them to be big. So let's draw out this area. I love the way that you can just translate even feelings bigger. like that, right? You're like, what do we want to put in here? Like big monster. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, that's and big I think monster. It, it, I think it does help, like, because I don't know if it gets sizes. So gi uh, gigantic, uh, cute monster made of fur and branches. Why not? Um, uh, da -da -da, uh, made of uh, multicolor fur, fur and branches. So we'll just do that. I had a whole setup for this because, like, I was gonna have a crashed spaceship, oh. something like that, and then you like, then you start building on top of that. You have another, you know, the monster on top of that, and and then and then it's a whole th and then it's a whole thing. It's a whole. It was a whole storyline that was developing, uh, but I already have that stuff generated, so we could always show it to you later. Okay, we yeah, we'll give you the cliff notes. Oh, oh I I mm. want to hug it, kind of. I, I want know. to feel it. I know. <laughs> you want to run in and hug it. You realize, oh, those are teeth. That's yes. like a little scary. I don't know. So again, this is a. The quality of that one is not great. This one looks like, I don't think multicolor is doing us any favors. I don't either, especially yeah. in a scene like this that is more subdued pastels. Yeah. Uh, multicolor is probably pulling in like, give me all the color you have. Yeah. So we'll just go in there, check, take that out. I, I usually start simple and then start adding to it anyways. 
So while this renders, uh, I too am going to follow along your monster building journey. Uh, and what's really cool is there is, oh, there is uh, the web experience. So if you want to go to Generate Phil, firefly.adobe.com. And similarly to Paul, all you need to do is do the insert. And I am going to drag in the shape of the creature that I would like to have. Uh, and all you need to do, again, just paint this in and then you are going to type in your prompt. So maybe we want to do, uh, what was your prompt that you put in? I did a gigantic monster uh, with fur and branches. Like, I think it'd be cool here if it, yeah, like looks like it's from there. Yeah. Like maybe it lives there. Um, I'm going to type in with or fog. Something. That's probably too or much. Or like moss, feels... like covered in moss. Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, with, with like yes, let's do swamp thing, but also nice. Like a like nice wants to swamp you thing. I don't like, know why. Like no, I, I, I like a, like I'm eight years old, but I'm so, like, let's not get scary. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be scared. <laughs> oh, spooky. Oh, honestly, pretty good here. Oh wow. All right, so we got one, two. He's a little more mossy. <coughs> he looks like he needs a hug. That looks really good. Though. That one's really scary. Like... So this is per like that one's good. Like. So now you can you can take one of those as a base and just start adding to it. So that's what you should do. Like change yes. the eyes, kind of like I'm doing. And while you, does oh, that yes. sound good? Yes, that can you do great, that Paul. since? Okay. And I'll, I'll jump jump back to my screen because we'll we're kind of following the theme. Sounds good. Just switch over, and like here's the same thing, different scene. We have this one. <laughs> This is like a Karen monster. This is like a Karen monster. <laughs> I don't even know what it's like. I can't believe I'm like, look at this. Look at I'm covered in yeah, hair. Yeah, just screaming for help. I want to see the manager. I know. Why is the manager of the forest? This is ridiculous. What's this dirt doing everywhere? You know? So I like this one. But the eyes weren't perfect, which is also what you're working on, which is awesome. Um, this is revolutionary. I haven't thought about doing pieces yeah. on top of each other, and that makes everything like so much more mm -hmm. able to hone it in. Yeah, so, and, and you know, you just you're gonna get different variations. So that's what I did. I did mine like one at a time. So look at that like detail I get here. And all I did, all I said was cute eye. Cute eye. I don't know what that will look like, but they're like, this is what it will look like. So cute eye. I did the other eye separately. <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> I kind of like. Uh, I'm not going to show it on stream, but I went into a portrait of myself uh -huh. and I replaced each individual piece of my face with a generative fill. And so I had like blue eye, green eye, big ear, small mouth, and it oh, was hor it was hilarious, but like horrifyingly hilarious. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I went in and replaced my eyes, and these eyes look really, really good uh, for this character. And you can see how well it's just kind of blending between those edges, right? It's matching the lighting. All that stuff is looking really good. Uh, and I like this mouth here, kind of playing around with this shape. And so putting in, we can also uh, change the settings here and just increase my brush size a little bit. And let's just paint in a little, like, Frowning moss mouth. Frowning, frowning mouth with teeth. That's probably going to be a bad prompt. Let's see what happens. How, how's it going uh, over there, Paul? Well, <laughs> not about, not good. How about that grill? Not good. <laughs> it a hundred percent looks like it's the monster version of like the Paul Wall like grills oh, yeah. that you put on there. I should have added tongue in here, so I mean, obviously, this is this is the best mouth. Uh, there's other ones like this one. You know, I said gold teeth. That's the problem. So I just I would probably take and like clean this up. And do you go back ever I'm and like, is it easy to realize the word that you had wrong or the like thing in the prompt that you need to change when you see the result? How do you kind of sort that out? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, you just you you kind of look at it as objectively as possible, like, you know, and, and just see if it makes sense. Because I could have still broken this down and made it simpler. And this might be a case where I just say, hey, you know, generate an open mouth, and then I'll I'll make them gold. Like I can make them gold. Um, and you can make them gold. Anyway. You could liquefy. You could do all kinds of stuff with that source image. I'm gonna and in this case, we'll just do a generate. I'm gonna just kind of remove this. Get it get it out of there. But. And From I'm this point, into... I'm gonna add some horns because you got cool horns. I want some oh, cool that's horns. Cool. Yeah, I've tr I'll try wings. Are our monsters gonna be friends? I think, I one, think so. One lives like in the swamp, and one lives in the forest. Yeah, my yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, all right, we're gonna clear this, and I'm gonna try it again. I keep getting very weird. Like it just turns the whole thing into teeth. Uh, and so let's see if I can kind of augment and figure out a good prompt. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no, my mouse. All right. This is a good. I like this two set, two person setup. By the way, Paco. Hopefully, I, you guys appreciate it. I do too. This looks good. Okay, my mouse exploded. Uh, uh -oh. All right, we're we're good. We're good. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm oh no, I don't want to. I don't want to lose this guy. Okay, I uh, I think we're good. All right, we got it. We're back. Um, frowning monster, <laughs> lips. I'm trying to think. Like closed mouth with moss. Closed mouth with moss and leaf. Yeah, what I what I would really like to be able to do, because you want to kind of be able to generate the mouth and then put, you know, moss on top of it. Like, put things on top without destroying the structure of the yes. element. Because that's what I want to do with the sparkles. I select the whole area and I said sparkles earlier with the hand. Yep. And I just wanted to add a bunch of sparkles, but it's like, no, it just gave me new uh, sparkles. Sparkler, yeah. So I like this, and I'm actually going to take this out of the web experience now and take it into the Photoshop beta. Uh, again, if you want to go in, get a little more detailed, have a little bit of a tighter selection, you can work in the web experience, and then we can download. It is going to apply those content credentials, which are really cool. You can see where everything's coming from, make sure that we are copacetic, uh, and then just bring it over into the Photoshop experience. I'm going to throw on... Uh... There's my little man. Bat wing. I'm going to give mine a <laughs> wing. <laughs> oh, what a screen fun, to huh? see. Just <laughs> side by side. That's monsters. looking good. I mean, I'm just so impressed with the lighting of yours. I it's agree. Just, just like, just nailing it. And thanks for joining. If you guys, if it's your first time, I'd love to hear from you and give you a warm welcome. We're happy to have you here. And yeah, this is just pulling from, we're not stealing from the entire internet. We're going from Adobe stock, public domain stuff, um, things like that. Edward so. Gonzalez, try to do an inflatable Eiffel Tower. Well, boy, are you in luck, because that's what we're here for, is to yeah, generate whatever to you want. The, oh, that is so fun, like Edgar, like, like dealing with materials. Yes. Oh, come on now. Ooh. Like materials are really fun. Using it as like a describer to change something. Yeah, like a, bal a balloon, balloon Eiffel Tower sort of situation. Ooh, I might. Uh -oh. And on on that note, while that's processing, by the way, I think it's really cool that uh, I don't know if I have it in this profile, but uh, favorites. So I'm glad we have favorites now. I'm gonna take a look at favorites. Oh, it's in my other profile. Because that happens. <laughs> the Finsta Pulse, anyway. Pulse, Pulse secret account. <laughs> yeah, darn it. Um, uh, Oops. Uh, what is the word that I want that's like, not like dilapidated, but like old? I'm trying to get like a top hat that has like holes in it and stuff. Uh, maybe like vintage hat with moss and vines. Let's add a little hat on this on this guy. Okay. While that's while mine's processing, I hopped out to Firefly uh, on the web, which is actually open for everybody today. Everybody's in. There's no rules. You know, it just occurred to me that we we had to do that. Yeah. Because basically we have if I go file new that's Firefly. It's there. In the, in the Photoshop beta, file new. That is that is Firefly. Ooh. So they kind of had to open it up. It's like. Might as well let everybody yeah. know. Yeah. So let's. All right, we got a top hat on here. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's good too. That's looking pretty good. And so again, I can combine. Uh, it looks like this area here got like a little weird and wonky. Uh, and so I may try to fill in some of this. Uh, I may just, I'm gonna merge this down and then just kind of clone in or use a content to wear fill to kind of add in some of that space. Maybe I'm gonna mask it out. I'm gonna mask it out. Let's do that. Can I come into this uh, clipping mask here and just mask out? You can mask out more. What, 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 yeah, you totally can. 
It's from here. Oh, okay. And well, it's just going to yeah, fully it's... mask it out to whatever's in the background. Yeah. So, Interesting. Um, what is, uh, what's that layer again? Sorry. It's just a, it's a generative layer all the oh, way through. Oh, I see. So you want, yeah, you might have to do some That's painting. That's fine. I'll just, I'll paint it in, yeah. That's fine. Look, Everybody's mine's okay. Mine's ridiculous. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> you no, know, this is, looks weird. Don't, don't switch to my screen. Don't. That's for sure. A, Never mind. <laughs> what 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 should be on his? Like he needs something here. Like he needs. We need to do more. Like maybe I do octopus legs. Please do octopus legs. Okay. That is that's the correct answer. When in doubt, go with octo. And I am now working destructively. Uh, turn your eyes away, designers. I, yeah, Be work destructively. That's cool. Yeah, I I'm was gonna, gonna say, don't like at least for this generative stuff. Make sure you're on the topmost layer, because kind of what you like that I've I've made that mistake. Because yep. it's sampling all of the layers. If you're only halfway down, have a layer selected. It's only gonna do from there below. So you can see the generative fill missed this little piece right there, right, and kind of connected. And so I just went in and added a little layer on top and then used content to wear fill yeah. to kind of connect the two. Content wear fill is like, yes, yes, it's I still like, have the job. Yeah. I got your rope. <laughs> put me hey, in time, I got a coach. shout out, coach. I'm ready. Thanks, coach. <laughs> so. OK, chat, what else do I need to add to this image uh, of what is very quickly becoming the Babadook? Um, <laughs> like the, oh. his, his, like, uncle. Oh, look at your little tentacles, just like all over. Oh, yeah, that's, and, and the I, lighting. It's, it's kind of fun. It's it's looking pretty good. I I'm actually gonna. That's why I've kind of opened up the adjustments panel, which is which is new, because um, I, I think overall I need to add like just a, a different color mode on the whole thing. Oh yes, which is also new here in the Photoshop beta. So if we want to go to Paul's screen, we can see the whole thing. Um, there are new adjustment presets. Tell us about these, Paul. They yeah. are super powerful. So first off, you'll you'll open up the you know window adjustments. You'll you'll get all of them right in here. Just click more, and thank goodness, by the way, can we just say thank you for putting the names of these instead of the icons? Yes. Like I never freaking knew what any of this. Like I maybe knew a couple, but I'm like, come on, this isn't a quiz. Yes. Just give me the freaking name. I gotta watch my mouth. We did it. But you just roll over. My key thing is like I I will. You, your your intention is to click. Everything is like a click, and then I see it. Here it's not. Yes, and this is like when uh, they did blending modes with a live preview, and it just like you you didn't have to click mm -hmm. through every blending mode. I love that this is just the default with these. It's like yeah. okay, you don't have to click through them, and eventually we'll add the live preview straight off the bat. Live preview. Yeah. Ooh. So they're fun. I still want to. I'm still thinking like. Uh, you know, sort of Murray Sendak, where the wild things are. Okay, I'll probably keep it a little brighter. So oh, yeah. once I click, it'll add all of those. The reason it, so here it is. Oh, and it adds the layers. Yes, it's not just doing like, oh, it's a filter. It's adding what the actual layers are that are doing, so you can augment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, honestly, it's like a great way to learn. Because you're often like, am I yes. doing it this right way? By the way, there is no right way. If you're getting it done, Never. congratulations. But uh, in the, in this respect, it's like you really, I really picked something that punched up the color, and that's vibrance. Um, so that's cool. Someone's asking, uh, what happens if there are hidden layers? Is it going to sample those hidden layers? No. No. No, it won't. I'm trying to think of any other like good like pro tips. Um, let's see. What? Uh, do you ever start with the web experience and then bring it over? Are there benefits to doing Firefly.adobe.com? Like when I'm waiting, Photoshop? when I'm waiting for a process in here, then I'll jump out to Firefly. But if I'm like brainstorming, I like I like jumping in here and like using all these these various styles and different things. Yes. So I probably use Firefly more than like maybe brainstorm, right? Because that's where I do a surreal. I don't know why it's not coming up. My little my cheat code. Um, but yeah, that's where I just like try a surreal, still life, colorful, made of zombies. Oh, not really, but uh, <laughs> um, majestic. So you could you could just take these words like, what does that what does that even look like? I'm like, you know what? It's not my problem. Computer, figure it out. I'm like, I'm all mean to Firefly. 
<laughs> Figure it out, Firefly. It said majestic. That's not majestic. It's funny because we were just talking about contextual uh, toolbar being like your new bestie. That's like, yeah. hey, how can I help you? And you're like, do this. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> sure, okay, if you want to. Yeah, what do you guys, I'm actually curious to see what everybody thinks of the, the contextual uh, bar. If you guys are, as you dive into it, tell me if you, if you like it. I mean, first off, I, I was told it's not made for us. Like if you're as a, a Photoshop like pro, it's not really for you. It's just supposed to oh. elevate uh, the the different options you'd have for uh, whatever you're working on, whether it's text or whatever. Yes, I have um, been using it a ton. Uh, I'm so used to selecting a subject and then uh, contracting the selection to like get rid of any like weird fine line edge. Mm -hmm. And so I'd always like select, click here, click mm -hmm. there, extract, whatever. Uh, and here it's like right there. It's just like boom, here you go, contract this. Yeah. So it is. It is nice. Like, you know, it, it does. You'll you'll start to see all these duplicates of the. This basically is like an options bar that floats right here. So, yeah. So, anyways, I'm just kind of crook the furry. furry. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let's take rid of that. Uh, uh, so uh. I did add the cane. A lot of people were asking for cane, so I added the cane, and I am just going to go into my adjustment presets, uh, and I'm going to pick one. You had a really cool one that was like kind of moody black and white. Oh yeah. And see if um, we can get some of that. Twirl like uh, yeah oh, yeah twirl. I just like twirl all those down. Ooh, there we go. We got a little bit of saturation. So if I like this vivid color, I can click, and you can see that it's doing that with color balance and curves, and then you can learn and understand. I love that oh, from a learning go. perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. To be able to be like, how do they do this? You can see all the layers there. Okay, you got your cheat sheet. I do. I, okay. might, I got my cheat sheet. She, I was gonna say, um, so we are. We, we want. We now want that for everything, by the way. And I want to be able to save those. Like this is like. I feel like hopefully only the beginning of. Like let me have my own adjustment presets in here. Yes. Let me save right? them. Let me add them. Yeah. Yes. And then share them with friends. Even like we're working here totally. on the stream. We do something cool. You all can have it now. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. That would be nice. I was like, and feel free push this to its limits. Like get, let's get your feedback. I took. I thought I'd take this guy because he's already like kind of blurry. Yep. Um. I don't know. I quit. I quit. Thanks, we everybody. Quit. Thanks We're for out. having this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he got his elbow. I got him holding the. That's insane. What in the world? It is so yeah. clean. That's and it's interesting so because it changed good. the guy in the back, it changed his entire outfit. But uh -huh. it changed it to an outfit that still works. Like, it, it, it's uh -huh. not like that noticeable. Yeah, it's super interesting. It's That's like how much, wild. how how far can you like push this if I, you know, take her? And I usually just I use the lasso tool. I don't just I just do something like that. But I just like make sure you get a little further out. Would you rather have an extra bit of selection or use like select subject I, and go right up against? I the don't edge? I don't do select. I don't. I'm like if there's an edge right here, I feel like it's going to, um, you know, not want to mess with it. Um, so, so again, yeah. removing something, generative fill. I and got some of his, his shoulder. Ooh, sorry about that. Ooh, ooh, the pixels. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. We're going to do a deep dive into what's happening we're, in Photoshop. What? The yeah, pixels. We're, we're all up in there. Uh, there also is a remove tool now if you'd like to use the remove tool as well. All right, let's see what happened. I, I cannot. Yeah, that's, pre that's pretty good. That's pretty it's okay. That guy's get, neck he gets, looks a little, like he gets a little funky, but yeah. you, know, we could, you know, we can clean that up still. That's I'm gonna so I'm gonna move this wild. bar. Pin bar position. Oh, wait. I literally was talking about that this morning with someone, is I wish that I could lock it, and there mm. is a way to lock it. You just hit pin bar position. Yeah. Okay, well, knowledge is power. And then you, you could sometimes, I did that with my photo earlier, it's like if something gets wonky, select it and type in hand. Yes. The results still might vary, but uh, you know, that's that would look like, again, just where we started, sort of like, we lost a couple in the woods. Uh, you know who we lost them to? <laughs> the this, scary guy. Yeah, to, to the monster. This <laughs> wow, we unintentionally we, made a really great story. We did. Didn't I'll wrap we? it up with thirty seconds left in the stream, mind you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's how it works. Time. Accidental fun here on Adobe Live. Uh, so if you want to join us, there is content coming for the rest of the day. Um, I'll see you a little bit later today. 
Paul, thanks. Um, thanks I've been asking buddy. everyone, what advice do you have people that are getting creative today? It's a big creative day, what uh, advice? Just have fun. Just go in there and play around, like break stuff and just uh, let yourself, just be surprised by what you create. At the end yes. of the day, I'm like, oh, that happened today. Yep. Like, that's what I would love to see. And again, it's in beta, so just dream about what it will be mm. uh, in the future. So thanks for joining us. Stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you for more content here on Adobe Live. Bye, everybody.
Hello everyone, we are back. Paul Tranny here with the one and only Jesus Ramirez. Yay! Thank you, Paul, thank you. How are you doing today, buddy? Doing good, man, how are you? I'm doing great, because it's a, it's a pretty exciting day. I think we have not, probably the last 24 hours, we have not slept much, probably. No joke, I went to bed at 7 a.m. 7 a.m., people. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big, it's a big day. I mean, it's big just like day. a lot, a lot happening. In Definitely. It. And I wore the shirt today, you know. You love Photoshop. Shirt? Yeah. Representing. Represent. I love, I love that. Where did you get that, by the way? I think uh, Marinette Stoltner gave that to me. Photoshop product oh, manager. Oh, yeah. I love it. That's so yeah. cool. I want to welcome everybody in chat. We see you, Josh, Alexio, Paul, Preston. If you're new, feel free to say so. We'd love to give you a warm hug and all that good stuff. But today was pretty much like... I don't know, like launch day, um, you know, kind of Christmas in May is what it kind of feels like because mm -hmm. there's new tools, new new features in Photoshop, and uh, new a new feature in the Photoshop beta, which yeah. we'll spend some time with. Yeah, little generative fill. Generative fill, yeah, yeah, I love it. It's been fantastic. Yeah, so you've you've been playing with it, and oh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's been it's it's been a lot. So I don't know I don't know where we want to begin. <laughs> I say we just dive in, guys. We're so thankful you're here. Uh, follow uh, Photoshop Training Channel everywhere uh, and all that good stuff. Subscribe below. Do all the things. Click all the buttons. Yeah, just, just all the good ones. Click everything. If it's pointing upward, yeah. click on those. Yeah. We like those ones. Yeah. Um, and it's Derek's first time catching us live. And oh that's wow! Awesome. So, Thanks, Derek. Uh, good to have you here. So yeah, I already see something kind of cool. Yeah. Let's well, actually, like it's 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 full of possibilities. It's full of possibilities. That's right. The <laughs> generative fill in Photoshop. My God, I you know I've been doing graphics professionally for about twenty years now, Paul, and I've never been more excited. Since he's three years old. Since I was yeah he's, one year he's old. He's twenty three. Yeah, uh, yeah just, no. <laughs> just turned twenty one. Just went to Vegas last weekend for my twenty first. Um, I've never been so excited and so terrified at the same time. Mm, the yeah. tool is incredibly good. Are and, you? Are you? And, and also, you have so, you have plenty of uh, videos out there. Like yes. Tutorial videos on how to remove, how to do all these things. Yeah. And then this comes in and like just changes. Yeah, exactly. That. And there's an example that I have a little later on that it, it's a video that I made about six years ago on how to remove something. It took about an hour to do, and now I can do it in under a minute. And we're gonna oh. walk through it. it. It's crazy. But in case uh, the people watching haven't seen this yet, and I'm sure they've already seen it, they've been watching probably for hours now, uh, this morning in the Photoshop beta, we got access to the generative fill, which allows you to do some pretty amazing things with the any selection tool. I'm, I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool, but with any selection, you can just click and drag over an image. You get this little hovering window here. If you don't see it, you can go into window and then go all the way down to where it says contextual taskbar to enable it. Notice that it goes away if I click on that, but I'm gonna bring it back. Also side note, you know, just cause I'm nerdy like that. If you want it to, you can go into edit and choose generative fill and then use this window here mm. or right click on the selection and choose generative fill, but I don't like that. I like the contextual taskbar much, much better because I can just click on this. And what I kind of like it about it is you could you could pin it. A hundred percent. I mentioned that last yes. time, and I'm like, I, I wonder if I would like that yes. as a workflow. Yeah, uh, good point, Paul. You can click on the three dot icon here and select pin bar position, so the bar will always stay there. Well, or, and you can move it around at this point too. Right, exactly. Nice. So I can move it here and then pin it to say the top and it just stays there and I can just work on it. Mm -hmm. So completely up to you how you wanna work with it. But now that I have a selection active, I can input a prompt and I can literally put anything. Um, it, it doesn't work well with commands, so I can't select something and say make it bigger, that wouldn't work. But if you use nouns and verbs uh, in your prompt, then you should generate something that works. For example, um, wouldn't it be cute if we had maybe like a sleepy or like a sleeping fluffy if I can spell it correctly, that's one of the issues now. I have to uh -huh. learn how to spell, Paul. Uh, <laughs> Sipping Fluffy Cat, for example, oh, and I can click on yes. Generate, and we're gonna hopefully get a cat Make sleeping. Make a cute kitty. A cute kitty, yeah. So this is gonna be interesting, because I'm wondering what size it will come in at. Yeah, it's gonna be I either a giant cat, that. or like in further in the background. Yeah, is yeah. it gonna, is it gonna, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so interested. It's a giant cat. <laughs> it is a giant cat. <laughs> and it, but the, the cool thing about the generative AI is that it matched the lighting, the perspective, the shadows. Oh, 
even a Ooh. little bit of that reflection there under yes. the cat, which is just incredible. Wow. And also in the properties panel, you have three variations right here. You can see them on the right and you can click on the one. Oh my God, that's a big cat, but it's a <laughs> cute looking cat. Um, does that look like your cat? What does your cat look like? Uh, it's a little black, a little old black. seventeen year old. <laughs> okay. Like I'm oh, like just over things. Just I'm over it. Right. <laughs> just I want to look for places to sleep. Right. So, yeah. But it, it's just wow. amazing how realistic this looks. I didn't really do much work. A couple things to keep in mind is that when you um, do the generative fill, it fills in all the pixels inside of that selection. So it actually generated the floor as well. So you don't get transparency. And I'm gonna show you an example a little later on on how we can work around that. But um, at this point, if you wanted to, like you mentioned the, the point that the cat was a little too big, so we wanna make it smaller, we can definitely press Control T to transform, but when we do that, we get the same issue that I was talking about earlier with the, the background. You can see that the background is there, but if you ever transform and move the cat to another location, when you click on these generative fill layers, they um, open up this section here in the properties panel that shows you the prompt that you used, and you can just click on the generate button again. Unfortunately, it will not generate the same cat again. It'll generate a whole new set of cats, but in the Ooh, right perspective, in it, the right in scale. The right, yeah, the right. right scale, the right size. So that's a, that's a good way to, yeah, just sh shrink it down. You still have those other variations. Right. You still have the other variations, but they're using the previous uh -huh. background, which will not work, but then you have a whole new set of cats. And you can just keep adding variations since you get something that you like. Maybe mm -hmm. if, you know, instead of a cat, maybe you want a dog, you can type in the word dog in there and click on generate, and it gener it'll it generate a dog in just a few moments here. This is, it's always so interesting. Isn't it interesting how there's really just like what, very few types of cats, but dogs have so many yes. variations. Yes. Breeds, yeah, as exactly. Known. And it's funny that they're all white dogs and similar Super looking dogs, fluffy. right? Exactly. So mm. um, you can keep adding as many uh, many variations as you want. If you don't like any of the variations, uh, there should be a, a real uh, red X here. I'm not exactly sure why it's not showing. Why the icons are so tiny? Oh, they, we they just changed that too. Oh, they the changed that. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's cool. that's why it has the. If you click there, it's yeah, delete, delete. But also yeah. good results, poor result. Like we want your right. feedback. That's why it's in beta. It's a conversation that we want to have with there everyone. There we go. And you can also click on these icons, I believe, to tell Adobe if you yeah. like the result or don't. And if there's something inappropriate, I think you can flag it and let them know that mm -hmm. uh, something inappropriate came out. But um, it's a fantastic tool. Also, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it since there's other examples I want to show you. But in this example, I also was able to generate a couch, a table, mm -hmm and a flower pot on top of that. It's crazy nice. how you can basically take a photo of like an empty room maybe in your house and then decorate it and see if you're gonna like it. And want. it matches like, it could have made that a shiny table. Right. But it like, the just the the, the interior design sense right. of Firefly or generative <laughs> fill in here is so, so on point. It matches. Nice. It's incredible. And I, I think something that's very important to point out is you don't have to type in uh, in the prompt like HD or 4K or you know mm, whatever type of camera point. because uh, Photoshop is analyzing the image and it's using that to generate the result. So you don't need mm -hmm. to type all this crazy stuff. You just can do something as simple as sleeping fluffy dog or cat or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, let me move on to another example. Another great feature here is how you can easily replace backgrounds. So something I should have mentioned earlier, there's four things that the generative fill is really good at. Removing objects, adding objects, creating backgrounds, and of course, I'm forgetting the fourth one, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how you went down that road and you're like, come on, it better come, come to me. Come on, the fourth. Come on, the you're fourth. up. You're yeah. up number four. Uh, you're up number four. So let's see, removing backgrounds. Um, adding, removing, like removing backgrounds. And by the way, I just did. A, I just I told you I went to bed at 7 a.m. because I was working till like the last minute working on my uh, Photoshop tutorial that went out on the Photoshop training channel. But if you go to that video, you'll see it. <laughs> you'll see it there for I sure. I think it does a good job at like if this was a case where he was cut off, mm -hmm. you could it could generate. Yeah. Outcropping. Like, that's the other one. Yeah. It, ex outcropping. Expanding. Okay, yeah. Cool. Expanding images. So those are the four. Um, so one of the things that we can do here is 
um, with this contextual, and I was like looking for it. I forgot that we had pinned it up here. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you don't see it, make sure that it's uh, not pinned in like a random place. Mm -hmm. yeah. But one of the things you can do now is click on this select subject button here, and it will analyze the image. And another cool thing about it is that now that we have a selection active, we have these cool little icons here that can do so many things like create a mask, create an adjustment layer, but we also have the invert selection button and we can just click on that. So now instead of selecting him, we're selecting the background and we can use generative fill to um, add a background behind them. And I think that um, landscapes work really well with the mm. generative fill. So something that I, you know, been practicing with is typing in something like landscape with uh, lake and distant mountains. If I can sp spell that properly, that would be great. I think I did. And I'll click on generate. Something I didn't mention earlier is that you do need to be connected to the internet to use this. Um, Photoshop sends your prompt to the cloud. It does this magic up there, it's some compute stuff. I don't know, I'm sure Paul knows, he knows everything. It's but then they spit it right back at you to your computer and look at this, look at the result. It's, it's just incredible mm -hmm. that just by typing a couple words, we get something that looks very realistic yeah. and very convincing. Something yeah. else that I really, really like is that the um, generative AI, and for some reason it's not zooming in, there you go. Oh, let me zoom out, I went in too far. It created the flyaway hairs around his hair, which makes the composite look very realistic. So I, I think that's just insane <laughs> that how it awesome. can do that. And then, you know what I would do? <coughs> Excuse me. And this also is like the, and then from here, like, actually that looks good. It matches, the lighting looks great. Mm -hmm. Oh, so here's one, here's one thing that I'm kind of noticing, and you tell me. Okay. But like, since you're using such a large area, mm -hmm. we're only returning like a 1024 yes. by 1024 yes, size. So it might come in on like a little blurry compared mm -hmm. to the crispness yes. of him. Yeah, v very good point. So I have another example that I was gonna show, but I'm glad you brought it up now. So yeah. as you mentioned, it's a 1080 on the long side, and then um, it tries to fill the selection that you created. So in this case, it worked well because if this were a real photo, it would be like a you know shallow depth of field and the mm -hmm. background would be blurry anyway. But if you needed something with detail and sharpness, then it's better to do it in pieces because then you're stretching that 1080 image to a smaller section yep. or maybe not even stretching at all depending on the size yeah. of your selection. Yeah, exactly. So you could you could just, it would just be maybe four different passes, maybe each quadrant. Exactly. Sort of and now that I'm Same talking thing. about that one, let's let me open that one up. I think this is the image here. Yeah, this is this is the image here, and I guess you already saw the final result, but we'll pretend that we didn't see it. So if you have um, an image like this where you would like to expand it horizontally, maybe you're working on, you know, like you have the perfect photo of like a yoga instructor or something, and she wants this photo to be part of her Facebook cover. Obviously, before, you know, we had to do things like Content aware fill, and now it seems Ooh, so try archaic. It. Even if you did, just do. Can you do content? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. Perfect. I'm going to do you. it. It's incredible, like how much better it is now. So I have the original layer selected, and I'm just going to go into um, file, and I'm actually going to do like the content aware fill dialog box, just because, in my opinion, it does a little bit better job than just doing the old school way. But I mean, just look at that. You, you can see the preview here on the the right, and that's the result using content aware fill. Mm. You know, not not the best. And sure, we can play around with color adaptation and do the, you know, rotation and, and scaling and mirror and all that fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we still are not going to get a good result. It's just just not going to do it. So that's the result that we would get with content over fill. But if we do the new generative. Uh, fill, we can click on that, and this is the key to remove or add something. You can just leave the prompt uh, blank and Photoshop will just figure out for you. Just click on generate, and this is this is doing what we talked about, Paul, is doing that 1080 image is gonna stretch it out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna show you like a, another thing you can do. Looks like uh, Elaine is not, uh, so they've created a model of stable diffusion or some other open AI. Not that impressed. Sorry, Elaine. Yeah. I'm sorry you're not that. <laughs> I would like to for well, you to elaborate. I'm impressed now. <laughs> I just like I don't know what there's not to be impressed. What you're not exactly. What you wouldn't be impressed by, but that's okay because you hey, don't. Everybody doesn't have to like everything. I I completely agree. But you know, knowing how this was such a manual process before, because you'd have to go out, yeah. find an image because yeah. we know content aware didn't work. Uh, I gotta go hunt down images. Yeah. 
try to do a color thing. match, perspective match, yeah. a million things. But look, I mean, this is just insane to me that Photoshop can just generate this and you know, you pick the one you like best. Look at that lighting. It's incredible, right? Look at that lighting. Look at that lighting, bro. Jesus. That is so amazing. I, I wanna practice uh, or try something out then that I never tried. I wanna go up and see if we can see the sun. I'll, I'll try that. Oof, um, yeah. But before I do that, I just wanna finish the point that I was making, that we were making earlier. If you're working on something like this, what I recommend, even though this looks fantastic, when you zoom in, you'll realize that it's you know uh, low resolution and stuff, not as good as the original. So it's better if you do it in parts and there's two advantages for that. So I'll go here on the left side and then just do the generator fill just on the left side. And one of the advantages of doing it uh, piece by piece is that you can decide which uh, side works best for you because mm -hmm. maybe on, on the full image, the left side looks great, but the right not so yeah. much. So you can decide on which of these, you know, variations you're gonna stick with and then you can do the other side. Yeah, I like that version. And then do the, ge I like stuff that has depth. You yeah, know, it makes you, it you pick more... the right variation. Yeah. <laughs> really like... But isn't that fun that like, we are now making like sort of design decisions yes. as opposed to spending our time doing production. Right, exactly, exactly. So. And see, I, I don't like this one. I don't know how you feel about that, Paul, but I don't like that one. That one I like a little bit better. Uh, it's between these two for me. What do you think? Maybe that one, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I like Maybe that one. Maybe that one. But the... I, I feel, I don't feel as fenced in. Mm -hmm. so this one feels open to me. Exactly. And, and we still have some depth there. Yeah, and then we're making design decisions, as you said. And we're, we're being... I, th I think it needs that, because when you have something, something too symmetrical, it's boring. Mm -hmm. And we have a little bit of asymmetry to break yeah. it up. But you know what the cool thing is? What if, you know, <laughs> This is cool and all, but what if I wanted to add a prompt and say something like lake with, because you know, she's out there in the woods, so lake with um, distant mountains. And I'll just click on generate again, and hopefully we get something that works. And this is the cool thing, you can leave it blank and let Photoshop figure it out, or you can type in a prompt mm -hmm. and you can figure it out yourself. Yeah, and that's that's good. Just like I just like that you you could throw something at generative fill, and it has to give you something back, and then you can react to it. A hundred percent easier way to work. See, there you go. Look at that. Do we do we like the lake? Do we not like the lake? Oh wow, that changes. That's it. Right. I, I I'm I ooh, ooh, I like. I kind of like that yeah, one. Yeah, I like that you one know? too. So it you know completely changes the feel the emotion that this image is bringing up and now she's got a great Facebook cover photo which is you know again incredible that you can do this in a couple clicks mm -hmm. she's also AI generated for her fake ace uh, her face fake Facebook profile <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> yeah definitely um you know what I want to try what I told you earlier I'm just gonna drag up and just see 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 what it does and uh, you know what I'll do the bottom part too oh actually no I don't want it uh, to stretch it out so much yeah do the top part now are you gonna are yeah. you gonna? I'm just gonna do a. Uh, I'm just gonna let Photoshop do its thing. So are you gonna say sky or just? No, like, just let it, like it let, let it figure it out. Figure it out. Oh, he's like figure it here. out. We'll do it live. Here. Figure it out, <laughs> man. So 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 funny. Um, and just so you, just we haven't talked a lot about this, but so Photoshop had an update. So, um, pre. I was gonna say adjustment presets, and now I'm distracted by this. <laughs> Um, remove tool. Yeah. Remove was, tool. We have not. One. We didn't talk about that the last hour. So yeah. I can. We can definitely do something with that if you want. But I mean, look how crazy these this image is. It, it's incredible that we now mm -hmm. see that top part is just insane. And actually, here's something cool. Something that I don't know if it's going to work, by the way. But um, something that um, Generator Fill is really good at is reflections. So I can come here to the bottom, and I'm just going to extend <coughs> the background here or the the bottom part. And then I'm gonna add just like a little pond or something. We'll, we'll see what we can do with that. I wonder if it's gonna get her like a shadow of her. It's gonna give it's... her a reflection, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And that's another thing. Um, since it's doing all the computer in the cloud, my computer speed is not as important. Um, that looks but my, good. Yeah, it looks great. Can you use this and then just kind of maybe zoom in on that? Yeah, sure. Just so people can see it a little bit yeah. better. But look, so it extended her foot out. Yep, and the shadow. Yeah. And the shadow for the tree. Look at her knee. It's kind of like kind of getting her knee there. Or yeah. Her leg. I yeah. Mean, it does. Oh, it Paul Weaver so... summed it up. Wow. Wow. Indeed. But this is what I was trying to do here. So now I'm going to just it. make a selection do here it. in the bottom and we'll do see if it works. It. I'm just going to add do it. Do it. Um, water. Uh, here, how about super easy? Reflective water. Just 
letting it do its thing, but with giving it some direction, reflective water. So my hope is that we'll get her reflection. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Or still water, but then it's like, yeah, we'll see what happens. And this is, what are we doing this time for this progress bar? We, <laughs> Look at this. We... Not, not bad. Look at that. Oh my God. Come on. Give me, oh, God. give me something to throw. I know. <laughs> you, laptop, uh, you can throw, throw your laptop. my hands up. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, oh, Henrik God. said, we waited 20 years for this. Definitely. I completely agree. It, it's mm -hmm. it's just crazy, like, the amount of stuff that you can do with this. Did you go through the other versions? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, uh, sorry. Can yeah, I, no worries. Do you mind? Yeah, it's kind of swampy. I kind of like it a little bit. It's it's it's, it's not as clean as She's this one. get malaria. Yeah. I'm a, little, I'm a little concerned for her. Yeah. Now it looks like she's summoning a swamp beast yeah, from the water. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, pretty and good. Again, in, in case somebody's just tuning in, we started with that. Mm. And then, you know, while talking to each other and, and goofing around a little bit, we were able to come up with like an insane photo mm -hmm. in just minutes. I mean, that is just, you yeah. know. Blows my mind too, man. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta, t I gotta take up some yoga or something. Just yeah, find, I mean, my find, God. I, like, I feel like the ground is shifting and things are. Yeah, we'll, are we'll do crazy. We'll do one more just for fun, oh, yeah, just no, for funsies, no, just for funsies. So, and keep in mind, like, um, Jesus said earlier, we are the canvas is pretty large. Yeah, yeah. At this point, it's just stretching pixels yeah. so much that it's it, not. It really is. We're yeah. really uh, yeah. uh, testing the elasticity of those <laughs> pixels at this yeah. point. Yeah, and I'll zoom in on this last one because I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty pixelated just to yeah, show if you people. Zoom in. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, it looks great. But if I zoom in, yeah, I probably go with that one. But if 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 you zoom it's in, still is so much fun. So yeah, see, I mean, at this point, we're really stretching those pixels. So, what I hope um, is to, ha and actually, no, don't we have upscale in uh, some sort of upscale? Uh, yeah, in... the um, neural filter. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can. Maybe. maybe. But really, how you do this, if you weren't, weren't, weren't on a live stream, you'd, you'd break it up with. Yeah, segments 1080. And... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, let's let's look at more examples. I mean, this is just nuts. So you, just... Did you not save that file? I didn't. <laughs> you know why? Because you could just generate Because I could just it do again. it all over again. <laughs> so I used to have a demo um, where I took, I think it was about 16 photos of the Lee Museum. I stood very still with my phone, and then in Photoshop I came in, and I used the stack mode as, you know, technique. Too. Like one of your tutorials, how to remove tourists from yeah, your phone. Yeah, basically. That's so right, funny. Right, right. And, you know, I needed 19 photos. I needed to stand in front of the museum in front, you know, like for a, a minute, and, you know, just hoping to God that people would move. Mm -hmm. so I can have a clean plate. But now, um, what I can do is really quickly here with the lasso tool, I'm just gonna make very loose selections and I'm gonna go as quickly as I can because I know we don't have a lot of time. But notice that, you know, I'm not being precise. I'm just going and, you know, maybe I should get the reflection as well. And here we go. And I'm just gonna... And this is how I've been doing things, by the way. Is I've I've been using the lasso tool, mm -hmm. yeah. just because I like having that some buffer room. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in this case, obviously, just remember to get the, you know, and even if it's not perfect, it's like just yeah. Yeah, so and then you know everything comes with a mask. You can mask things out if you don't like them. Yeah, and that's something that we're gonna look at a, a little later on. Yeah, so um, we kind of we, uh, just so you guys know, we've we've had AI and machine learning technology for a while, even like content aware being yeah. being one of those. I mean, Adobe Sensei, right? Adobe Sensei. Yeah. So once you have your selection active, just click on generate fill, click on generate, and it should just remove people from the photo. I mean, we'll see. And that's another thing. It, it, unlike other tools, I feel that this is a little more random, where it might work great, you know, and then the next time it doesn't work so great. So you, oh, you kind of have to, um, you know, try it. Um, you won't always get exactly the same result. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder. What and there else. we go. And see, it didn't do a perfect job here on the right side, but you could also come in here and then just do the areas that it missed. But you can see the people on the left side, they're, they're completely gone. Mm -hmm. Where'd you, they go? Like, what happened? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm a little concerned for those other people. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should call someone. Yeah, is there somebody we can call? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it looks like And you still have different versions you can kind of... Yeah, you, oh, that's right. Yeah, I can 
go there and then maybe I had a version here that worked better. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes it works great, other times it doesn't. When I tried it uh, earlier on my own, that's that's what it did. So, yeah. you know, you never really, never really know. Um, let's talk about, you know, I, I talked about um, an example earlier. So I did this tutorial in, in the Photoshop training channel like way back when. And what I did for this tutorial is like, I very meticulously use the clone stamp tool yeah. to like, you know, copy these pixels and uh. then come in here and, you know, and then I stole a little bit from here and, you know, just kept doing that uh -huh. for like an hour until that, you know, car was gone. And it's actually one of my most viewed videos. I think it got like four, five, six million views, who knows, a ton of views. But, you know, it was just using the clone stamp tool, the patch tool, like all these different tools to remove that car. But now, and you can time me, Paul, just to see how long it takes, but, um, with the with oh you are gonna time it great I let's will. see let's let's time it let's go let's just, let's, let's see ready get it wait Set, and go. go okay so lasso tool and make a loose selection I don't have to I'm be gonna precise pretend like I'm doing that over here in this okay sounds good I don't know we'll it's see let let, let let us in, let us know in the chat how long you think this is gonna take I, me. I think we should we should compare it to the original time uh, the time of your original video for. The, okay. Your tutorial to do to remove that tutorial um, is about to, twenty minutes long, but in reality, it took longer because I kept you know like oh do this and then I would you know cut ahead not to bore people. Mm -hmm. um, so now generator fill, generate. Let's see. Let us know in the chat how long you think this is going to take. <coughs> uh, and by, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to ask Chelsea's question. Answer oh. it. So it is in Photoshop beta. So uh, anybody has access to it. Um, just go to your Creative Cloud desktop app and in beta apps. Cool. So that's where it comes from. So now that we have a, a clean plate, what I'm going to do is just simply select the layer mask and just fill it with black. So now we have a completely black mask. Black on a mask just means it hides everything. And now I'm going to go to the original image, click on select subject to select her. And then I'll click on this icon to invert the selection go back into my generator fill layer and with the brush tool, I'm going to paint with white and look at this. Yeah, paint it out. There we go. All right, Paul, how long How long did that take? Uh, one, one minute, 30 seconds. One minute, 30 seconds. Unacceptable. So, way, unacceptable, way too, too, <laughs> too slow, too slow. And um, yeah, so so like the, the, the original video, if you look it up on like YouTube, is how to remove anything from a photo in Photoshop, and it's mm -hmm. got, like I said, I don't know, five, four, six million views. That's the one, you'll see the same picture as the cover photo, and you'll see that it's 20 minutes, but like I said, mm -hmm. that was with me cutting it and speeding up certain yeah, things, so like it took about do. an hour. Yeah. Yeah, so isn't that insane uh, that you can do something like this so fast? I mean, um, and, and, and also, like, remember, we got a clean plate, too, so it's not like, um, you know, we just removed the car, we, like, got rid yeah. of everything. But, but again, we're not asking the hard questions like what happened to the lady? <laughs> where is she? Yeah. What happened yeah. to her? Nobody, now we have to file missing persons. It's a whole it's, thing. Yeah, it's insane. Adobe is making people disappear. Like very practical, useful by any account right there. Absolutely. For every single thing. Absolutely. Like, you know, we created monsters last hour, which was fun, but this is like super useful. <laughs> right. And um, this is just another example of basically showing uh, a lot of the things we've talked about, but put together. So, you know, we talked about the... Um, hey, Jesus would have to go out, out there and yell at everyone, hey, I'm trying to take a photo. Yeah, I know. Hey, get out of the way. Literally, that was me and Chichen Itza doing, <laughs> telling people to, to move, like, hey. Is this your asset? Yeah, it's my asset, yeah. Oh, I have that on my desktop. Oh, cool. They gave, it, they gave it to me. I don't Who, know if they were supposed to, but now I could actually like... Who's they? Uh, no, I don't oh. want to get anything in trouble. <laughs> well, I did license this image to Adobe and the demo to Adobe. Okay, that's yeah. it's, it's in demo assets. Yeah. But it's good to know that you made it. Yeah. Now, because I just like, hey, can, you guys have any demo assets? And like, let me know who took the photos. <laughs> but they didn't, put, they didn't put people's names on it. Yeah. But either way... But yeah, so, so like I said, this was shot in Sichon Itza, and then I extended the the background, and then we can do the same, you know, technique we used earlier to remove um, people from the photo. And I'm going quickly here just because there's so much that we gotta. Don't get, don't circle me on the screen, that is. Oh, on What if I disappear? Oh, yeah. Because I'm right in front of that selection. That would be really cool if we could Whoa. make it disappear. Oh, maybe I did disappear from that side. <laughs> 
All right, that's well, Macklin's so excited about this. Well, I'm sure Paco can make you disappear. We can make us both he can disappear. Do. He can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul, How did it... Yeah, General Phil took took Paul away. Oh. Paul is gone. I was like... Oh, he's back? <laughs> Turn, take me off the screen for a second, and I'm, and I'm like just chomping down on a big burger. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> can we generate a burger, Paul? Can, can, you, can you get on that, please? Oh, man. That would, we get so hungry, but what a great idea, oh, too. Oh, man, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, kind of nuts. So... Um, well... What else? I'm trying to think of everything that we, I should probably check. Yep. There we go. People are gone. And another super cool thing is, um, let's see. If you make a selection just around the bottom of anything, really, and you type something like reflective waves. Don't even. It's, it hopefully will create this amazing, beautiful lake in front of the pyramid with the reflections. And it's just really, really nuts. Uh, Anna, it works great with the illustrations. It'll match the style of whatever you're selecting. Mm -hmm. um, you can do a blank canvas and say yeah. Chichen Itza. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Look look at that reflection, Paul. I mean, look at those those waves. Jesus. I like that first one. That yeah, that's, nice. that's the one I like best. Um, should we uh, see if, it, if it'll do a bridge? Well, we'll see. What do you think I should do? Like a like yeah. a old wooden bridge? Or what do you think of the... Um, yeah, uh, just stone, a stone Old bridge. Old uh, stone bridge. I don't know if this is going to work, guys, so we'll see. And then I want to see a dragon on that. All right. On top? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Something up there. All right. Um, <clears throat> how does it work with hair? It'll generate hair, whatever you ask mm -hmm. it to. Um, could I give it more hair, add more hair to a model, for example? Yeah, we can definitely yeah. do that. All right, so the, the bridge is not bad. Oh, that's it's, actually really cool. Yeah, that actually is That nice. is really cool. And you know what I just thought about? Let's see if we can... I, w I do want to add your dragon, but I just thought about Ooh. Um, just like a yeah. uh, like we a warrior. Ooh. Should, I, should I just put like warrior? Or uh, I'll do Aztec warrior. Yeah, Aztec warrior. Would you say sort of like... Yeah, actually, we'll just say that. That's we'll see. All. We'll see if we can get a guy or a fee, uh, lady standing there. Yeah. Not all... Warriors aren't all just men, people. No, yeah. Stop. How dare you? Mm-hmm. And by the way, like um, generative fill and Firefly is pretty good about that. Yes. Like I mean, for the most part. Mm -hmm. But it's all based on those images. Mm -hmm. So. All right. I don't know if that guy's Aztec, but maybe that guy is. Ooh, can you okay. zoom in on that? On this guy. Yeah. The shirtless guy. I don't know. Should I flag that that image? <laughs> oh, that's a little weird. <laughs> Sorry, I said is not. Do not zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But that's a case where, like, you could select that area and say, like, I don't yeah, know, leather like, shorts. Leather shorts. You know, right. like, you, you know how you, like, have leather shorts? And yeah. those leather shorts, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. I have them on right now. <laughs> I, you yeah, just can't right. see them below my uh, the desk and the laptop. They're I mean, but so, you can see them. So warm. I can. They look yeah. great on you, my All right, let, my let's eye. add your dragon. You want to add a dragon, like, on top of here? <laughs> yeah, but can, can you select more of the area? Like, can, I'm wondering, I want to see it actually sitting. Yeah, yeah, that's, you did a good job. So, like, oops, let me try that again. Oops. So like, is this what you have in mind? Yeah, just make sure you get some of the, yeah. And then do like what, dragon? Gigantic dragon with wings. Hope there's an offline version and higher resolution. Paul, that sounds great too. I'd love offline versions, especially when I'm on the plane. Unfortunately, <laughs> that means having a huge database of images on your desktop. Yeah. And nothing else. And a ton of compute power. And a ton of compute power. So have somebody else do all that do all that hard work and, yeah. you know, serve it up. All right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Was, was there, like, okay, that so one's here, all right. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, that one's Ooh, all right, too. That, that one's, one's all right, better. too. That yeah. one's pretty good. Yeah. But this is a situation where, like, okay, there are no real dragons. Right. You're going to, even if you go on Adobe Sock, and do, this is how you find out where that stuff's coming from. Go on Adobe Sock, type that in, mm -hmm. see sort of the resource photos, and a lot of that stuff's obviously, like, 3D generated. Yeah, there's no real uh, photos of dragons. Right. Just so you know. Somebody needs to screenshot a couple of Game of Thrones episodes. Yeah, and what? A Game of Thrones episode? Oh. Just do a couple of screenshots. Oh, yeah, throw it up there. Oh, I, I wish. But that's, you know, this yeah. changes the look of it. Super fun. It's doing all the Super things. Super cool. But, yeah, I mean, it. you know what? And why don't we try adding, like, actually, that's not a triangle. I'm going to try adding another pyramid. And I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to test it. I'm going to see, I'm just going to type in pyramid. So I want to see if it does, like, an Aztec pyramid or, like, an Egyptian oh, pyramid. Oh, interesting. So e I'm just going to. Did I spell it right? 
Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> now I have to have a dictionary on me at all times. I don't know how to spell anything. I just came aware of, I became aware of, can you provide a link uh, to the requirements to run Firefly? It runs in the browser. Just type in Firefly mm -hmm. at Adobe.com. And it's going to run in your browser. So no real requirements. It's all about maybe the, your internet speed and then if everybody's requesting pictures of dragons and temples, it might be a little right. slower. All right, so not bad. It, I mean, these are definitely not Egyptian pyramids, so, you know. Paul Weaver, what's up? Cool. Let I me... like how it did it. It kind of matched the the blurriness. And, yeah, you know, exactly. I, 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 I kind of like it. I like it. Uh, you know what? This one's actually pretty cool, so I will save it. That one's nice. Um, oh, you're gonna save? I'm gonna save that Did one. You save that, it? One's, that one's cool. Yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> saved a file for once. Yay! <laughs> um, I'm trying to find. Uh, oh, here we go. This is what I was gonna show. Um, so we've been looking at just, you know, adding things to a photo, or removing things to a photo, but you can actually create composites from scratch, which I think is, is super cool. Like for example, I can make a selection here on the bottom and decide where my hori horizon line is going to be. So like that'll be that line there. Generate a fill, and I can just type in like uh, grassy okay. field or something like that. We'll see what that, that generate. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cancel it. <laughs> grassy field with dirt patches. Just oh, wanna... nice. There we go. And maybe you could put in like summer, winter, mm, mm -hmm. you know, and that'll mm -hmm. change it. Yeah. But you do, this is the new pose of the Photoshop designer is like what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, really? You can finally so, stretch out your shoulders. I, I think you were just want to show off your muscles, dude. Yeah, always. Yeah, it's like, I do all these weird Paul, flexes. Paul, where's the bathroom? Is it like... Uh, it's over, behind oh, me. Oh, behind, okay. It's over oh, that there, way, okay, actually, cool. technically. Yeah. But I kid. But I'm like, oh, I finally get to stretch my shoulders because I got to, you know, <laughs> wait for the, it to create... Well, there's no patches of thing. dirt, but that's okay. Um, uh, that would be. It's always, f yeah. That's yeah. Let me. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Uh, and I almost. Distant. I also. I almost think you need to just roughly select an area. But depending on what you're trying to do, I don't know what you're yeah. trying to do. I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to do. I, don't I, I think. Your head. I think it needed the word distant because it doesn't feel like it goes off into the distance. Oh, good you know? point. So yeah. or, and this is a case where maybe you ah, look at. Here we go. Wow. That's what that I'm talking a, about. Yeah, that made a That's huge That's exactly what difference. I'm talking about. See, distant, it just creates that depth. Yeah. And then... W wide angle, maybe? Oh, know. yeah. That's great. Then I can select the top part and say something like, um, overcast, cloudy, sky with... I, I use the word distant a lot. Distant, yeah. just to, for depth. Mm -hmm. Distant mountains. And we'll see yeah. what... Over, oops, I misspelled overcast. Uh, overcast, cloudy sky with distant mountains. I think that's spelled correctly. And I'm just trying to generate a, a background from scratch rather than, you know, just removing something and then that be my background. I can just create it completely from scratch. I can create a whole mm -hmm. composite essentially using the yeah. generative fill. Ooh, let's see. Which guy do you like better? I think number two. What do you think? This is. Uh, Oh, the second one, yeah. Um, yeah, number yeah, two. I'm glad. Cool. Uh, yeah, so answer your question from Behance. You can just select a subject and ask for variations of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just click Generate and then look at those three variations. Change it, because uh, it's all in the Properties panel. You change it, you know, yeah. refine it more. But this looks, this looks like Colorado, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, it's very, you know, Colorado's like, has a state with a split personalities. <laughs> Half the state's flat. The other half, mountains. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna type in broken down red barn. So hopefully we get like a old red barn. Yeah, old old. I should have used the word old. Yeah. And that's old the cool thing. I can always barn. go back and add a prompt if I need to. Does the? I'm just reading that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if you add HD or 4K parameters, no. No, no, it does not. Um, but uh. Wow, ooh. actually did a really good job. Wow, yeah. Uh, what do you think? I kind of like that one. I like that one too. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Yeah. And then what I can do now is maybe on this side here, I can do like a, my, my usual trick, reflective, <laughs> reflective water. And then it figures out that it's like probably like a pond or something. So it, it should do a good job mixing it in with the 
grass and all that. Yeah, man, this is fun. So, so how's your day going? Pretty good. Now that Adobe released this tool, that like someone said, we've hey, been Seuss. waiting for 20 years. Hey, Seuss years. is like, finally, I can maybe sleep tonight. Yeah, finally. <laughs> it, you know what? It didn't do that good of a job as I was expecting, so maybe I'll change the uh, the prompt, and I'll, I'll say something like pond with reflective water. I just like the reflection I would that it love, creates. Uh, what, what if it's even an interesting size where, like, if it goes in front of the barn? Oh, okay. Let's do reflective? that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and then kind of cast the reflection on the on the water. Yeah. Let's... So, uh, Jimena, by the way, you bring up a good point because I think a lot of people want high res. Like, I think we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Like, we ha we have the capability. Right. But again, this is in beta. We just gave it to you today. Let's 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 figure out how that would look in the future. That's a sad looking pond. Let's. Uh... <laughs> it is a very, but again, very Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> like in that place. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Oh, kinda yeah. Do what you said. Ooh, let's I love see. this. It's gonna be weird. So I'm just gonna say. Uh, Things are gonna get weird. Oh, you know what? River with reflective water. How about that? Oh yeah. Cause I don't wanna do ocean or anything like that, but we'll see. And this is where I'm still looking at this and it's that's almost perfect. I think it, the fact that it's using true black, is mm -hmm. I think that black's almost too dark. Yeah, I agree. That's the only thing. That's, I agree. And maybe they're, yeah, something like that. But mm -hmm. it's like good. I get, I get to be useful. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks, Photoshop, for letting me do something. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, this I'm is great. I'm losing my mind. All right, right here. Look at that. Look at that grass. I'm Look at that dirt. The barn. And you know what the cool thing is? Is we started from scratch, right? We had a blank canvas. This is like nothing. Yeah. Roll back to the 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 original image. This is the original. Image. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So there's your source image. There's my source image. <laughs> oh, grass. We use the word distant. And then uh -huh. the sky. And then what do we do? Oh, yeah, the barn. <coughs> and then that little little river thing. Really, really little, crazy. Little you know what we should thing. do? Um, why don't we put like a jet here? What do you think? Yeah, we just got some rich cowboys, like some yeah. Ted Turner guys, like going out to check yeah. out his barn, how to land his yeah. jet or biplane or what Cessna or something. I, I, and <laughs> you did a good job. Like, keep it generic. It has more to pull from. Might surprise you. Right. Which is super fun. Um, and just so we're clear, it's in the latest Photoshop beta, which you can find in the uh, beta apps of. Uh, of the Creative Cloud desktop. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah this guy just, just showed up to his He's barn. A... Oh my god! Wow. These are pretty good. I don't know, man. I'm just dying. I'm dying Which here. one? Yeah. Jesus. I kind of like the third. Uh, I like that one. I first, like that. It's between first and second for me. I, I think feel like this is... I, uh, that one's good. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that one's good. It's, I mean, it's you're really the boss. Cool. But and I'm you just... know what? Like, we haven't... There's another thing I wanted to show you guys that I just uh, thought about. Let me just find the right image that I... So let's be clear on everything as you open that up. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to be fun, too. Yeah. So stop it already. Um, yeah, again, this is using generative AI. Think of Firefly, sort of powered by Adobe Firefly. Mm -hmm. It's using Adobe stock images. We still have the big question, like we are, we're using you know stock contributor assets, and mm -hmm. we're looking at compensating people. So it's like this does this magic does come at a cost, and uh, we 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 plan on um, you know getting that all worked out. We're actively working on that. So um, that's all I kind of had to say. So I selected the right side of the image using the polygonal lasso tool, and the prompt is going to be building with reflective windows because maybe you know I, I don't I think I might think that the you know trees in the background are boring and I just want the building, and I'll click on generate mm -hmm. and and we'll see what it does. So that's you you just say what did you say? Building with reflective windows. Yeah, this this reflective stuff is mm -hmm. you know. Look at that. Pretty good. Let's see what we I mean, got. look at the reflection of this car. It's actually reflecting both cars, and the buildings are the same type of buildings. You know, it didn't do like buildings uh -huh. in like, you know, another place. It did mm -hmm. the buildings from this location. Click through it. Does it have her in there? Because that's like that's the next level. I think if I were to bring the selection closer, to her maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she's just too far from the the uh -huh. window for, for the reflection. But I mean, but still... all these look real. Like seriously, like if I were to see any of these, I wouldn't think any of these were fake. Mm-hmm. And maybe if we like zoom in and analyze like little details, maybe we'll find something wrong with them, but mm -hmm. it's nuts. And also, you know what? Maybe we're like, you know what? I don't like these cars. So 
let's see if it works. Let's, these cards are distracting. Not, not really what I want. Let's just do a blank generator fill here and see if it removes the cars. Oh, like changing, changing her clothes. We could, we could do that. Yeah, we can do that as well. Actually, there's an. I think I thought I had a photo of actually me there that I was playing around with. Oh. Uh, so and that's why this is in beta. Yeah. So this is always interesting because you. What was your prompt? There was no prompt. Oh, that's fascinating. That's interesting. Yeah. And that's what I think. We when we get those pop ups, mm -hmm. we actually need to be able to, like. There should be. I wish there was a submit. Kind right. Of, there was a way to sort of like send that data because I've kind of had that happen before. Yeah. Yeah. It's but to have it happen on nothing. Yeah. Without a prompt. It's. It's weird. It, it might be, it's like, oh, here's a pretty woman, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, get something doesn't in. like it. All right. Oh, so here's a case where like, are you, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think knows? it's trying to be extra safe. Can we use Google or Bing as a source for images? No. Can't, you can't just hey, it, say, hey, internet, I'm gonna take all your photos and use <laughs> them. It's like, if I upload something to show people, that's one thing. It doesn't give everybody the right to take my stuff and to build new things based on my heart, on the on the shoulders of everybody who's, uh, you know, posted an image online. Absolutely. So. Oh, um, I think I had a picture that I was gonna show here of, I think this is the picture of me, believe it or not. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> and um, we were talking about transparency earlier. So if I were to, you know, add some sunglasses to my face here. I'm just losing my mind here. And I work for Adobe. I've seen this stuff for yeah. a while. <clears throat> and uh, just glasses or sunglasses? Yeah, just glasses. Just, just glasses. glasses. Um, I, I do want to see the transparency, but there's not going to be any. That's the point. Um, and I'll you know, show you what you can do if you wanted to get some transparency in there. Oh, thank you. Audrey says you do have to press view guidelines oh, to see in what's the pop-up. OK. Oh, my god. Look, <laughs> at, that. Look at see, that. Again, it's it's it's. Yeah. yeah. See, so so the point that I'm trying to we make do here. Do sunglasses? Can yeah. You, can you generate sunglasses in there real fast? Because I'm sure. weird out. Not sure. really, but like maybe just sunglasses. What and, and then we'll talk. Yeah. Sure. Oops. Uh, sunglasses, glasses. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you need a space or not, but uh, we'll see. There we go. We'll see. So that'll be. This is. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah. These are interesting little tests. Yeah. Exactly. You know. I wonder if it's smart enough to know this guy doesn't know how to spell. Let me let me fix it for him. Yeah, so it's not it's not that any of this is top secret, but because if you post something online, doesn't mean everybody can take it. Yeah. Uh, oh, we, like we're getting places. Yeah, and you know, like the point that I was gonna make earlier is if you really wanted to use these glasses, obviously Photoshop generated you know like this entire area with new pixels. But if mm -hmm. you really really wanted to use glasses like that or anything that has transparency, not just glasses, you have mm -hmm. a layer mask. So with the layer mask, you can just go in there and paint with black to reveal the original pixels and then you'll get something oh, yeah. that's a little more, more oh, you know what you're doing more realistic right so now i uh -huh. mean the glasses are a little too high up you know in that case i might move them down a little bit and then continue masking mm -hmm. you know the glasses so that they now work in the area where i where i place them in and i, I think the big uh takeaway here is that just because we have ai doesn't mean that we lost all the traditional tools so we can still use those traditional tools to make the AI work when it doesn't. Yeah. And just a quick time check. We have about uh, eight minutes. Eight minutes. OK, cool. You know, you got nice hair, Paul. So let me, how can I? How oh, can you I can do it? cool hair? Yeah, I'm going to do cool hair. Thanks, man. Yeah. He's, he's so nice. Let's see. I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to do blonde. How about this? Blonde spiky hair. This is based on uh, Jocko's uh, request, changing the hairstyle. That's Which, right. by the way, I think this is the funnest thing to do. Like, hey, take a photo, <laughs> drop in Photoshop beta, get get funky with it. Get funky with it. That's right. So just so you know, like e every time we generate something, did you know we can track back to the actual no. photos? Oh, really? From that Adobe were used Stock. for Adobe Stock. Wow. So to say that it's not using something would be a lie. Yeah. What do you think of that? <laughs> oh, look at that. That's ridiculous. Actually, that I like that. I'm gonna there we go. talk to my hairstylist. Look at your bleach blonde. I love it, man. <laughs> I love it. And you know what? I think I might be. Uh, I have a selection right here, ready <laughs> to go. Who is this guy? Oh, do it. it. This is not gonna. It's gonna look. Oh God. We're gonna <laughs> do, do it um, what you, you can't, think? You like can't a leather jacket, or you think? Oh yeah, he'd be a cool guy. 
leather cool jacket. Cool guy with your, oh, man. With your blonde see. hair and your and my you leather jacket. You already have leather shorts on. I so do have leather works. shorts, so I need to match my. Yeah, I need to. I need something that matches the shorts. So yeah, Micah, bring up a good point because we're also dealing with so we it returns 1024 sort of mm -hmm. size. Mm -hmm. We want it to be fast and and usable as well. Right. So thank right. you for bringing that up. Like yes, we could unlock say a 4K, but you're gonna take a while. Look at that, man. That's a that's a that's a look. That what is about a whole vibe? What about that? You know, oh, what? I like how I did the vest. Yeah, and you know what? It made me skinnier, which I probably need in real life. You know, so uh, uh, don't, don't, yeah. don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what I like about this is that. It, you know, it generated the sun hitting the jacket. Again, yeah. shadows, all that stuff is just, just love it. nuts. <laughs> That's so funny. And very... you know what? For funsies, why don't we generate this side? <laughs> I mean, just messing with people's photos. Is oh, God. Like, I swear, don't don't tick off a designer. Don't tick yeah. some, off somebody who has Photoshop, the Photoshop beta. You are in you trouble. Are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what if you open in the non-beta? Oh, what a great question. I don't, I'm gonna try it right now. I wonder if it's gonna render it or what? Probably a smart object's my guess, let's see. Yeah, great question. That's a really good question, yeah. We're learning together. You know, I saw, and I saw a question there earlier that I'm gonna try, like what happens if you select an entire image and then just don't type anything in the prompt? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, we'll see. But look at that. I mean, jeez. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. You know what? Um, yes. This would be a good dating profile photo. What do you think, Paul? <laughs> do it. Just like <laughs> Who would swipe that right is, on this? That is Tinder written all over it. <laughs> let me open up um, and let me know what you figure out with that question because I'm curious to know as well. I'm just going to open up a, a photo that I have here. Let's see. What do I have here? Um, Uh, 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 properties panel. It renders oh. the variation you have visible. Okay, and is it a smart object or is it just like the same icon? No, it's just the Oh, it's just like a same, flattened version? Just a, a flattened version. All right, so, so let me just, great, we great have this question. image of this guy we used earlier. So this is one thing I wouldn't want to do, so I wouldn't, what I wouldn't want to do is, is, is save this. Because mm -hmm. if I save this, I'm going to lose the variations if I try to like open it up in the beta. Oh, right, you know right. Uh, yes, yeah, so it would be good for making product shots if you could get AI to blend, say, your own photo of a watch properly on a model's hand, totally. This is so interesting. So we made a full selection just out of this person and no prompt, and it generated this. Huh. Interesting. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it again, just just to see if it still generates like that city. Yeah. Two two minutes left. We could do so much with two minutes. Oh yeah. What well, it takes us a minute and a half to remove a car. We're, I know. We did learn that. <laughs> we have such egos right now. We are so powerful. What did you feel yes. like? And also small at the same time, because <laughs> you're like, I don't really understand how it does this. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, gorgeous. I guess it does landscapes. I guess that's the answer to the question. If you don't select anything, or if you don't give it a prompt and select mm -hmm. an entire image, gives you just... away. It says, you know what? Here's a fun. Here's a get. It's say it's telling you to get outdoors. Exactly. Go outside. That's what it's saying. And and here's another you know quick trick that I guess I should have shown earlier. But I'm just gonna make like a super quick selection around this lady and that car, that taxi cab. And here's another cool trick that um, you're cutting into her a lot. Yeah. I want to see what you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm doing it because I don't have that much time. But um, <laughs> the a cool prompt is just type in wet floor or ground. Ooh. Wet ground in this case. Wet ground. And it should or give us sidewalk, some nice. Yeah, or sidewalk. Maybe. Yeah. And it should give us like some really cool reflections. One minute. One minute. Is it going to get done in time? It's going to get done. I know Hurry. it. I know it. Or you got this. Come on. Photoshop. Yeah, so, you know, and again, think of the, all the keywords on, say, Adobe Stock and see where that stuff comes Look at that. from. Look at that. Yeah. Incredible. Hey, Jesus Ramirez, everybody. Paul Tranny. Jesus is the man. Slow clap for you. I, I Man, I always learn <laughs> something, and I'm always impressed when you come in here. So I hope I just want it to rub off on me. That's why I'm always like, put me next to Jesus. <laughs> And, uh, Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's incredible. I think Derek sums, sums it up. Yeah. It's incredible. Incredible. And, and wow. 
And Jesus, you're incredible too, buddy. Thank you. You are as well, my friend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You with your leather shorts on. And my Photoshop shirt. And your Photoshop shirt. <laughs> cool. Well, I guess we're out of here. But stick around, guys. We have so much more live streaming the rest of the day. So don't go anywhere. And we'll still be in chats. So thanks, everybody. Thank you.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Bell and I'm gonna be your host today, hanging out with one of my good friends, Mr. Tension. How are Hello. you? <laughs> I'm so pumped for today. I think it's gonna be an absolute blast. Um, just as kind of a quick recap for those of you who are either just tuning in or have maybe taken a break for a little while because we've been doing some crazy stuff all day today. Um, today we're gonna be diving into um, some of the new features and things uh, which you can add access now um, in Photoshop. And if you folks would like to check out all of these uh, new features and things as well, you can also um, uh, head over to this page here where I'm gonna show you where you can get a hold of all of the new um, features and things. So um, if you actually open your Creative Cloud uh, desktop app, um, you can check out to see if your Photoshop has any new updates. You can also go to the updates panel over here on the left hand side and update any apps that need updating so that you can get access to all of those uh, features. You will have access uh, as long as you have the uh, regular subscription method for Photoshop, or if you are using a free trial of Photoshop, you will have those. Um, you can also come over to the firefly.adobe.com page as well and see that we have also um, some pretty fabulous new things um, popping up here on the main page where we will um, kind of dive in a little bit later on. Um, and we're gonna show you in just a few moments how um, these two things are kind of working together now. So I'm pretty pumped. Uh, Ted, why don't you let us know um, a little bit about you and what you are gonna be taking us through today because I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ted, aka Ted's Little Dream. Uh, I'm a digital artist based in San Francisco. Uh, my specialty kind of is like focusing on surreal fantasy art, we know with the little like uh, nature and then like an animal spirit in it. So mm -hmm. basically I like to daydream a lot and somehow turn that to a job, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. And it's such an exciting day that um, we've been playing with the, the new release for a while and then, you know, now it's like ready for everyone to give it a shot and I'm very excited to see what, you know, like everyone will be like playing with like yeah. come up with a new idea you know what so what are people gonna do with it yeah. you know how are people gonna interpret it and you've kind of been like totally blowing my mind um today oh, with you. how yeah. you have been <laughs> using it so let's take a look at it let's see what we've got um and what is the kind of first feature that we are going to be diving into today yeah so it will be the generative fill tool okay Sorry. all right <laughs> excuse my pronunciation um but yeah so uh if you guys want you can also go on to stock adobe v.com slash free, mm -hmm. where you can download all the free uh, stock image to play with. Mm -hmm. So all the photo I'll be using today is from a stock website that are free to use. Um, so you can see like what other idea you can come up with and post on social media and tag us and share with us. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, for those of you guys just tune in that haven't seen the new tool, right? This generative fill tool is really awesome. So for me, one thing I like to do when I'm working on uh, on my art piece, I like to visualize it and trying to figure out like how can I push this concept to better, right? Mm -hmm. Either it's like a different perspective or merge with like a flying clouds, mountain, castle, whichever to into an element. But uh, most of the time, this probably been bothering me for a while. I was like, what can I do with this missing part of the canvas? Because yeah. like you know, like I have to clone the whole f f like forest mountain mm -hmm. to complete this piece, right? But for now, like all I really have to do is to just press C and then expand my canvas right here and then hit enter. And all I can have to do is here. Oops, sorry. Oop. I will select sky real quick and give it a minute. And I'll use selection tool to add. So I'm selecting all the space, like sky and above, like mm -hmm. the empty canvas. And I'll hit generative fill and then just hit generate. Or um, usually I could type in like different comments like, oh, if I want blue cloud or like mm -hmm. different sky color. But I just wanted to show you guys like how cool this is for my workflow, right? Because mm -hmm. like, I like to add like a main subject into my, my thing, you know? So this is like, okay, I create another space to add like a giant animals or like wolf or like elephant swimming in the sky, right? Anything so you can really there. like create your base here. And that, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So already like you have this larger image to start working with and then you can get, you know, crazy with it. And I know that you get, like you said, very, very spirit animal-esque, very magical with a lot of your pieces. And this gives you like the space to do that, so. Yeah, so now we have like three different options. I can like go ahead and select like which mm -hmm. one I like the most. Mm -hmm. um, but also if I feel like, oh, this, like, this is not what I wanted to do, I can also like just go back and type like, um, what was it? let's say blue sky with cloud. Mm -hmm. That's still correct? Yeah, 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 blue sky with cloud. 
I'm gonna hit generate again and then to get different results on this. So for me, like the workflow most of the time used to be like I have to go on the stop website, look for like what color and lighting will match mm -hmm. the, the canvas I'm using, right? But right now with look, one click and few words, like like You got it. The unlimited possibility result. It's just like fascinating, you know, just like, oh wow, like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And you can keep generating too um, in that properties panel so that like if you generate, you know, and you get a couple of those and you and you like it, but you want to test some more or you want to keep changing that prompt, you can keep going and you don't really have to leave I know. Photoshop, right? Yeah. Which is like, you know, as a as a compositor, that has got to be like just incredible to like be able to do so much of that work here. Um, I also just want to like welcome in a lot of the people who are here in chat. I see Paul Weaver, who is one of our OG viewers, coming in. Hello, Paul. It's good to see you. I see Fred, Dr. Derp, uh, Annika. Welcome in. Um, holding down the fort in the chat as our moderator today. Thank you so much. Um, we also have Rainbow and uh, Sam. Welcome in, guys. Uh, good to see you. And so I see you're like kind of expanding the canvas now, like even more, and like bringing it mm -hmm. um, up. So uh, what are we gonna do here? Also. Folks in chat, let us know. If you have any cool ideas for things we can add into here, definitely let us know. Um, and maybe while you um, experiment with that um, and maybe what you'll do next there in the canvas, we can pop over to um, my screen a little bit just because one thing I'd really like to highlight, um, especially for those who are kind of just diving into uh, the stream today, um, you might be kind of wondering what um, our little task <laughs> is. So our contextual task bar um, is our new friend. Um, and he, uh, he just kind of hangs out here whenever you are working in Photoshop. It's something that you can very easily position around your canvas. Um, and this is uh, really multi-purpose because like I have, uh, if I come over here and go into my rectangular marquee tool, I can come over and start selecting. And what it does is it suggests what your next step in your creative process might be. So it asks you, do you want to use any of these features? If I snag, um, some other tool um, that actually might change. So if I grab like um, my clone stamp tool um, for a, maybe that's what I'm using uh, in my process or we can use uh, like our gradient tool and start messing with that, you know, depending on what tool you're using, it will change um, and it is also where you will be able to access your generative fill. So when you select something, it'll ask if that is what you want to do and you can select that, it will open up the region where um, you can type in your prompt um, and just kind of go on uh, throughout your progress, your, your process, so. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like the toolbar because like, like when I first got into Photoshop, it's mm -hmm. just like there's a lot of amazing tools, but mm -hmm. you don't know which one to pick, right? There's like so many options and you don't know what yeah. to do. And right yeah. now you have that bar right underneath it, just like, mm -hmm. hey, these are some of the stuff you can try. Either you are have like a tutor teacher or like tutorial or you don't know. At least like right now you can easily to yeah. find like, oh, like, wow, this is like way much easier to understand compared to before design. Oh, uh, like where is the tool, right? I, I agree, and I think um, we can pop back over because it looks like you've got some <laughs> yeah. beautiful stars kind of coming at the top of your canvas here, which I love. Um, but you're absolutely right, and I think um, one of the things that I was thinking today while getting in and really using that contextual toolbar um, is that I always have my workspace arranged so that I have all of my tools, what I use most often, um, where I can see it. Um, but with that toolbar now, uh, or that taskbar, I might not have to have my workspace as cluttered as it is sometimes um, when I'm using a certain workflow because the things that I need kind of come up in that taskbar for me already and I don't have to have everything where I can press it immediately. Um, it just mm -hmm. kind of organically shows up for me, so I love it. Yeah. Um, and for this, I just keep expanding my canvas. Mm -hmm. I select the top part and you can see in the history right here. I select it to say, hey, give me a starry night, you know, mm -hmm. like skies just to see. I see chat ask, uh, hey, when? It's available right now already yeah. in the beta, right? Absolutely, yes. So if you would like to uh, check out these new features for yourself, um, as long as you have a uh, Creative Cloud subscription and can download and install Photoshop, or you are using a uh, trial of Photoshop, you can uh, download it, you can update uh, in your Creative Cloud desktop app uh, and get 
get all of the new updates that are available now. Um, so that includes the uh, contextual taskbar, that includes the uh, generative fill uh, feature, that also includes some of the other tools that we will be getting into um, here in a little while, including like the remove tool and all mm -hmm. that stuff, which I'm pretty excited to show you. Um, so you'll see everything you'll see here today is something that you can uh, just with a download or an update of your app, you can get your hands on today. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any idea, feel free, uh, I mean, feel free to type <laughs> in the chat, yeah. Yeah, let us know if you guys yeah. have any wacky ideas because we've got, I feel like we have an excellent base here where we can start to like add stuff in. And I am so fond of your work and I feel like Ooh, I can already you. think Ooh. of like cool stuff that. that you can add here. That looks so Cool. That is so fun. Yeah. yeah. So what did you just like change the the like expand to? Yeah, the edge all I there? did was expand the canvas both mm -hmm. way, select the the empty space and click generate, you know, because for me it's just like um, when I'm like making my artwork, is like I need a base layer. Right? Mm -hmm. I need a. It's like when I'm trying to tell you a fantasy story. I need a scene. Like where is this story happening? Yeah. Like, what is this like with the mountains and sky? Right. Mm -hmm. Like all the elements I want to add it in there. So with this, like I can just like kind of like keep on going, like trying a lot of different results instead of like oh like I now have to look like ten different stock photos to figure out mm -hmm. like which one will match the best. But now I can just sample the photo and then you know just like ex keep expanding, which is like. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. And this has got to be, you know, just like kind of a total massive door open for the concept phase, you know, because like you said, you pro you're, you know, you're spending all this time finding the individual images and stuff, but here you probably work through more ideas than you normally would because you can test it so quickly um, that you might not have had time to even test or expand upon or see like could this be something cool you yeah. could probably do 10 you know a dozen things rather than like the two ideas you might have set out for yourself before mm -hmm. this feature um, yeah so let's see we've got people saying add a meteor um, that, could, that could be cool like a big like meteor coming in um, I'm just gonna select yeah let's that. Try it. Add a I'm gonna try it. Meteor. Meteor. Should I try, do I need to add anything else? Or? Yeah, I feel like we need a little, uh, some more words for the prompt. So we could do like meteor, shower. Shower. Um, oh, I should probably select a bigger area then. Yeah, probably. Like maybe um, a, a bigger part of the sky from the, the edge. Sky. Yeah. <laughs> we could say like meteor, shower, um, falling towards the ground or um, I don't know what else could we do oh somebody was saying like the northern lights too that could be a fun one to try after this uh, meteor shower falling with northern lights <laughs> with, with northern lights let's try it let's see how crazy that I don't gets. know if that make any sense but we'll try let's it, see what so. it makes for us maybe it makes something crazy yeah, so I'm still kind of pretty new to this tool too. So I'm like mm -hmm. every day I'm like, oh, I'm just kind of playing and figure out. Sometimes the result is like um, is like a surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Or like sometimes it's like, oh, oh, that's kind of cool. That's actually really neat. I feel like it gave us. Oh wait, shower. I like that one. I do too. I wonder yeah, if we pretty cool. selected more of the sky, but that one does. You could like blend that into okay, everything. Okay, let's try to do nice. more sky because I do want to see uh, the whole thing. Yeah. I think I'll just keep the Northern Light for like something else later because mm -hmm. it's like very different. But it could be like it could be a fun one just to return to because I feel like Northern Lights are gorgeous and that could be a really great thing to experiment with um, generative fill. Uh, anyways, uh, Art of Visual is saying Nebula, um, and <laughs> we were talking oh, we about were Nebulas with Nebula. earlier, which was really really fun. Um, let's see oh, what nice. else let's we've see. got. Um, yeah, after I just like. Wind Spaceships point. in the sky. Oh, wow, using. look oh, at that. Oh, wow. I replay the whole sky, but also the mountain. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. OK. I like okay. this. It's kind of different. That one's really nice, yeah. I think, like, what, what was the new tool you told me about is the removal tool. Do you think we can remove it? Yeah, we probably could. I haven't Honestly, tried it. Honestly, if you sure. rasterize, maybe? Rasterize it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to do this and then there see. There you go. Da, da, and da, da, then da. make the. Yeah, do that, and it should just so this this remove tool is like one of my favorite things right now, um, and it is a huge light uh, lifesaver really um, because of how um, versatile it can be. Because for what you can use 
the remove tool for, I would have used like three different tools. I would say know? like if you are a, a product photographer or retoucher, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. removal tool is like holy. Oh like, yes. Wow. I saw Absolutely. I saw some product photographer test it on there just like, whoa, like you're missing a patch or a curtain or like something doesn't look right, just mm -hmm. one click. Don't even have to worry about clone step or anything and just like done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and it's like that good. worked really well in my yeah. opinion. Um, and uh, Oh yeah, one other cool thing I want to show is the the new tool is the light gradient, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yes. that could be really cool to kind of start to um, tone you know, maybe the mm -hmm. the image and all yeah, that so stuff. Yeah, so I usually use a gradient tool to do like color corrections. Well, mm -hmm. not color filter, I would say. So usually I'll drag it, and then um, in the older version, I'll have like make it, and I have to switch to the different layer, and then from there, I have to like keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. But from the new version, I can actually just go like live mode. You know, I can just change like where I want it to be, mm -hmm. and then like up and down, you know, like, let me dim it down a little bit. So I changed the blending mode to soft light or uh, overlay. That's usually like the two more I use for like the heavy end. Mm -hmm. If I want to change any color right now too, just to see like, hey, maybe I want more orange color oh, on the yeah. bottom, I can just do like something like this, which is like, you can't really do this like in the in the older version, right? Like yeah. this is like super amazing, at least for me, mm -hmm. for someone who uses that gradient tool like time to time, mm -hmm. if I want to see this, is, it used to be a lot of stuff, but now I can just like, just kind of like go over this is like, oh, all right, this is like, this is great. I want like more blue on the top, maybe. Actually, yeah, yeah. I actually really teal? like how you did oh, add like kind of the warmer tone down there because there, when we did the generative fill, there was kind of like that warm tone at the seam there mm -hmm. where the sky met the trees. And I feel like kind of um, bringing that out really makes it look super cool. It looks very fantastical, which I feel like is a theme, but you somehow manage in your work to add so much magic and fantasy to a piece and like not make it, not overdo it. Oh, you thank know you. I mean? Like <laughs> it's like so good. Um, and so this is like, now this feels more Ted yeah. to me and I'm excited. We're seeing it come together. Um, yeah. And then like beside the live gradient tool, right? Mm -hmm. the, cool, the other new thing they have added is the uh, adjustment preset, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so if you guys like open your Photoshop, you can find it again, this is in the beta, uh, mm -hmm. the beta for it. But with this is like also you can like just to see the preview of all this like photo filter on the top. Yeah. And then like you can pick the, oh, I, I really like the black and white. The black and white one is yeah. pretty good. You can pick like something you really enjoy. I'm just gonna go ahead and try this one, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you click it, so it's not just like applying a filter on top, but also has like the adjustment layers. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go in and like, you know, change the kind design. If you don't like it. it, yeah, it's like, oh, like this is a good start. Like I want to make it more of my style, of my taste, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something really cool. And you can like turn it on, turn it off just to try it. And all of this filter have like a different uh, adjustment layers in there. So you can just like try it all out. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's like lightsaber because like, I used to have to like, go into like Lightroom and then you yeah, know, yeah. jumping between. I know you can use the steps. camera raw in uh, Photoshop too, mm -hmm. um, but you can also apply multiple like filters on top of it. So it doesn't have to be one. So you can like, you know, just like yeah, tune add it to the multiple, way you like it. Kind of make a combination, whatever works best. Um, and this is just like really, really great because already I feel like you've, you've added a few things there that have like transformed the mood um, and just blended everything and made it feel so cohesive. Uh, and I love it. We've also got Speedy in the chat is saying, can we add a massive unicorn? Um, and I feel, <laughs> I, I don't know if we can add a massive unicorn, but it might be cool to have like a teeny tiny unicorn like drinking from the edge of that. I mean, I guess maybe I it's try. a lake. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> it, like if it was small, you know, like just say like a, you, honestly, you could just say it like oh, zoom in, here. little white well, horse. I didn't even realize how far we expanded on the canvas till I, I thought it was zooming a pond, in. but it could be a lake. I was like, wait, it might be a lake. actual lake and the detail. Wow, like we expanded the canvas really far away. Yeah. I'm going to try to um, We could also say, can we have horse? the sky being reflected on the pond or lake? Oh, oh we right. could do that. So we could select it and we could just like throw a new pond or a new lake in Let there. Let's see if I can do that. So this is going to be like new to me too. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very exciting to like try this all out together. I'm just gonna do a quick select. Wait, which layer is this on? Pretty sure is that new? Ah, right here. Sorry, Perhaps. chat. Perhaps. I have too much layer, right? I'm just gonna turn it off. Oh, 
There we it go. Is, it is that one, the bottom part. It's just, yeah, because we expanded so so far. Um, I wonder if there's an easier way to slide. Yeah, honestly, you could just work. lasso it real quick. Oh. With a lasso, it doesn't even have to be See, I'm still clean. so used to like the yeah. old way that with the new journey tool, you can literally just select the whole thing yeah, and then like type it. in. And then um, do I need to type say, any keywords or, yeah. Yeah, let's do, let's say something like um, just uh, a large lake. Large with, lake. Uh, reflections on top, or you could with. say large lake in the center of a valley. Because that's kind of what it is. It might that might be adding too much context, but we'll see. If it doesn't work out, then we large lake with star reflections or yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. it'll actually because there's something there already. I think that it will reflect what's up there without us needing to do it. So we could just say large st um, still lake. Try that. Large still lake. Yeah, and okay. then just see if it does it with. The... A little bit nervous, but it should be fine. <laughs> I think it'll do it for yeah. us. So yeah, like trying all these new things is like really fun. And mm -hmm. also like um, the other day I was like, hey, like what will what would be like if I'm trying to merge two completely different photos together? Like mm -hmm. would that work, right? Because I ideally, oh, that works a little bit. I guess it kind of like it a reflected the the yeah. trees and stuff that were right next to it. But yeah, maybe you do need to add like with some more details stars and stuff, yeah. reflected on the surface. Or I can just know. use like a simple like retouch, like copying mm -hmm. the copying yeah. the sky. Yeah, you could do that as well. Vertical like flip and then like a uh, screen blending. So yeah, like I, I was saying, like doing all this thing, like um, the other day, I was like, would it be cool if I tried to merge like two completely different photos together to mm -hmm. see if it will work or it will break it? So in this photo, I have this really pretty, is it tulips or I think that's poppies, poppies yeah, yeah. Poppies. poppies, poppies. So I'm just gonna go create a canvas. So the files might be a little bit large and slow, but it should be fine. I just wanna point out that this is the thing I was mentioning earlier when I said that um, Ted had been <laughs> like really surprising people today. This is kind of amazing. Um, and as sometimes like I, we, you know, he was fiddling with it and like sometimes it takes a little finesse to like figure out what a good combo is, but like when it works, it's insane. So I'm really pumped. Yeah, so I select the sky from the other photo and then select a little bit of the sky uh, from the original one I want to blend. Mm -hmm. So basically what the general fill tool is doing, if you don't type anything right, it's sampling from the original photo mm -hmm. and then like cloning and make like the whole way I understand it. From yeah, my like understanding. Fill it. Yeah. So now I'm selecting both par and then I'm just like, hey, I want you to fill that gap in between. You know? Without putting a prompt. Yeah, so, I'm just like, so selecting this work it and or, then, yeah. yeah, and then not adding a prompt at all and just hitting that uh, that fill button, and then it should do. Um, Ideally, ide it's supposed to work. You know, but the, the experimentation oh, yeah. is amazing. Yeah, there we go. We got we got some like dramatic clouds, and it's kind of mixed in together. And sometimes it, you know, like I said earlier, it takes a little finesse, like to figure out which one you like and um, what could uh, what it could be. But you know, you could keep you could keep generating and figure out one that you want better or color correct and yeah. and. See, make Felt throwing like this filter and looks pretty good. Yeah, you know? like it's like pretty good to me. <laughs> it's like anime sky, <laughs> you know. know, like very dramatic, very very cool. So it's also um, like if you want to just like have like a nighttime theme with the mm -hmm. or the night or daytime theme with the nice sky. This could yeah. be something that you can try to play with, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I love it, and I think it's really cool to like kind of see this blend, and it makes me like wonder like what other people might blend together. And so if anybody in the chat has some ideas for things that you might like to uh, try to blend, because I know a lot of you are probably getting your hands on these features today. So I want to know what you're going to be blending um, together. I want to know what kind of things you're going to be putting into the night sky. I know we had some suggestions for nor Northern Lights and Nebulas. Um, so are you going to go for that, or are you going to go for the massive unicorns <laughs> like we have had going into uh, the chat today. Um, Rodrigo, <laughs> can you put a dinosaur on the grass? We could probably attempt to put a little dinosaur on the grass. What do you think? Maybe like a little secret a little Easter egg. Nobody would we'll know see. unless they watch the stream if okay. we like zoom in and put a little, a little dinosaur for everybody. Um, I'm gonna reduce this so it doesn't break my computer. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a yeah, good idea. Yeah, because I have multiple window opens and then it's like, I see the, the wheel. <laughs> it's like loading, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I, should, wheel. I should slow down on there. Uh, 
I'm gonna just try to do blending everything into one layer. Okay. So it's better that way. Um, put a little dino. Yeah, a little dinosaur. Right. Maybe we can do like a little dinosaur just hanging out. We could say um, dino small dinosaur. Small. How do you spell dinosaur? Uh, D I N O S A U R. Dinosaur. I need a, <laughs> if I, I need a, I'm, that. I'm not. <laughs> I could draw you a dinosaur, but I can't spell one know, for you. But you know, uh, I think I think that that yeah, small dinosaur. like small dinosaur, and it then just work. like see, it might give us like because honestly, what would be cool is if there was like a little silhouette. Yeah. Honestly, I wonder if we could put like some kind of Loch Ness monster in the Oh, in oh the you can actually see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like kind of hanging oh, out. Oh, that's what cool. It, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, can I we see it? Oh, yeah. it has a reflection too? Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Drinking. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Okay, that's great. I like the, I think I like the one with the I like orange. I like that All one right. the best. Um, thank you, Rodrigo, dino. for that idea. I love him. This I like that awesome. the comment says, uh, was it Dr. Dirt? Uh, it says the ideas for cosplay photography are endless. Oh yeah, that's, oh that's you cosplay, so true. right? Yeah, 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 I yeah, cosplay. cosplay. We did a I shoot together. We did do a shoot, we did a shoot together. together. I that do weird really cosplays though because I just yeah, weird. <laughs> it's cool, unique. <laughs> yes, but, but I do cosplay, yeah. and you're absolutely right. You could like create your own cosplay bas backgrounds um, for this, um, so I could make myself like some like battle scenes, like wear mm -hmm. my armor. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I I I went to like uh, anime convention all the mm -hmm. time, and then. Uh, it's just like seeing people like we took photo right and suddenly like, a lot of time we have to like Photoshop a lot of yeah. back in oh, there. Yeah. But right now I just be like, oh, remove the background and then use this and like mm -hmm. generate like really cool like building and then like hero fighting scene with like Absolutely. lighting and fireball. And so, one of the things mm -hmm. that um, that Andrew was doing earlier was he was um, generating, uh, and maybe we can like kind of experiment with this later on. Um, he was generating like starburst effects and like textures and patterns and things ah. with a black background, so that you could put it into Photoshop on top of something with it set to screen, mm -hmm. um, and you could technically use it all to generate generate your anime, you know, cosplay background and the special effects, because people want special effects when they do cosplay photography, right? right? The special effects for it, which would be really cool. Um, and... Uh, so I'm gonna say add a thunder to it, so I'm gonna try yeah. something real quick. Make it like, Big dramatic. <laughs> is it thunder or a thunderstorm? Well, what was it? Lightning. Tornado. Lightning, lightning? or um, I would say lightning would be cool. That kind of seems what like. What about like light, lightning tornado? What we could do it? like a lightning tornado. I feel like we could do a lightning tornado. Um, if you added people hiking, how would you tell it to scale to the correct size? For the most part, as That's I have been idea. working with, as I've been working with this, it has like judged the depth on its own very, very well, like to a surprising degree, because you selected a circle there and it put the dinosaur not only there in the right place, but it also faced the water. Yeah. So that it's like sitting. I will say there's probably like different options and you can also use the prompt, right? Give me like a larger person, I mm -hmm. can go small. This is pretty That's cool. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. I wonder if you could put that because it's. Oh, that one. Oh, wow. Hello. I wonder, because it's its own layer. It's yeah, its, it's own, own layer, layer, totally. So I wonder if you could put this on a blending mode so that it has like the lightning coming in from the oh, space. Could. Maybe, it might be a little too busy for it. But, yeah, it might be a little bit too busy. But it's very, <laughs> very cool. <laughs> right, next thing I just need the firefight be like, hey, put those two together for me. Yes. <laughs> Am I like, replacing my job? No, it'll be fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so now I just swap the host guy to mm -hmm. uh, the to this, you guys To this, to something yeah. a little, a little more um, atmospheric, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, you can really get in here and it's you can- see, We started from here, mm -hmm. all the way to like this Crazy. with the little dino, and yeah. then now we got the whole like lighting going on. This Amazing. Is really fun, yeah. It is super, super yeah. fun. But there's a lot of like, I feel like um, really great practical um, applications for these and ways that this also, like obviously all of this stuff really supplements your current workflow, right? Like yeah. all of these things come in um, and uh, do like these gigantic changes, but they also, even though they're like big um, features that like do like these extraordinary things, you can also use them for like small fine details and mm -hmm. stuff too. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do um, is point out specifically just how well um, the remove tool works in certain situations. So if I could real quick pop over just so that I can remove something real quick, we're just gonna take this dog out of here um, because I think 
I know everybody will see, be sad for him to go, um, no. but one of the things that I would have done, you know, before is I probably would have just selected this whole thing and with like my patch tool and tried to like come over and like line this up perfectly. Um, and then once I um, release it, then I have like these weird edges that I have to go through and try to patch perfectly. Um, and so I would end up needing about three tools mm -hmm. to remove something completely um, and without issue. Uh, but honestly, now if I come in to the remove tool, I can just honestly paint over the top of the whole thing and it will repair it. And typically maybe I'll need to tap it one or two more times, but um, it should remove it there and make it look like it's still following the grass here and the uh, fence in the background, which is really great. Nothing is um, duplicated, really. Um, I could maybe use the patch tool to continue that um, white board down there if I wanted to. But um, somebody in the chat earlier was talking about like the depth and the size of things and how, um, how does it do with you know, kind of judging that. And notice here that I've subtracted from here and it has actually, even though it's removed that dog, it has still kept the depth of field there um, in the image. So um, it has generated a replacement for the sharper area and for the blurred area as if it was never there in the first place, which is um, really, really useful when you're working with other photos that might have many overlapping elements. Um, so it definitely makes my life easier. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've noticed that you have oh, yeah. brought the drama, <laughs> Ted. So I was <laughs> so. reading the, one of the questions mm -hmm. from me. Um, let's see, uh, can you mm. remove the background and then do generate fill in Photoshop beta like you can in Adobe Firefly? It's um, exactly yeah. the same, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's exactly the same, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and let me look through and make sure I'm not oh, missing yeah. any other questions as you kind of maneuver. Yeah, so um, while you were the dramatic <laughs> showing them the removal tool, so I went in and you know select the I select the sky and the empty canvas, and I type in sunset, Amazing. golden hours, mm -hmm. clouds, and I was trying to think about like uh, the specific term for this type of like fluffy fluff, fluffy cloud. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't think about the term, you know. So uh, a lot of time, like if you know the actual term and keywords. The, it will help the AI to understand what you mean and trying mm -hmm. to like create the uh, closer to you what you have in your mind. Yeah. But yeah, so I just put that in and this turned out like really really cool. Um, obviously, like you can still do some like color corrections on the foreground to make it blend it better. Mm -hmm. um, but also remember that like, on the bottom right, right here in the properties, you will always have three different options, or you can just keep generating to something you like. Mm -hmm. So this one looks really good too. And then even for that, so yeah, it's like for me just like, oh, like this is really fun, you know. Amazing. Yeah. So and it is, it just adds so much more depth. I think that one's my favorite one, honestly. Can I just put um, a lake in it's here? It's like really, yeah, yeah, put a lake. I think one of my favorite things to experiment with, honestly, is lake. adding bodies of water with generative fill because, um, yeah. you know, when you go through and you kind of like try to, you know, find the right one for you. Because sometimes you do, you know, you generate something and then you, mm -hmm. you know, you go through the different variations until you find whatever is right for you. Um, the, uh, just the blending into the scene and the reflections in the water uh, for them oops. is just really, really <laughs> cool sometimes. Um, uh, oh. There we go, see that putt. See, don't be like, scared guys. Sometimes <laughs> it, might, it might look like really dark at first, but mm -hmm. there's always that option B and C, right? Yeah. That looks crazy. That's Whoa. so cool. Yeah. I saved the third one. Okay, but the second one. The second one is pretty good, and you can Whoa. also regenerate as well if you want to. Um, Detail. Oh, I was about to curse. Sorry, I was like, hold it. It's amazing, you know. It's just like, wow. It, 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 it does inspire that kind of awe. It does. <laughs> It did simple uh, the reflection of the mountains mm -hmm. and then the, the, the sky. That's what I was know. hoping for so. the other lake in the the previous image. Um, I think we just have to so keep, keep trying, keep trying, few times yeah, now. a little bit just, just like, to kind of Whoa. like get it going there. But um, yeah, there's a lot of really fabulous things. Uh, and in your properties like panel, going. as you start to yeah, just keep just keep, keep expanding, keep, going. keep making it. Um, as you go through. Um, uh, your piece. Every time you are creating all of these, um, you're creating a new layer. All, every time you add something with a generative fill, um, 
And you can go through and actually look through all the, the properties panel at all of the information for it. So mm -hmm. you can go back to previous prompts um, and see what the prompt was for those. You can go to all the generations um, uh, and variations of certain prompts uh, for that layer. Um, and uh, it's just really cool to kind of keep track of what has worked, you know, what keywords have worked um, throughout um, mm -hmm. as you kind of figure out how to, you know, get what you're looking for. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm not missing any <laughs> other. Oh, uh, look at ooh. it. Look at it. Dang. I like it. This is something I would like pose mm -hmm. as my work, you know, just like, wow, look at look at this guy. Like the that blending transition is, really, is really, really nice. Yeah, that was a great transition. I think that first one is my favorite. This like that so dark pretty. to red, the red is like, ugh, that's oh, amazing. Wow. I'm yeah, just amazed by it. We're just both staying and it's like, oh wow. <laughs> Well, we're both impressed by this. Yeah. Like, didn't, I didn't know what the result was gonna come out. Like we practiced rehearsal a little bit mm -hmm. before the before the live. But, but you can like, never really yeah. know, right? Like we yeah. don't know, you know. Yeah. Which is like, okay, this this is about to be really exciting. That and, one is know. really like you've got to save and wow. keep that. I want to see that pop up in a in a project. Um, is it possible to generate seamless textures? Um, I don't know about seamless like like seamless textures that are gonna like repeat like repeatable patterns and stuff at the moment. But there's definitely the option and opportunity to. To generate think, things yeah, that you can create, you could, but I know you. you but can you would have do to. I would. In, I would imagine yeah. you'd have to make it repeatable or tileable yeah. or 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 something like that. Um, how do we get back to view prompts that's worked previously? Um, so if you can, maybe you can pop over here um, and I can show you folks um, just something that has worked. So I'll come back to our dog um, image here, and uh, I will just. Let's, I'll just throw a, um, it's very sad, we don't have our doggy anymore, um, but I will Ooh. just throw like a puddle. Okay, we'll put, just, we're sad, the dog's not here, we will put a sad puddle. Uh, so let's do a small puddle sitting in the grass. We'll see if that gives us a kind of puddle real quick. Um, and then at, you can see over here in my properties panel, um, which I have open, you can see the prompt. It says prompt and variations and the generate button. And as I, um, once this loads, it'll show you the prompt and then it'll show you the different variations. And then as I make changes to that, you can always kind of come back to it. I don't know how I feel about this puddle. Um, we might need to select a larger area for me. That's what I will do real quick. So honestly, let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's see if, I'm gonna hide this one for now, actually, um, and we'll do just a larger generation area because I think we just need a bigger space to really get it going, which is something that I've noticed, um, and I said this earlier, is that one of the things that I would keep in mind as you folks kind of get into um, using these features for the first time, um, something that I realized that I needed to keep in mind as I went through is the amount of space and selection that I actually um, put down mm -hmm. uh, as I begin to use the generative fill because I really, I don't think I was leaving enough space in the selection at mm, first as I first right. started experimenting with it. Um, and I think you need more selection space than you really think you do when you first try it out. Yeah, um, it was just simple like, yeah. the, from original photo. So let's see. I was thinking about it earlier when I'm trying to replace the leg. I was yeah. using selection to it. You're like, wait, what are you doing? Jennifer Phil, so I can do it. I was like, oh. I wants to do it out there because of the depth of field of the image, mm -hmm. I think, which honestly is kind of cool. So let me just find a different image. Let's come over here. Let's here's a here's another dog. I will bring a dog back. We'll bring a dog, dog back so we don't have to be without a dog. Um, and we will let's throw a puddle underneath him and I bet you that will work just fine. Let's go ahead and say small um, puddle in the dirt. Let's see, maybe I should spell dirt right. <laughs> maybe, that. <laughs> maybe that is a requirement for this to go well. Um, and like while you're working on that, I'm playing with this expanding, I'm still expanding stuff. It looks amazing. Okay. I oh, think. Oh, oh, sure. Ooh, yeah. So from what we just did, I just keep expanding sideways. So now it's a 16 by 9. 
or mm-hmm. fit on your uh, oh, desktop yeah, background desktop. perfectly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you like brought it over towards the yeah. towards the right there. So now it's oh my gosh, that drama. That looks amazing. Okay, I did actually I end up getting a puddle, like, by the way. Yeah. Oh, you got oh, your puddle. Yeah, we got a puddle. <laughs> oh, we can do this. Yes, I didn't got, know that. We got both of them. <laughs> okay, so we've got our we've got a puddle here, and so this is what I was talking about as far as like looking and seeing what is available there. I'm gonna move my properties panel mm-hmm. over here just so that I can see. So I'm selected on this um, uh, generated layer here. Uh, and what I see is that you can come in on that layer and I can see small puddle in the dirt. And I can see all of the different variations that I have available to myself, which that one actually looks pretty cool. It kind of put like a rock there. That looks like a pretty good puddle. But if I wanted to change this to something else, I could also do, um, let's just say small puddle instead of small puddle in uh, in the dirt, just so that we have you know, a generation that is using a different um, prompt. So um, cool. And what you'll see is I will still have these variations, and then I will have the variations of the new thing that I generated. And as I select through those different variations, it'll change the prompt here so I can see what it was mm-hmm. that I that I typed in in order to get those variations. Yeah. So there's so there's you know more. Here we go, wow. and you can see them. So there's prompts, and then it uh, it shows Wait. the prompt here. But then if I mm-hmm. come down here to these previous ones. You see the, the prompt changes, and I can go back That's and be it. like, well, what did I put in that made it look so good when it yeah. did it this way? Well, I added a little more context, and you I can, can see that. You can remove the potto, yeah. you can add a potto, you can have whatever you want, you know? Which it's I so feel fun. like is really yeah. helpful to um, figure out, like, oh, what did I say that was, like, enough context, enough <laughs> detail, and everything to really go for what I was looking for. Um, but that's just a, a, a quick tip for all of you folks who are starting to make your way through um, using the feature mm-hmm. uh, in these first days. So, um, shall we come back to the drama screen? Yeah, <laughs> the I'm drama. Sure feel like, uh, this is pretty good. I'm like really impressed by the results. So I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow. Like, it, it's like imagine your photographer, or just if you like take photos, right? Mm-hmm. You, you go mm-hmm. somewhere and then sometimes you look at it just like, oh, I want to add just a little bit, make it wider, but yeah. now you can do this. And it, for me, this is like very, very useful tool. Mm-hmm. You know? Just like, wow, like, I can just keep expanding my imagination, you know, just to make it like super huge and just come back to, when you come back to original where we started, you know, just like, oh yeah, I'll just turn layers off one by one, right? So we added the side, we added the sky, yeah, all the, different the blending, things. and then, you know, well, I flattened the layer so you can't really see but the original But it was just one. like a really, really super wide landscape just of oh, kind yeah. of a little bit of sky. Okay, I have Do the... we have it? Yeah, yeah, sure. So library. that's what we started with. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still getting used to library. So yeah, this is like before and then after, right, mm-hmm. to all that. You can kind of see. That's crazy. That's it's amazing. Like right here. Right like, there. Whoop. Um, <laughs> And then now all of a sudden it is like another realm, really, yeah. um, which could be really cool uh, to play with, yeah. like. And for you me, know. like last week, I talked about like how I use Firefly to like create mm-hmm. storyboard and mm-hmm. mood board. But now with this, right, you can just like keep going. And then if you want to go back and make sure like everything's like super sharp and detail, you know, you can work on it like way easier mm-hmm. than compared to like um, before the update. Just like oh wow, like where I'm gonna find this perfect red sunset that like, lined yeah. up with blending with the stars and galaxies. It's mm-hmm. really difficult, you know. So, yeah. But you can just like, you know, I feel like too, because the times that I have uh, composited, like sitting there and like trying to type in the perfect thing to find a f- uh, the perfect stock photo, mm-hmm. like hoping it's what you see in your head. Yeah, right? like, exactly. Like, does this image, a stock image of this sort of thing even exist? Can I even like bring my vision to life? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and now if you can write it out, well enough, you can you can do it. So I'm loving these sand dunes. I'm excited to see what we kind of come up with here. So I've been trying to, you know that scene from the, was it Mad Max with like giant oh, yeah. sandstone? So I've been oh, always yeah. like trying to figure out like, hey, like I want a photo of that, right? But it's really hard to find a, a stock image of the sand, mm-hmm. the sandstorm. Like a sandstorm yeah. of like, or, or um, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Scene you're so talking about. I, I guess it's like pretty dangerous to capture it, <laughs> yeah. so you don't see people. So you don't there. see a lot of images so, of up close and personal. I'm gonna try to see if this storm. works. I have no idea. So I, I didn't try this. So hopefully it'll give me like a really cool result. If it does, that means I can go home today and now I get to make some really really cool concept art based on that. You know? Oh, whoa! Wow. Okay. All that right. That looks about right. Okay. Then maybe okay. That, <laughs> that looks like a. 
interesting. Like, it looks like uh, yeah. uh, almost like a, a cobra coming up out of I the know. sand or something. But that's cool. Oh, wow. You know, that looks actually super, like, they super, super cool. They added the green into that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, um, right. We've got uh, Nate uh, asking, when exactly does this shift Photoshop? If you uh, are already a s subscribed, uh, you already have a Creative Cloud subscription and um, you have the uh, Photoshop already, you just have to update it. All you need is an update. Mm -hmm. um, you can subscribe, uh, grab a Creative Cloud subscription and use it today. If you do not, you can also check out these features if you download a free trial of Photoshop as well. Um, so yeah. It it is, it, is, it is ready to rock right now, my friend, um, if you would like to uh, check it out. Paul has a question, but I'm not sure, because I, I don't really Will you be able to font? add yeah. a font to Firefly um, on the web and in Photoshop? Um, if you can clarify exactly, um, are you wondering if like the fonts from Firefly will be available in uh like that feature will be available in in Photoshop, or um, let me know. From my understanding, is like you generate on Firefly, and then you can use that to save in. Yeah, in yeah, because and then yeah. we can actually pull that up real quick. Oh, look at um, that! We can add a, to... a thunder. Oh, that's so, amazing! So at first I put lighting, but it gave me like a, a road light on the street. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you kind of have to figure out like how to communicate Wait, it gave with you, the like, AI. A street light? It gave me a street light. <laughs> so in okay. a way, you have to kind of be like kind of specific. But not too specific, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like talking to a, a young mind, right? Mm -hmm. The AI is trying to understand you. You're teaching you. So yeah. then I type thunder lighting. You know, mm -hmm. It's like okay, that's easier to to make that. So you yeah. definitely have to be pretty intentional yeah. um, about. Uh, and when I select where to uh, put it, mm -hmm. I put it. I make sure I select the ground and then the the storm because that's like in, in lighting photography that I saw. It's like starting from the top and then end it, right? Maybe mm -hmm. not all the way to the end. But I just want to make sure like the result will like come out great. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, from the fonts available in Creative Cloud, you know, I'm not sure exactly um, if there are going to be changes to the fonts and if those will be available in other places as far as it's um, uh, how it's working with. Adobe Firefly, but um, a really great place to get all those informa that information or to talk to somebody who would have an answer um, on the spot for you about those things, about anything that's coming up, um, is uh, by joining the Discord for Firefly. Um, they always have really fabulous folks in there who are very knowledgeable about everything that is upcoming um, and things that you uh, maybe can expect to see. Uh, and if those things are not coming, if you're looking for something that um, is not in the works currently, it's also a great place to make some suggestions and talk to the people who um, work towards the the future of the um, of the service. So definitely join the Discord, mm -hmm. um, I would say, if you have any specific questions about that. Um, but for those of you who are maybe popping in and you are unfamiliar um, with the fonts and all that kind of stuff, um, you can head over to firefly.adobe.com and check out the text effects uh, where you can create pretty cool text prompts and things. Um, and you can also check out mm -hmm. Generative Fill on the web. Uh, I have a quick question. What are yeah. those ship called? Like kind of pirate ship? What, what are those called? Sail like ship? sales. Yeah, ship sales. sails. Sh ship oh, sails? are you doing how like do you, a like a like I don't know how do you spell it? Ship. Ship. Uh, S A I L S. S A I L. Ship like sails. Yeah. Ship sails. Is that uh, sail ship? ship yeah, sail? ship sail. Okay. I feel I feel like because I type in ship, it gave me like a, yeah. a different kind of ship, and I was like, okay, so I know that will work. But you I could just say need to pirate out. ship with sails. Yeah, I wasn't sure like if I type pirate ship was <laughs> pirate. I was like, I, I want to make sure, you know. But because like they're sampling all the image source from uh, Adobe Stock. Oh, there you right? go. Oh yeah. yeah, perfect. That's what I was looking for. This. Da -da -da. Oh great. Oh, like that. Perfect. Oh, you I know? love it. I love it. Yeah, oh, that's cute. That works. Da, da, da. That's cool, yeah. So I have a little bit of minutes left. Uh -huh. I guess I want to try to show that um, if I put some of my work into. Yes. I want to see, like, you know, like, I, I'm always curious as I hate, what would my work look like mm -hmm. if I can, like, 
like spending like crazy, you know. Yeah, Paul says so. sand yacht. <laughs> it is kind of a sand yacht. It's a vintage sand, sand yacht. yacht. Yeah. So this photo I took in uh, Redwood National Park. It's about five hours drive mm -hmm. from here, you know. So mm -hmm. that's my friend. And I added the jellyfish and I turned it to a winter scene. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to choose this 16 by 9 and then expanded it. Do, 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 do. So yeah, if you guys are not familiar with my artwork, this is the type of work I make. So it's like, you know, fantasy, dream, mm -hmm. fun stuff, and you know, just like, kind of wanted you to look at it, just relax, yeah. right? And this just, must like, be fun. like really great from your own perspective of like, what does the rest of my work look like? Yeah, I mean, I've been there, I know it. what it looks like, but yeah, I don't but know like, what it looks like. And, but what does it yeah. look like, you know? Like I'm expanding my yeah, imaginary yeah. world, and I'm just like, oh. It's gotta be, boom, that's awesome. That's so cool. Like, wow! It almost like because because you have like library. kind of that, um, like kind of fisheye sort of like perspective yeah, going with that one that. piece, Wait, and so it kind of continued it. Wow! Wee. Oh, that's so pretty. And it even brought some of the um, like the snow yeah. closer there, so you've got like those that's like really atmospheric. Cool. Oh, that's so cool. I like it. I'm gonna keep trying. So, oh, I, I remember I tried this one was like really fun. So this one is a little bit like mix of like <gasps> photography and uh, wow. AI, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this to see if it will give me like a cool result, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. If it is ex like expands the um, uh, the underwater. Yeah. Hopefully it works. In the scene. <laughs> I remember this like- This is kind of an abstract shot. piece though. So yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it's I, very you different, know, yeah. it, It's possible that it doesn't, but it, I bet you we could get something really cool. Because also, like the AI is trying to understand, is that a mountain or mm -hmm. is that like a lizard? Like what is that? But Oh wow, we did it. <laughs> what? I know, right? Look at that. That's gorgeous. Can we full screen these yeah. two and check these out? Oh my goodness, we'll that is full screen amazing. This one. Wow! So, oh, I can't imagine what it looks like if you try on your concept art. You do I know, like, yeah, I, I should know, do right? some of my paintings and stuff too. Um, Holy moly. By the way, we have about five minutes left, so if anybody has any um, other questions or anything um, that they would like to share, definitely let us know. Um, this is about the last uh, few minutes here before we um, switch over to, because we've got, we've had like back to back to back. Back to back uh, to back, yeah. Uh, creative uh, things happening here She's today. So do don't go anywhere, stay tuned, because we do have more segments coming up after this, um, but it will be the end for Ted and for I. Me, yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah, like this one I've been like, I made this in like square, you know. So I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. like I want to look like, uh, make it longer, like a so I can. Super long. I it'll fitting in like it Instagram. Would add, Maybe mm, I'll make it longer. I don't know. I wonder if it would, if you made it longer, if it would add more animal. Probably not. <laughs> like clouds, because we, we were try. trying to do that. Earlier. We're trying to do that. I wonder if it will. Watch. This is how you figure it out. But I wanna, <laughs> do I have to simple it then? No, you don't have to. I'm not trying to set, including the fish in the simple just to see. If it yeah. generate anything, you know? yeah, you could do whatever. Because I know if I don't do it, and, and well, I actually still do it, but I'm just curious like, if I purposely like experiment. That's it, you, know? you know, that's what we're yeah. here. Experiment. To do, that's how I like... figure out like, oh, when you put two different photo mm -hmm. back to back, you can actually merge in the middle. That's how you figure. Yeah, give you like a wild result, but which I had not seen anybody did, attempt did, 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 yet. And oh, I took it away. It okay, did maybe take it like away. Wait, but honestly, yeah. if it was like, you know, a landscape and then it had like the two fish there in the center, that mm -hmm. would still be pretty well balanced. So I'm I gonna feel like it would work. This. That's right. just, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm gonna clear this, expand in that, and then maybe put this onto this side. I'm not trying to merge them together, see if it works. Let's do it. If not, you know, this is how we're gonna end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have about two and a half minutes left before oh, we I do, do have to take off. Really so, slow. so no, <laughs> no, no. Um, we are gonna get actually um, some of your uh, uh, links to the chat, so everybody can check out yeah. your work after this. You definitely would not regret checking out Ted's amazing portfolio. It is a fabulous, fantastical, magical place to be. Um, and uh, we've got more uh, awesome stuff coming up next, too. Yeah. But this is where 
Ooh. Kind of, kind of it, not. But it's still like you can see how you could take two that maybe the subject matter or the yeah. genre was a little closer related. And oh, because like I selected them. person by accident. Here, I'm going to go a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. I was like, why is it messing the color? But yeah. So yeah, it does like expand in that world. So mm -hmm. like in my head, like when I create all these pieces, they're like individual different world. Mm -hmm. Then I've been like wondering like, can I stitch them can all in together as like a giant universe? Mm -hmm. So this is like where I'm like starting experiment. Like, hey, this that looks really cool. That looks amazing. So it's like the cloud fading into the into the, the mountains. Yeah. So it's like kind of give you that. I love. This is a little bit scary, real, you know, like. Yeah, actually, <laughs> honestly, I love I Whoa. love just having the lake. Like it expands, expands there, so it's like there's a lake, and yeah. that wolf is like guarding the mountains, you know, kind that's of scary looking good. down. Actually, it is really cool. <laughs> Reminds me of like Princess Mononoke. I love Princess like, Mononoke. That's my favorite. That's, that's my favorite I Studio know. Ghibli movie. <laughs> Wait, this is really cool because like I could just go in and fix all the detail and then make yeah. actual bigger like bigger piece. For it. Yeah, I want to <sighs> see. I want to see murals from Ted. Is what I want to see. <laughs> murals from pressure, Ted. Precious real. Um, uh, let's see, um, a lot of people who are just like super excited, wow, 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 um, talking about uh, some of the limitations of it. Honestly, I would say jump in here and see what oh. you can do, see how far you can push yeah. this. We do have to take off though, we are about out of time here, oh. <laughs> um, but it has been absolutely fabulous hanging out with you, Ted. Know, it was very so good, good to see you, you again. Yeah. I know, we haven't uh, been able to see each other in several years now. I know, years, right, so. yeah. But um, thank you all so much for joining us. Like I said, please stay tuned because because we have more uh, creative content coming up next. Um, definitely give Ted a follow um, so you can check out all of his work. Uh, we will get some links in chat so you can check out these features for yourself, and we will yeah. see you another time. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you, Ted. <laughs>
Hello everyone, I'm Arabella. I'm Andrew. And we are here for another stream, another day long whole situation where we're going over Adobe Firefly, yes. uh, you know, generative AI and Photoshop. So please say hi in the chat. I know we've, we've had a long day of just <laughs> all sorts of things. So we're very excited. Yes. But um, I would love to just kind of get right in. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. And also <laughs> we slayed that intro. Like the timing was perfect and everything. <laughs> okay. Didn't rehearse. We're all natural here. Um, all natural. So, if you want to join us, we would love to have you create and design with us in the Photoshop beta. Now, there are a bunch of things that came out today. I'm going to show you how to download and update your apps. Um, if you have been joining us all day, thanks for watching. This is great. If you're just joining us, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to download real quick, and then we're going to talk about some of the new stuff in Photoshop. So. The very first thing that you need to do, let's go ahead and pop over to my screen. You need to open the Creative Cloud desktop app. And in here you can see all of the apps. And not only can you see the apps that you need to update, you can actually see all the apps that are available to you. Yes. Um, this is really nice. There have been times that I've scrolled down here and I was like, oh, <laughs> like, look oh. at me. Like, what is character animator? I haven't <laughs> used that one. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that may be available to you that you don't know about. Uh, so go check that out. But the place that you want to look is right here. So you want to see installed, and then it will say that you need an update. Or you can go to updates right here. And if there is an update, make sure you update. So there was a general release for Photoshop. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the different things that are in different places. Yes. So general release in Photoshop, which is what they'll see right here on this screen. What new tools did we get? So in general Photoshop, we got a a um, good amount of uh, tools, including remove tool. Yes. We've got, um, you know, the contextual taskbar, yes. and we have live gradients, which I am personally okay. very excited about. The <laughs> gradients, and like I know everyone's talking about generative fill. Yes. Great, love it. <laughs> the gradients are so exciting because it just like it's like one of those Instagram videos uh, or like on TikTok when you see this satisfying. Yes. Like it yes. is so satisfying to watch. So well, it's nice to just be able to like get moving and just see how everything interacts, right? Yes. And there. I feel like all of the updates feel more tactile, which is great that like it feels like it's tactile to be able to like work with Photoshop. So you can download here if you have an update. A lot of people in chat uh, have been saying all day that they don't see the updates. And that's because if you don't see it, click on check for <laughs> updates. Right, I am here That's with key. Adobe. I like do this. I did not have the updates this morning, so I needed to click on check for updates. Uh, Cameo by Paco, by the way. That's Paco, our studio <laughs> manager. Um, so if you need to check for Thank updates, you. go ahead and check. And if you want to get the beta, you can click on beta apps right here. There's a huge banner. Uh, you can download the Photoshop beta and get started. Uh, so chat. If you have questions for us, go ahead put them in chat. Um, we are going to hop in and get started. I'm going to show you some stuff on my screen, because for those of you that are maybe waiting for the beta, um, I believe that it is a rollout. So some of you may not have access yet, it may be coming later today, um, but it is rolling. Things are rolling along. So what I'm going to show you here is everyone now has access to yes. Firefly, which is pretty cool. Which is so exciting. Yes. Ugh. Have you played around and what is your favorite thing? Oh my gosh. Uh, text to image, but of course generative fill yes. more recently, but so, so exciting. Um, uh, I've also gotten a little bit of it to the text effects as well. Text I, I, have you used any of the generative recolor? I have not because okay. that's not like my usual thing. I'm yes. usually like, you know, creating with images, but like that's a really great tool, I think, for designers. Yeah. So, so if you're a brand identity designer or you work at all in vectors, um, I actually used this last night on a project. I was working on a project and I like finished all the branding and I was like, I hate these colors. And so I put it into generative recolor and was like <laughs> forest sunset and it gave me the most gorgeous color palette. So you Amazing. can use that, upload an SVG and that's all you need to do. So you play around with these um, and uh, we're today going to be looking at generative fill and text to image. So I'll be working with text to image and generative fill. Arabella is going to be working uh, in the Photoshop beta. And I don't think we did like a proper intro. Erbo, what do you do? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? Thank you for the introduction. Um, <laughs> one half of Weekend Creative, I you know co-own a product photography agency. We do all kinds of creative imagery um, for other brands and businesses. So that's what today's stream is going to be about, where I'm going to yes. be showing you a little bit of how I use these new tools that have come out um, in our workflow, which might be a little bit different from what we've seen earlier in the day, which is kind of more compositing, more fun stuff. But it's all it's all. Uh, Amazing. It's yes, I'm excited. It's very like aesthetic. I feel like 
this dream is so calming because your work is so like <laughs> just vibey. Like it makes me want to have a charcuterie you. board. Oh. We, need, we need some cheeses on this desk stat. Um, Amazing. All right, so let's hop in and get started over in what we're going to be creating today. Uh, so what is our plan for what's happening with the weekend creative smash up and general Yes, film? so I have Photoshop beta in already here uh, up and oh, running. Oh, white mode. I Sorry, know, I jump scare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do have white mode. I prefer it. I don't okay. know. No, that's I fine. I don't know why. That's fine. Someone called it straight jacket. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, all right. So, you know, it's just the vibes. But um, so, yeah, we're just going to be going over kind of like what I would use some of these tools. So uh, I have some product that I wanted to bring up here. Um, so first of all, I have this awesome, um, you know, floating product uh, image here that it's going to bring up in just a second. Uh, get that thing going. And you have a studio in the Bay Area here yes. where you do all of your photography, yes. all the setups, everything. Oh, exactly. my goodness. Okay, so this is kind of like what I would normally have, right? Okay. So this kind of like fun project. But um, I want to show you guys how I use some of these tools that have, you know, that are that are out now. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and hide these tools, right? So in this case, you know, I'm going to be kind of compositing all of these different shots of florals, right? So we've got, okay. um, I always like to use the, the object selection tool, but because we have now the contextual taskbar, it's kind of great. I can either select subject or remove background. So it's kind of an easy way oh, yes. to kind of get to what I need, which is great. And so um, the contextual ta taskbar, especially for people like you that do work that is repetitive. Yes. Very it's, repetitive. It's, it literally is like your bestie saying, hey, yes. you're trying to do this, let me just help you. And it you. comes up right here too, right? Where you're like about to, like where you need to be working versus kind of like having to either remember a shortcut key or like go and find the right tool. So yes. this is a great option. Um, obviously there's other ways to use this too. Like even for text, you'll notice that this kind of pops up right here, yep. which is great, love it. Uh, but in this case, I usually use it for selecting, right? So I'm, I usually go for the object selection tool and I can just select that. But now I can literally just add the mask and now it's right there. And so it's yes. pretty awesome. I get to then move it around and make those, you know, uh, adjustments here. So, so I my, can kind of build that out. My process is always when I'm pulling out objects, I always make the selection and then I contract it by one pixel to get rid of any rough edge and then I yes. mask it. Yes. And you can do all of that in the contextual toolbar. When you all make a selection, that. it's like, oh, would you like to expand, contract, yes. so adjustment that's layer? another reason to like love this little bar right here. So then again, like I can do, I usually like to do select and mask to yes. kind of, um, you know, up my radius here and for those edges here. This is I how we you know you're a pro. I get stressed it. when I get in this mode. <laughs> um, and I always like to use the refine edge brush tool. Obviously this is a purple like, you know, product, so it might be a little a little wonky, but that's okay. It usually does a pretty good job. When so you're shooting this, like are that. you putting it just like on a string and then shooting I it on the string? I am putting it on a string and just shooting it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then I hit okay, again, add a layer mask, and now I've got that item right there. So awesome, and I can kind of just play around with the placement, right? So that's kind of like an easy way to use the contextual uh, taskbar, right? Yeah, and just speed up your workflow. Speeds like, up my workflow, it's great. No creative wants to do the ditch digging. That's what no. I always think is that it's like, you're like, oh, we're doing plumbing and I have to go like dig a 90 yard ditch in the backyard. <laughs> like I just wanna, I like, I have the plan for the bathroom. Yes. Why do I have to do the work? Yes, is now yes. <laughs> the contextual toolbar, a lot of the tools that are coming out today help you get rid of all that busy work. You can just yes. really jump in and <laughs> let your mind run free. Exactly. I feel like you, Andrew, you're so good at like giving these analogies and stories <laughs> whenever you're doing your streams. It's amazing. So anyway, I, you know, let's say I've already finished the work of doing all of this. Um, now, maybe, maybe just the lavender is a little bit boring for me. So maybe I want to go in with the live gradient, a gradient Ooh, yes. here. So in this case, um, you know, I can just head on over to the, the gradient tool. And of course, if you are like, I'm not ready for that yet, I can always go back to the classic gradient. You can find oh, it there. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, okay. you can. But but why would you? I mean, wow. <laughs> it very much is like, would you like to choose would like, you like to choose? the hot new one or do you yeah. want to hang out with your ex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, yes. Okay. We love that. Thank, thanks for giving us options, yes, Photoshop. Of course. Of course. So no, I'm not Photoshop, but you know. You can be Photoshop. I'm, I can be Photoshop. Um, so I'm just going to look through and just kind of pick a fun little uh, situation here. And then I can just start to add a gradient here. And of course, I'm putting this below all my 
you know, yes. products and, and, and flowers and everything. But this is like such a good tool to be able to see everything versus having to re-click and redraw the gradient. And it's, oh, it's amazing. And, and on I, top of that, you can add in colors. Yes, right as many here. as you want. Yeah. So, oh, okay, that was like wild. <laughs> A little, a little much there. I also feel like there are more, and I don't, this isn't like a feature, don't quote me on it. I feel like there's more presets that are available. Actually, I think so when too. When you click on that, it just like yeah, feels like it's more. It feels more. like there's more. But again, and I can play around with all of these things. What I, and someone can correct me on this in the chat maybe, or unless you know this, but there's also a new, me like different methods that you can apply. Yes. Um, I don't know the, like the specific, uh, you know, details between each method, but um, they do provide a different kind of result. Um, yes. Obviously in some some of the gradients that are a little bit more, uh, you can see the colors a little bit more Yes, clearly. playing around with them will uh, help with banding, I think. Banding, It'll help with banding right. a little bit uh, in between. So you can play around with those if you're not seeing the results that you want. Play around with some of those different methods and see if it helps with any of the banding lines if you see anything in there. Yeah, so this is like super fun. I just love kind of like playing around and now that became like so much more of a fun image, right? Yeah. Like with these like fun gradients. And the and cool thing is you don't have to drag out the gradient again and again. Like we want to move it. You can just move you can it. Just you can move twist it. it. You can slide it. You can and bop it. And one of the it. things too is that when you're literally <laughs> bop it. <laughs> oh, I okay. knew this stream would be fun with Andrew, you yeah, guys. Yeah, oh my there. gosh. Okay. Um, but again, like you have so much customization too. Like you can like really bring in the like you know, the softness or like between the colors here. So that's really nice. So you can get real, real detailed here. Um, so yeah, that's a really good uh, use case for, um, you know, fun little gradient. Uh, so yeah, so let's, uh, you know, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to just the regular purple here. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna do a kind of copy merged here because I'm gonna show you something else that's really fun. And if you're looking to do that, Control Shift Option thank E you. is the hotkey if you wanna make thank you, a thank you. new layer. Uh, without destructing what is under it, it will make yes. it a layer on top. Yes. So now here's the f the fun part, right? So all of these flowers, <laughs> Ellie and I uh, shot, they're all fake, <laughs> and maybe maybe I'm over the fake the fake flowers. Okay. So let's say that we want to just kind of select one of these little guys, and this is supposed to be a lavender sprig, but it kind of looks a little fakey, fakey. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but now we've got the generative fill, which is so exciting, and you know I can just click on that. Maybe I want to say. Uh, uh, lavender uh, or sprig of lavender floating. A and sprig. That, yeah, you know, just like a little. Yeah, yeah like a sprig. Like a yeah. Sprig. So now I get to kind of wait Render. for the magic to this, happen. I do feel like we need some kind of, like, I want to have a TikTok plugin <laughs> that as this starts going, it just pulls up a TikTok right above it. Yes. So you can watch like one or two TikToks as it's rendering yeah, right? and then it comes out then, and it's like, you know, Cause I, you know what it feels like? It feels like a little bit like, like dial up, you know, where you just kind of have to wait yeah, for yeah. like, yep. you know, but you know, it's like, a few seconds feels like a long time when we're so used to like yes. very instant. And it is using uh, technology in the cloud, and so yes. you do have to have internet connection to use generative fill. I don't yes. think we've talked about that at all oh, today. Okay, yeah. You do have to have internet connection to use generative fill. Uh, so if you're working on the go, if you're going on a flight or something, uh, maybe work in the general release of Photoshop instead of working in the beta, uh, because you do need that connection. Yes. yes. All right. So we have a so sprig. So we got here. a little sprig, and there's a few options. Okay, I love that one. Yes. That's pretty great. But I can keep going. Right, and so one of the things that, and as I was playing around with generative fill, is that a lot of our work has a very like graphical element to it. Yeah. So sometimes, like the generative fill will want to, um, you know, kind of add in something that's graphical versus like photorealistic. So sometimes yes. I'll, I'll add in a prompt where I'm like photorealistic, and maybe it might change yep. the way that it looks. So that's another option there. Photorealistic is one of the things that I always add if I want a photo to just make sure. And you can do like high detail and that stuff. And yes, Speedy and Chad is saying, I've never seen someone use Photoshop in light mode. I agree. <laughs> I'm there with you. Um, okay, you know what it is? It's it's the when it's the dark. You know, sometimes your reflection shows up a little bit more. Yes, that's fair. So okay, you know. so we do have a better uh, sprig here, looking yeah, a little more photorealistic. Yeah, a little bit more photorealistic. I like that one ooh, too. Ooh, I do that too. That looks really pretty. Ooh, okay. Which one are we? I mean, we could keep going. Like, yeah, just I so like the middle one. I like the middle one too. And that, like, even the the way that it, um, you know, the the flow of it is kind of like very similar to how how. Um, 
the old one was. Yep. And so if you're doing generative fill and you're doing something like this, right, and we're looking at the contrast between what we had and what is here, right, and you're thinking like, oh, maybe it needs to be like a little lighter, a little more pastel. You have the power of you Photoshop power. in your hand, so you can do, you can fix yes. those little details as long as you have the idea of what you're looking for. You can use Photoshop to fix those details and really like bring it to life. Yes, exactly. So you know, just as another example, here we take kind of this other little uh, white flower here. And again, we can just add in a prompt for maybe like a white uh, wildflower floating, something like that. And again, it's like, I feel like the more descriptive you can be, the more, you know, the more it's gonna try and generate something closer yes. to. And I love the idea that we're selecting something and giving it information to go off of like a reference. Yes. And then generating. Ooh, and, ooh okay. Okay, okay, Photoshop. A little bunch of flowers. Okay. Oh, this is that's cute. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at us. <laughs> this is, I know, right? I'm, I need this in like every morning for my alarm. Just yeah. like, that's cute. Oh that's my gosh. Cute. And you're like, oh. It's every <laughs> morning when I get ready. <laughs> I love it. So, and then again, you know, I just love this. I love this bar. It's like so easy to just like do everything right, right then and there. Yes. But that's just an example of just how amazing, you know, the generative fill can be and working with kind of like within Photoshop. So uh, with the, within the Photoshop beta, but anyway, so that's, you know, that's an example here. So another example of how I would normally, oh, too big to export. That's okay. Okay. So we that's also how you know it's have, getting good. I know, that's how you know it's getting good. Um, so we have a, this kind of image here. So a lot of the times when we're shooting product, right, especially for balancing shots or things, there's just gonna be a lot of stuff. Well, like, there's a of, lot of things happening. There's a lot of things happening, right? So I we have, we have this, right? This is, these are C-stands that are kind of like helping uh, prop up our products, right? So a good use case for that remove tool is. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. So I know, and watch this. This I thought this would be a good example because there is like a crazy pattern behind. Yes. So how does it work when there's like stuff going on behind, right? So if we go over to the remove tool, and I, I love that there's kind of like this brush situation, and it's like a hot pink, which I kind of like Yes, love. which I feel like I've never seen in photo. It's I've always never red. I've seen that, yeah. And I've never seen this hot pink. So remove tool is a little bit different from generative fill. Yes. Remove tool is going to take the context of what's around it and remove that object. Yes. Uh, now, the remove tool, Word of warning, is destructive. It is destructive. Yes. yes. So if you're working in a non-destructive workflow, make a copy maybe, make a, copy. Make a mask, yes. uh, because it is destructive where generative fill will make a new layer for you. Exactly. So be careful. Be, be careful. careful. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. All right, so let's just take care of that and see if it if it did what I want it to do. Bye. And it takes a, little, a few little seconds, but you know, bye. <laughs> And there's a, we're seeing a lot of progress bars today, and that's yeah. because it is really pulling like all the context around. Okay, yes. so here's my take, which I think is uh, a fun thing to do, yes. is to do the remove tool, but then also do generative fill over the same area and see which and see one removes which it better. One. Okay, it's okay. a contest. Chat, cool. what do you think? Do you think it'll yes. be the remove tool, or do you think it'll be generative fill? Yes, tell us. Because I feel like the, I've tested this before and the remove tool did a good job one time. I think it also depends on the size of your brush. Like yep. everything everything matters, right? So um, so let's, let's try this out. I'm just gonna grab this whole little section here and I'm gonna keep it pretty tight, but just enough around so that just it has little, context. Yep. Yeah, you know? And then, so to just remove something, generative fill, and then just no click prompt. generate. No prompt. No prompt. Zero, and it's Zero. gonna take the context of the photo. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually very interested to see with a pattern like this, how it does yes. uh, to pull everything through. And Chat. of course, this is a pattern that I'm gonna fix and you know, make better and just kind of smooth out. But, oh, see, nothing. Nothing? Nothing, but let's see. Maybe I need to make my my selection a little bit bigger. Is that crazy? So I'm interested so in yeah. Weird. That is so crazy. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay. So are there just... any layers on below it that are turned on that maybe it's referencing? Oh, maybe. Like maybe turn well, off. Well, no, because this is a, a copy merge layer. <gasps> Magic. Okay. I know. Interesting. Uh, chat is saying generative fill, and I it looks like it fill wasn't was gonna generative do it, fill. But maybe. Maybe not. Maybe if we get more of the area, let's Maybe if try we that. get more of the area, let's try that. And again, if you're watching Adobe Live and you're like, oh, they should have this figured out, we're learning with you. That's the fun of the Gen AI stuff. That's I mean, this in is here. like the workflow, right? Like yes. sometimes it's chaotic, sometimes it doesn't go the way you planned. Yes. And, and that's okay. So let's try that one more time and see 
See what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and actually, I probably should turn off that bottom we layer. We probably should turn off the bottom layer, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Good luck, maybe, everyone. Maybe it'll do it. But honestly, I think the remove tool does such a good job, like, of even... Oh, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay. we have a definitive winner on that one. All right, one. all right. That oh looks my gosh. really good. Oh my goodness, you guys. Uh, yeah, that's So like, this good. is the thing that's gonna make my job easier as a creative product photographer, where like, we've got a lot of stuff going on, right? Yep. So anyway, that's a good example there. Let me pull up another one that I thought would be good. Okay, I'm gonna, don't show again. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. We get it. Okay, here's and a good one. And thank you, Paul, helping us out for the top layer. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we made it there eventually together. I'm gonna not save this because I already have it saved. So okay, so here's an example of you know a product shot, and this is like the final shot, right? Like it took me so long to do everything, right? Oh my goodness, like just the masking floor, and the clean, everything. So I kind of want to show you just how amazing the generative fill is as well, because you know as even just a starting point, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and we have someone in chat saying, I love the fact that you guys are experimenting just like us. Yeah. Makes it better, in my opinion. Yes. And if you like experimenting and seeing workflows from creatives all around the world, you can subscribe right here to Adobe Live. Uh, way up above me, you can see the title of this video. Click on the title. It will take you to Adobe Live. You can subscribe. Uh, you may be able to like hover over if you're on YouTube. Just click there. Yes, there it is. I wasn't sure if we could put it up, but we did. <laughs> Studio managers on it. Uh, Amazing. Subscribe. We have content here um, all week for you just like this to help you learn workflows and see creatives like Arabella and I stumble over our Just, process. You know, figure until it we all get out. Yeah. I mean, all of this technology is super new, so I feel like it's part of the process, right? Of yep. just kind of testing it out and seeing how it works for you. Okay, there's a big selection we just made. There is a big selection here. And bold move. Bold move. And I could also, you know, do the thing that we've seen before with other compositors that like kind of grab the other section too, but I kind of like to work in sides because it, yes. the output is a lot better. That's what we heard from Paul Traney earlier yes. today. Paul was saying us, if you do, if you need to do like both sides of this image and you're using generative fill, you do either side separately and it will give you a better result than try to do them together. So yes, yes. So let's see, I'm so excited for this one. see how it goes. And okay. again, this is something like if I'm estimating how many clicks it would have taken to take this image to the other one, like mm -hmm. hundreds. We're masking, we're extending, yes. we're overlaying, we're blending, and now with Everything. generative fill, literally two, three clicks because we got the selection, we got generative fill. You guys, I, I'm not gonna get our early ah! arthritis. <laughs> Dude, for, Isn't that insane? For product photographers, this is so helpful this and it's going to save you so, so much time. so helpful. Like, oh my gosh. I and can't it, believe it. And on top of that, it gave us like options. I don't know yes. what's going on here, but you know, <laughs> good enough for me, honestly. Yeah. And like, that's you can pick which amazing. one is easy enough to yeah. mask out or finish out. 100%. That, that and then I can get to like, you know, using the remove tool here and it's like, you know, or, or gender to fill. Who knows? Magic. I mean, that seems to be the... The, the, the one winner, that's yeah. The winner. And so again, it's not something that is going to re replace whatever flow. No, no, no. It no. is for a product photographer. This is saving you like so hours time. of time. So much time. Right? That you can kick so stuff out time. way faster and you can get straight to the creative part. Yes, right? It's exactly. not about like who wants to spend creative time masking out cardboard and C clamps? Like, yeah, exactly. Actually getting to the fun. Like, oh, <laughs> it's so like, good. Holy grail. You know, this so is like good. insane. Like, I love how there's also this like variation too. Like, yes. You know, but that's like such a good starting point, right? And it, and then I can just kind of go into my flow, and then you know, and save so much time, really. Man. So, all right, let's let's show another example. Um, so this here's is such one a that I like case, really love. Product um, design. Yes, yes, right? Because I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen, um, you know, even like. <laughs> That's Ellie's hand, by the way. My At some point, I need to be a hand model. I've always <laughs> wanted to be a hand model, so you let me know when you need uh, you need I a good will, hand model. I will. <laughs> um, I forgot it was what I was saying, but here we go. We're just gonna go right in. So here is a section, right? Normally, this image is actually one that we would probably crop. We did photograph it so that it was gonna be more of like a four by five situation. Okay. But maybe we don't, right? And maybe we're like, all right, let's 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 test this out. Let's just see what happens, you know? Oh, interesting. So just then like, I'm like, maybe I want to keep the like, you know, the two by three situation and, and let generative fill kind of help me out with 
having that. And now this image can be used as a banner or something that's like more of like on a website, right? More options for your clients. More which, options. Uh, if, uh, oh. 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 There wasn't a prompt. Well, there wasn't a prompt, though. Interesting. Interesting. Let's try it one more Let's time. Let's try it. Um, and what I think is good is this, uh, this allows you to be able to provide more options to clients. Yes. So if you're yes. doing like, oh, we're. Because that's often what like clients usually want from us, too, is like the variety. And it's like, oh, weird. I haven't, I've never had that happen before. No idea. I don't know, I'm gonna delete them. Yeah, we'll delete that and start over. Someone in yes. chat is asking, could you select the brush and box and generate full with dripping paint? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, like dripping paint over the box. Yes, okay, so I, we did photograph that. Yes. But, I mean, that's something that we could totally try out. Interesting. Okay, let's see, maybe I need to do less of a, maybe like something like that. I've never gotten that. Uh, also, it might depend on how big this image is. If it's a full size image oh. with like super high detail, generative fill, um, I believe not, yeah. 1080 by 1080 yes. is the pixel resolution that generative fill is using. Um, and so I think that that might that be. That could part be. Of it. I mean, it seems to be going now, so hopefully. Oh, that is so strange. Okay, well, I had tried this before and it so worked. Odd. So. I don't know. Maybe maybe it just doesn't want to be my friend right now. <laughs> Can you go and see what the image size is? Go into image yes. and then see what see, resolution we're at. See, it's all workshopping here. Let's oh, see. maybe pixels. Oh, we're massive. We're massive. Yes. So let's say we're gonna do twenty five hundred, something like that. And yes, uh, we could do those things before. You're right, but it just took longer. Um, yeah. And now you're maximizing your hourly rates if you're working hourly. <laughs> like, hey, like bump, bump those rates up because we're working faster. I know, right? Hello. Okay, so let's see what happens let's here. Let's see what happens. If it's not gonna work, that's okay. Cross your fingers, Crossing everybody. Crossing our fingers. Give it I had never gotten that before though, when there's no prompt, you know, it's like, what? Yeah, what's, I hadn't either. It's violating. Maybe it's like the, dar the dark. The <laughs> darkness. Oh, interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, All it's right. not gonna work, so. No idea. No idea, but All that's, right. you know. Let's move part on. Of it. it's on. It's in beta, so, yes. you know, we'll, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure it out later. Okay. So now. Oh, which, sorry, brings me to a good point. Yes. It is in beta, and if you're generating something and it generates an image, so let's keep going. Oh, they're right there. So you can see the thumbs up and the thumbs down and the flag um, on the contextual toolbar. So if oh, you have a right. good prompt or a bad prompt or an Poor issue. Result. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can use those to give us feedback. It is still in beta. So we're building, we're trying new things. Yep. We're trying to get information during this beta. So exactly. please use that feedback yes. as you work with it. Perfect. Good, good, good call on that. Yes. Okay. So, well, let's, we'll, we'll work on something else. So now I kind of wanted to share a little bit about, um, you know, done some like product, but maybe now I want to do some more lifestyle stuff, right? Oh, yeah, so we, we, we did a shoot for Camelback and it was more kind of lifestyle stuff, right? So this is kind of more in line of what you've seen a little bit earlier, but it works perfect for, for these kinds of situations where clients want, you know, a little bit more versatility, right? So in this case, like maybe I want this to be a banner that's going to be like more like this. And, you know, now we have him perfectly situated on that like you know sweet spot so I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna grab this blank white space here and I'm just gonna see what happens when I generate and hopefully it doesn't <laughs> let's crossing our everybody fingers. cross your fingers cross your fingers um, but yeah so this is another uh, great scenario where you would want to just extend kind of uh, and have more Ooh, there we go. That's amazing. And again, it always generates three options for you to always, start, and yeah. then you can generate more, and it will keep that on the generative layer so that you can see the history. Oh, I love it. And all these variations kind of stay within there, so you can always go back. And when you click on, as you make more, you know, as you generate more, you'll see what, like, if I'm going to start prompting something, you'll see that prompt kind of uh, with that image. So, for example, uh, I, I love all of these. These are great. I mean, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, but let's say I want to, like, maybe add, like, I don't know, a river <laughs> or something. Uh, pretty, like, broad, but maybe we can, you know, fine tune it. Let's see. I mean, well, let's just see what let's happens. See what, and that it really is the best way to work is to start with a prompt between five and eight oh. words. Okay. Whoa. Okay. They are also, oh like, gosh. dangerously in peril riding on a cliff. 
Um, Literally. <laughs> yeah, like a hundred percent, they're on the side of a cliff. Uh, but that did like that I grew up in Northern really California, near a river, and like this feels like this where I grew. This feels up. like it. Look, I've and been even here. like. Like the way that like the light, you know, you know when you photograph something and like the light just washes out sometimes, yes. like the look of it. This is like doing that like right here, which is like incredible. Um, so that's another great like scenario where you would want to like add stuff or maybe just extend. Maybe this is like going to be a banner where there's going to be text on this left hand side. Yes. So then now now you have that. Um, you know, the ability. Yes, to raise your hand that. in chat if you've ever needed more space. And so you add like a black or white gradient <laughs> that just like fills the extra space yes. going into the image. Yes, yes guilty. Yes, exactly. Uh, you don't need to do that anymore. I mean, I, yeah. And then with the live gradients, you could just see it right then and there too. That's so. true. That's true. You wouldn't, yeah, you could do both actually. You could what? do both. Forget no los dos. You could have both. Um, why Amazing. Not? So again, I have a couple more photos or a few more photos that we can like test this out on. But this one in particular, I'm very curious to see what happens um, because they're cut off here at the pants, and I kind of want to oh, see. Oh, do we want to see? Let's see what happens. All right. So <laughs> this is one of my favorite things that we've seen. Um, uh, is you, you can extend people and like it will generate their legs yes. uh, a lot of time. Uh, and someone is asking, is the beta version out? Yes, it very much is. I'll show you how to get it right after we finish this demo right So again, here. I'm just using the crop tool here to extend the canvas yes. size. Um, and you know, there we go. And now I'm gonna take my little selection tool here and just see what happens. I could also add that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in a second. Um, let's just generate and see. I feel like most of the, most of the reasons that I would use. Oh, oh no! What happened there? Oh, I don't know. Maybe let's do uh, a. Let's go to my screen. Let's maybe do like Ooh, a yes. Photoshop restart just to like give it a fresh okay. look on yours. Perfect. So I'm gonna show you all how to download because there are a lot of questions asking yes. how to download. So what you need to do is. Is the beta version out? Yup, uh, available to everyone. If you don't have the beta version, you can download it. If you can't download the beta version for some reason, uh, you can go right here, firefly.adobe.com, and you actually can use generative fill. Uh, you can use generative fill on the site as well. If we wanted to, we could upload an image here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, an image Let's see, do I have anything in here? I don't know what this is. Adobe Stock, it's a television, sounds good. So <laughs> you can play around here um, and Ooh. you can upload your image. And then from here, uh, I wanna go ahead and add in like a octopus. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of draw in. And again, I'm just using the brush. So I'm clicking and dragging around and I'm thinking about where things will go. Amazing. Right? And so I definitely want some kind of octopus arms, and I'm actually very <laughs> interested how this how is going to How this is going to work out. <laughs> uh, so we are going to generate this, and then I am just going to put in here uh, octopus. Let's do purple, a purple octopus uh, with our uh, arms out. It's going to give me arms is what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, you need to be really specific on your language when you're generating things. And this is an octopus with human arms. I apologize. <laughs> for what is about to happen because of the way that I phrased it. Oh no. <laughs> uh, let's I didn't think that they I didn't couldn't remember what it was called. Okay. Pretty good. Whoa. So we got one. All right. That's amazing. All right. So Look at that. Uh, you can generate and you can play around in this environment as well or you can work over in the Photoshop beta. Again, if you need to download it, you can go to the Creative Cloud app and then you're gonna scroll all the way down here to beta apps, and that's where you can download and start playing around with it. Uh, there is a release version that went out today that is just the regular Photoshop. I think it's 26.5. Mods can check me on that. Uh, <laughs> and then there is the beta version that went out. So they are two separate places. Uh, the regular will show up in your updates or all apps, and then the beta, you have to go to the beta area. Yes. So those are the two. Um, all right, so Perfect. let's hop back here and let's make this family a little bit I just want to point out too that the Adobe Firefly, like on the web, the generative fill is kind of like a brush-based yes. like situation, whereas like in the beta, in the Photoshop beta, it's more of like a selection. And so like, I love kind of like playing around with both of those like options, yes, too, they which do. is kind of fun. It seems like they like, give very different results or like yeah. just work differently. So yeah. if you're not getting the result you want, play around in the other one and yeah. see what you can get. See what happens. So, okay, so I extended, you know, the canvas size here and I'm gonna, I wanted to see if, you know, generative fill uh, kind of 
extended the image, right? And so it did it like kind of amazingly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that gosh. insane? And here's like other options too. Cause it always picks like like, isn't that insane? This did not That's exist. so crazy. Like, how crazy. I wonder if I even extended it further. I'm sure it would have picked, like, some shoes Let's or something. Let's see what happens. Why not? We've, like, got, why we've not? got 20 minutes. There's no reason. Yeah, uh, you know? So, uh, someone is asking, uh, can I use generated content for commercial use? It is in beta, and so it is not for commercial use. Uh, but you can Correct. post on social media. Hashtag Adobe Firefly. You can play around, create your things, tag Photoshop, uh, tag Adobe Live if you're on Instagram, or follow us on Instagram if you're not. Uh, uh, so go check it out. You can play around and post your work, but it is not for commercial use, but Correct. it is intended to be safe for commercial use. Yeah. Uh, once we're out of beta, all that stuff, patience, young Whoa. grasshoppers. Oh it gave them gosh. shoes. It gave them shoes. Uh, that is insane. Oh, look, the Uggs. Oh, the Uggs. <laughs> the Uggs. <laughs> they said, oh, it's fall? Let me give her those Uggs in the forest. Oh, my God. Wait, that, I, can, I think that one was my, this one's my favorite. This is great. Wow. And again, like, you can keep generating, right, until you get kind of, like, its result, the result that you want. But this is, like, pretty incredible. Like, that was not there, you guys. This is mind-blowing. It, like, feels... And again, like just being on the stream and watching this happen, like it feels like a like am I a dream? Like am I yes. awake right now? Like, like what is insane. going on? Insane. So it's, it's magic. It it's really, really is magic. magic. It truly is. Like I'm I'm continuously impressed with it, and it's only been what I don't know, a few days of me crazy. playing around with stuff. But yeah, so again, like there's other ways to use this, like kind of this one's kind of a little bit more of an, a complicated one where there's like a lot more or a lot you know, less to go off of, right? A little bit yep. more. Um, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and see what happens with this one. See if I extend on both sides and see what it creates. I just love that like it really does take into consideration like the, you know, it analyzes your image and then like makes decisions yes. and places things in there. But I guess I could also, gen you know, kind of generate a prompt if I wanted to. So like, oh, I don't know, give us something. Yeah, let's see if maybe we do um, a campfire, uh, like marshmallows being roasted over a campfire. Ooh, marshmallows being roasted. Did I spell that right? <laughs> uh, and a Nintendo system in chat saying, do you have any information about when it's available in Photoshop? No, is the answer. I, 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 I like just don't know. I'm not dodging any like secrets. I don't know. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. Uh, but it's here in the Photoshop beta, so you can play around with it there. Um, all right, so we're gonna generate here. I'm interested to see what this. I'm looks interested like. to see what this what this is gonna do. This is so fun. Like it, it to me, it feels like it's bringing. Like I'm old and jaded when it comes to design. <laughs> I've been doing design for a hot minute, and so this is like bringing like fun back for me. Like it's fun and yes. unexpected and like well, experimentation. It, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh. I am so like, cool. Can you believe? That's can you so believe? Cool. Okay, that was a little wonky, but it's. Oh I mean, goodness. it's still pretty cool. Whoa, I mean, even just even just the fact that it like extended that tent right there. Like, yeah. Oh, that's really good that it extended that's that really background. That's really good. So cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, Justin is saying, will it do hands and feet? It does hands and feet pretty well. Pretty well. Um, I think all generative AI has trouble with hands and yes, feet. We all know course. it. We all. That's probably why you asked the question. Uh, but it does a pretty good job with hands and feet kind of rendering things out. It does a really great job when you're working with an existing hand mm -hmm. and like putting something in the hand. It will render those fingers around the yep. object. Uh, if you missed it earlier in the stream, we created an apple being held and it rendered the fingers in front of the apple with the oh. apple with shadows and everything. Amazing. So really okay, job. I'm gonna show you guys some examples right after that does include hands and stuff. So we'll, we'll kind of get into that and see. There's a lot of hand talk happening. Because you know, yeah. sometimes they, they come out like this, <laughs> yes. but you know, whoa, okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, and I generally don't see the problem Ooh, of like, okay, this one looks really good. That looks great. That looks amazing. That is incredible. Like That's awesome. I can't even believe. Okay, do we want to do some hands? Let's do some hands. Let's do some hand stuff. All right, uh, let's so bring it up. Really, uh, again, this is in beta, and we're trying to gather information. So if yes. you get weird and wonky hands, let us know, right? We're yeah. not trying to be like, we did it. We've solved the problem of hands and feet. We're trying to improve this. So if you have a weird result, again, click on that report button. Click on that thumbs up. Click on the thumbs yes. down to let us know. 
Okay, so this is like a really old personal project that we like an early weekend creative like vintage. stuff. Vintage. Vintage. But I thought it'd be a good one to kind of show like just how the capabilities of generative fill and, and how amazing it can be to to add things, to to change things and and all of that. So again, there's hands here, so you know. We'll see. Let's see. Let's start with this one actually, because I feel like there's no hands. So I want to see what happens oh. when there is nothing. Yes. Right? And Are you just of, going to like go I'm over just this and Go oh. over this whole thing. Okay, so and we're going to change happens. the entirety of this look. And this is one of yes. the great things to do, right? In the great words of Taylor Swift, uh, <laughs> we'll never go out of style. <laughs> Uh, and you can change your outfits super easily using generative fill. Uh, so what do we want to put her in? Yeah, I mean, like, I kind of want to just test out, like, just a different kind of purple jacket. Like, okay, maybe no, just, sweet. like, yeah. purple uh, jacket. Maybe, like, a, yeah. What kind of jacket? Like a blazer? Like a bla Ooh. Yeah, like a purple blazer. Purple blazer. Okay, let's see. Let's see what it is. You know, just, uh, gonna, just roll with the punches. And there's some people that are asking questions that you can actually get really a, a lot more information that may answer some of your questions at firefly.adobe.com. Um, <laughs> you can scroll down and it will actually show you everything that is being worked on, which I don't Whoa. think that Adobe has done. Oh, Isn't my that goodness. Yes. Whoa, that hands. is actually hands. really, really good. Good hands. <laughs> That are, that's some decent hand right there. We did it. Ooh. AIF, are you happy with the hands? Those are you good guys, hands. guys, this is like insane. Those I are am great. So it. any of the little issues, again, you can go in and you can fix them and change them. Uh, yeah. This is pretty good. Isn't that insane? And it did a great job. Yeah. That's let awesome. me Let me just try a different, like a purple. Yes, and while you render, let's cut back over jacket. to my screen, um, and I'll show you all what I was talking about. There actually is uh, a lot of information about what is coming, which is really cool. So it looks like we're working on 3D to image, uh, extending images, and then as you scroll down, there's just a lot of information about personal result, text to vector, text to pattern, I love it all. sketch to image, text to template, text to brush, all kinds of things that are being worked on. And Adobe has been really great about updating this about the things that are being worked on. I think just this morning, these two got added. I didn't know about these. Uh, and I looked and they're here. So it's cool to let you know what is on the way. Um, and that way you can kind of have some expectations, some hopes, you can kind of wait. Uh, so let's see what happens here. We're generating, oh. I did a purple leather jacket. A purple leather jacket. I mean, it, it didn't do a purple one, but I mean, it did a purple top. So With I also jacket. put in another, ooh, like a purple ooh. velvet sweater. Oh my okay. gosh. The fact that it got the, I like this, she's praying. I know. <laughs> uh, I, the fact that it got the um, like velvetiness of the I velvet. I know, I know, the praying. <laughs> but like, that's just like incredible. I mean, like just just yeah. how, that you know what I mean? And it's only gonna wild. get better, right? Yeah. Like it's only gonna get better. And this is really cool too for clients to be able to show like, here is a look and then it's like, yeah. oh, we actually wanted this to be a summer campaign. Great, she's not wearing a puffy jacket anymore. She's yeah, ready to go out in the town. she's ready. Yeah, she is a yeah. boss ready for a meeting to like talk oh. about stock options. Mm -hmm. Now, again, like if I was like, I'm over the cucumbers, I can always just, you know, add in a new pair of sunnies or something. Ooh, I'm interested to see what this does. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so uh, anything that you select will be replaced. So yes. if you are trying to do a wig, or hair, and you select the whole head, it is going to turn the entire head into a giant wig. Yes. Uh, so you only want to select the area that you're going to be changed. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Let's see what let's see what happens here. Cool as a cucumber. You know. Cool as a cucumber. Mm -hmm. That's how we are today. And we're gonna we're gonna change this hoodie too. I feel like he needs, he needs a makeover. Why not? You know? Why uh, not? And someone asked me. Whoa. Oh. Oh, I like that one. Ooh, take the green pill. I know. Literally, look how it filled the like hit the bottom of his like you know That's the eyebrows cool. there like it was just like hi you know i wonder if we changed the fruit like if we did like uh Ooh. sunglasses with like kiwi <gasps> Ooh, Lenses? okay, I Let's like that. I like that. Or if we just select the area kiwi of kiwi sunglasses? Yeah. I I'm very interested to see what happens here. Me too. Here. Let's see. I like the kiwi idea. It's yeah, it's just like a little just a little step just to the left. Just a little left. something, you know. Change it up. 
So chat, if you have any yes. ideas of things that you've like always wanted to see, let me know. Um, because that would be really, really cool. Yes, 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 yes. And if you're creating things, tag us um, or use our discords. Okay, there we go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, oh. those are pretty cool. I don't know if it did the Kiwi thing. I feel like maybe it's too it's, it's too forward, it's, too advanced. Yes, and it, it's, I found I mean, I like the shape of these, though, actually. As we do, too. <laughs> as we kooky. played around with stuff, combining materials and objects, yes. sometimes you have to do a little bit of wiggle work yeah. in the room. I know, I think during the last stream, they were trying to make, like, clouds of, like, that look like horses or whatever. Mm. And so you need to play around. Maybe uh, I need to just kind of select just the fruit itself. Yeah, and, and do then like switch. maybe slices of kiwi yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, and if someone is asking to put a hat on, why not? Yeah, We're here let's to serve you, chat. Um, and uh, kiwi. Pankaj, I believe, uh, I do not see the generative fill. Make sure that you are in the Photoshop beta and not the regular Photoshop app. Uh, so you can get it in the yes. Creative Cloud desktop app. You can download that beta. Beautiful. I'm interested to see. This is a fun idea, and again, if you have regular sunglasses, then you maybe could do, uh, like you could change the lenses of the regular sunglasses too. <gasps> there we yes! go! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I wonder so if I need fun. to do like photorealistic, you know, to like really get it more real. Let's give it a shot. And so you can always change that prompt uh, yes. over in the dialog box. Uh, it is a smart layer. I love so these little icons that. just like right here. <laughs> like they look so cool. Yes. <laughs> Okay, how about we add like some sort of beanie to him? Like I feel like he needs oh, a like beanie. Like a hipster beanie? Like a yeah. hipster beanie. Yeah. Uh, tonight does feel like one of those nights to dress up like hipsters. Yes. <laughs> Second yes. Taylor lyric. <laughs> yes, I'm going for five. Ooh, okay. I think I still like kind of the one of the, these oh, early ones. Oh, it kept ones. the, yeah, it, yeah. I, it kept the frames it on those gold frames. ones. It kept the frames, yeah. Interesting. I'm okay. into it. All right, I like this one the most. Yes. So let's so, like, let's do like a, yeah. Do you think it? Do you think it'll register hipster beanie? <laughs> like I don't the, know the key Let's, term hipster. I'm actually very interested to what see color? if it will yellow. It okay. has to be like a burnt yellow. Ooh, okay. that's the hipster color. Burnt I feel like yellow hipster beanie. Let's okay. see what happens. Let's see what I'm happens. I'm very interested. So uh, again, it is trained on Adobe stock, and so I'm yes. guessing there is Adobe stock that is tagged with the word hipster. Okay, yeah, because I mean, even if you like add in like the keyword like artistic or like you know, there's yes. like certain things that come up when you do that. Watch it be like actual hips. <laughs> I I always think about what it could be when I'm like typing something, right. and I'm like, I don't know if I'm like spelling this right or whatever. I'm like, what is it gonna kick oh, out here? Oh my yeah. God. Yes. Wait, I think this Just one's the like hipster one. It's the ribbed. It's the ribbed. Oh, maybe ribbed is the right. Like, I feel like. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like ribbed equals hipster. Yes. Like, <laughs> I love that. Burnt yellow, ribbed beanie. Let's see. Let's see about that. Let's see. Yes. And that's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, someone is asking in oh, no. the chat, if we want to flip over to my screen, uh, someone's saying, uh, idea, remove the need to type realistic into prompts, but instead you can toggle a tool to activate it. Guess what? You can do that over here in Firefly. So if you're using text to image in Firefly, there are all kinds of options and you can do none, you can choose photo. Yes. And so right now I think that it's more photographic. I want it to look like a graphic. So I'm going to click on graphic and it will regenerate these for me and then I'll be able to see what it looks like in a different style. So there's a lot of different styles that you can play with here, and that way you're not having to type in photorealistic. But when you're using generative fill, you're using like the context of the photo, so it helps to give a little more context as you start to type that in. Yeah, yeah. I generated another prompt, and this is like the vibes right here. I think this. Oh yeah, I he's think vibing we're going right with now. this one, right? Like I feel like this. Wow, like I can't believe it took that to that. Man, I was not ready for pretty, it. Pretty, that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, what should we? What should his hoodie be? Ooh, uh, can we put him? Uh, I wonder. If should we put I him... include the hands in the selection? Is what I. Yes, I want to see him. Or maybe I shouldn't and see like how it does what like how it places. Oh, let's do that. I'm interested. You know? Maybe it goes a little bit onto the skin of the wrist. Yeah. I want to see him in a like mascot suit, like Sully from. Um, Monsters Inc. Oh so like maybe gosh. like a like furry uh, don't mm, uh yeah like a like yeah <laughs> something like that I don't know let's see what happens like a furry suit yes <laughs> let me remove this guy what right here 
Web fan. Oh my goodness, she almost killed me. <laughs> Watching the new May 2023 updates with Terry and saw this on the virtual carousel running live. Okay. That's right, we are alive. Woo. Do you have a question? Do you have a comment? Do you have a favorite Taylor Swift song lyric? Um, <laughs> Let me know. All right, so what do we do here? All right, so green furry suit. We're just going to go for it. Let's, Let's see what happens. See what happens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm nervous. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Let's I see. feel like these just get crazier and crazier. I know. And, like, by the time they export, we're just like, oh, my goodness, look what you made me do. That's crazy. Oh, my, look what you made me do. There we go. We're at four, by the way. I got one more during the stream. Oh, Only my gosh. Left. Oh, this is Buddy the Elf. This has become this Buddy, Buddy the, Elf the Elf very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Way refined, buddy, though. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so clearly I probably needed to select a little bit more or yeah. something going on here. But that's really interesting to, to select right into the yeah. wrist to keep those hands mm -hmm. uh, and then select all the way out and around it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's another um, image to one of our lifestyle ones where I also played around a little bit with um, this one right here, where I changed, like I was curious to know, like oh. based on like the, you know, how the sweater is here, if it would know or understand, you know, like what to do. Ooh, and we're toning, we're using camera know, raw. We're, Look we're, at us, he's Photoshop. We're doing a, you know, little, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna open that here. Now I'm gonna do this whole sweater and see if it like I can do like a a red cable knit sweater. Ooh. You know? Well, I'm interested to see if it will do like cable knit. Oh, and we can make multiple selections. So if you wanted to, again, you can hold shift and add to that selection. You can do it across the yes. artboard, wherever you want to go, you can select as much as you want, and then generative fill that. Also, I haven't made this joke and I don't have a way to do it and I forgot all day. I was gonna put a tie on something and call it General Philip. So just know that that was really funny like earlier and I forgot to tell you that joke. Pretend oh, like no. it happened organically. Uh, oh, what a, what a funny joke. All right. Knee so, slapper. Yes, we're filling here, looking good. Seeing um, if it'll do exactly, like based on just the, like, the way that the, you know, the sweater is falling on the model now. <gasps> yep. Oh my goodness, we went from a lavender haze to oh red. Oh my gosh. Look, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay, I kind of am interested to see if maybe it'll like, maybe I'll change this water bottle into like a purple water bottle or something. Why not? Or we like, have like three minutes left. Or a left, red so we have water time. bottle or yes. something. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna include the shadow because I do want it to, to consider also, well, what, like the I, color oh. of the shadow, you know, like if it's a red, if it's like Can a red Can you include one? the shadow and let's, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested. Uh, someone asking, is the content being generated locally or on the cloud? You do have to have an internet connection to use generative <laughs> fill. Um, so in, in a million tiny pieces floating above our heads, you do need an internet connection to be able to use generative fill. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna put in an orange red water bottle with shadow. Just, just, sure. just, gonna, just gonna try that. Yeah. I don't know if we need the with shadow, but we'll I know, do it with the shadow. I know, I don't know either, but we'll see, yeah. we'll see what happens. We got a couple minutes here. Uh, so okay. make sure while this is rendering, make sure you stick around because after this, there will be a whole session talking about how to write a good prompt. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, wow. Okay, even oh. if it's not a red one though, like this is pretty amazing. Yeah, and the reflections are good. And look at, hold on, zoom, zoom in on the uh, shadow. Look at the shadow turning orange. Yes. You can see that it's reflecting that color from the water bottle. Oh my gosh. Oh, Wait, let me do a purple crazy. water bottle. Purple, lavender, Let haze. me do it without the shadow and see what happens. Yes. Okay. Wow, that's pretty, really impressive. And of course it also filled in, even though like I selected around, you know, so there was like a little bit of the grass and the cement. <gasps> oh, so cool. That is, Insane! Look at look oh, at the look color. At the, look at the look at the uh, look at the reflection. Look at the reflection. Oh. Oh. Uh, so can't wait to try the new Photoshop tricks tonight. When Terry removed the goat using things, yes. Uh, so that is amazing. Tonight, work on removing objects. You can also use the remove tool. So remove or generate generative fill, and then tomorrow come back and generate some new images. Right? You have days. You have weeks. You have months to play around with this stuff yes. and discover what you can imagine here in the future of Photoshop. Oh my right? goodness! Ooh. Let me see if it'll do. Like maybe I just want to change a completely different color of 
Dumbo. Let's dumbbells. see what happens. Yeah. So one Air last minute Bella render. Uh, we'll get this in here. So today we have been with Arabella of Weekend Creative. Yes. Uh, we have been working and showing. And a with workflow. the amazing Andrew Hockrattle. Me. Hello. Uh, we've been showing <laughs> workflows for product photographers, which has been really helpful. I love being able to see. Just the amount Just of Just how teams. I can use those yes. tools differently than, say, a company. Like, what? Insane. Magic. What Isn't other options that do we have? Wild. Nice. Awesome. I mean, that's amazing. Amazing, right? So it all depends on who you are, what you do, you know, and you're going to see some amazing results. Yes, we have like this, 15 so. seconds. What is some advice that you have for creatives that are playing around with this today? Oh, gosh. Just, just be open to the results <laughs> because, you know, you might not get to the right result. Yep. and the first go. So just like be a little bit patient and just, I think if you can figure out how to communicate, especially with the prompts, yes. like that is Play key. And, and I think in the next In the next session, day. look at you. Yeah, next session, stick yes. around. We'll teach you how to make a prompt. And again, if you get a bad one, thumbs down. If you get a good one, thumbs up. Let us know in that feedback. See you guys in five minutes. Bye. Bye.
Hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Adobe Live. Uh, really excited to be here. I'm Danielle Morimoto, and I'm a design manager here at Adobe, and I am joined by Samantha Warren. And we are really excited. We're streaming live from San Francisco, so let us new, know where you're tuning in from. We're going to be talking a bit about how to create better prompts. We know that today on the stream, if you've been tuning in earlier, there's been a lot around generative fill, which is really exciting. Uh, but we definitely want to show something different and talk a little bit on this stream about Firefly and how you can use it for client work um, and just how to better create those prompts. Uh, so yeah, I would love if, like Samantha, you want to introduce yourself yeah. to everyone on the stream as well. Hey everyone, my name is Samantha Warren and I'm the design director for um, machine intelligence and new technology, which is like a really big, long way of saying making cool stuff like Firefly. <laughs> so excited to be here today with you all um, and looking forward to kind of the tips and tricks that we've learned with just playing and having fun with Firefly um, for text to image, but also um, ideas for how it might actually work into a, like your client work stream. Yeah, and I think the cool thing is like we have Samantha here and like this is like the actual stuff that you're like playing with. So if you have feedback, if you have like ideas of what you want to see, if you have questions, like send them through in the chat. We're here to talk with you all and just be able to kind of riff ideas and like talk about how you're experiencing like creating prompts today. Um, so I see Natalie's joining us from Utah. Hello, um, Speedy's in the chat. Uh, definitely continue to let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, and we'd love to hear ideas. If you have something that you would like to prompt or like maybe try um, combining styles or something wild while we're kind of working through things, we'd love to hear about it in the chat. Definitely. All right, I mean, with that, I think let's kind of get rolling. I, I mean, we talked a little bit about how like with client work, even just like from the start, it's just like, what is the client's actual like look and feel? Like how do you help them maybe even define their brand if they aren't don't already have one so that you know like how to better create prompts and like what it is that you actually want to make. So I think that's like the process we kind of want to start from today. Yeah, I think one of the most interesting things that I've experienced working with clients is that trying to encapsulate a client's style or evolve it like from a brand that they might previously have, that's one of the most exciting things, but it's sometimes you know, needs a little bit of help. Like yep. sometimes, you, you know, you can Google stuff or think about words. And I think that's what's interesting with Firefly or in particular with text to image, taking words, which is the language that we all use in order to communicate things and using it as a jumping off point, a way to kind of come up with better ideas for your clients um, to apply and maybe evolve their styles. And so I know we just said a whole lot, but we'd love to kind of take you into Firefly and talk a little bit about what we're, um, we're thinking with prompting in particular. So today we actually have a client we're gonna use as our example, which is the uh, Redwood Grove Music Festival. Um, Music festival time's right around the corner. <laughs> Almost summer. Well. Summer time. <laughs> um, we're here in the San Francisco Bay Area right now. And um, I think there's a lot of really fun stuff that you can do when you're evolving a client's brand, specifically around like, you know, social media collateral or posters and stuff. And I think Firefly is a really cool way to get started. And so um, with that, maybe we go ahead and go to Firefly and just start to type in some stuff to get some ideas. Um, one of the things I love about Firefly is the fact that there's these kind of example images here at the beginning. And so you could start very easily by just kind of picking an example image that might feel like something that has to do with your client, for example, like um, here's this tree or here's this kind of interesting unicorn. I think starting there actually gives you a prompt to begin with. And so um, let's actually just try that to begin with. Um, I love this unicorn in a magical grove. We talked about a redwood grove. And so you start yeah. to kind of get this interesting lighting and stuff um, as a potential area to, to explore. Um, but using kind of these prompts here at the bottom as um, clues and how you might write a better prompt. Yeah, and the thing I like about the example ones is sometimes I, I'm curious, like, what is the word that they use to actually get that? Because I, maybe I want a very similar look to it and they can give me ideas as well. So that's also one way if you're trying to figure out, like, what's the exact look that you want to get? Like, this one does look magical, but would, I, would that have been the word that I use? I may have come up with a couple different words. So I think the examples are really helpful. And then you can kind of riff off of that or um, just kind of play around. And so, for example, I'm just changing one word here to, to get started. like thinking about this in a way to kind of iterate. So we know that our music festival is in a redwood grove. So I've added redwood grove, but I've also noticed 
kind of like concept art and fantasy here. And that's kind of helping me realize that that's, that those are the styles associated with this in order to get kind of this look and feel that I like. So let's generate and see what that brings us just by changing one word. I feel like we have to have like generated music. music. And then, yeah, I was like, <laughs> so like already yeah. you're seeing like a, a lot of change here, right? Like it's got the same still kind of look and feel around being um, magical. Um, it's extremely detailed. There's lots of like really interesting um, aspects of the um, the composition that kind of have um, unique detail here. But then you also get the redwoods in the background. And so maybe we take our unicorn out and replace it with an amphitheater, an amphitheater and a magical wood, wood, a redwood grove, because we know that this is going to be a music festival. Let's see what that gives us. We have music. people coming in from like all over the place. I see people joining us from Norway, Norway and Poland. <laughs> wow, uh, Netherlands. For us, we have the UK, Dominican Republic, all over. Thank you all for joining. So already I'm getting pretty cool stuff. Honestly, like the amphitheater <laughs> is really cool because um, it's still like nature, which is not necessarily what I would have thought to put in there. Like it's kind of growing out of it, which yeah, I really like. Yeah, it's like really kind of embedded with the imagery and like the the landscape here. I love this, um, this uh, image here in the bottom left hand corner where there's actually like a tree creating the amphitheater. So I'm going to go ahead and just start downloading some of these. And as you can see, when I start downloading them, they actually, um, if you're not familiar with how Firefly works, there's this ability um, for us to be able to embed that it is a generated image within the image, um, which is, I think, one of the coolest things about um, Firefly. Um, hit continue. And I'm just going to start downloading a bunch of these so that I can um, start to throw them in a library. So when we start actually working on our social media posts, we can bring them all up in context of our apps. And I think maybe we'll pull up my screen at the same time, because I'm really curious, like, as you're typing those in, like, I kind of want to type something similar and just start to, I think, play with this fact that we want to maybe have maybe the same content, but when we're working with a client, we might want to present them with two different looks and feels. And so, again, like, I'm also getting very different things, like, from what you had, and I love, like, this kind of find similar feature, like, if I like one and kind of riff off of that, so I may start to do that. And, like, add to, we have a shared library because we're going to work together on these assets, which would be great, but it would be good to start to see, like, if we do want to, like, have the exact same thing, but I want to make it, like, winter time, or I want to make it just, like, a completely different like neon look, you know, yeah. versus kind of whimsical, like what do we want that to be? So right now I have fantasy and concept art down in the bottom right hand okay. corner. What do you have, Danielle? Same thing? Right now I just have the fantasy. I don't have art selected here, but I may start to just change this up a little bit to see what else I can get from here. So maybe I'll take off fantasy. I'm going to actually try layered paper and take off fantasy and see how that kind of compares. I think I'll do Synthwave. I'm really curious, kind of like a very diff totally different than like the magical kind of feeling. Yeah. And so maybe I'll do like warmer, like change some of the color tone to something warmer. Let's see. Prompt you, you never know music. what you're gonna get. I'm like, never ooh, ooh, okay. Oh Synthwave. wow. Very different look and feel Very here. different. So already we're starting to deviate quite a lot on the style and producing different kind of options because that's one of the things when working with clients. You know, you want to be able to give them options, but you want to be able to also kind of bring them to the best possible options. So being able to narrow it down to lots of really, really good content that they can choose from, I mean, that only like helps in the whole entire process. Yeah, it's crazy seeing like the one of the both of ours like next to each other. I am wondering like how I'm, I might want to refine mine a little bit because I think my amphitheater is looking very different than your amphitheater and mine's kind of more of a structure with a cover top which I might want to give it more detail to try and refine it a little bit more. So and I'd say like an open amphitheater and just see if that helps it. Yeah, let's see what that does. And I'm actually going to add people to mine because I feel like it does kind of look empty right now. Yeah. So in an amphitheater, a crowded. Oh, that helped mine a lot, actually. Ooh, so I have less coverage on it. Some interesting ones. Let's try a crowded amphitheater to see what that gives us. 
But I mean, I think a big part of what we're really trying to explore here is, is how like very small changes in the way that you start to write prompts can really drastically enhance the number of options, the number of variations and styles that you can come up with. So wow, this kind of flattened out the entire scene, but I love I love how we've got this sort of winter scene but in the bottom left-hand corner <laughs> that I didn't even really intend to have. But we have much more of a coliseum kind of feel, I think. Maybe um, a crowded music amphitheater with a band. Let's see how that gets, uh, where that gets us. Oh wow, I see we have people joining from Germany and Sweden and Australia. Midnight in Sweden, wow. Thanks for what, tuning in so late. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing up so late? <laughs> oh, there you go, you got a little bit of a different kind of structure there. Oh yeah, this I is- I kind of like that, I mean, you have people from behind a little bit more. It's just like a different, totally different composition that you can start to play with on that. And I think, like, I really am digging this kind of layered um, paper texture, but I'm wondering if we can even play that up more to feel a little bit more illustrative. So I'm gonna actually sometimes, as you can see here in the bottom, I actually have layered paper as the style that I've chosen. But one thing, one tip that I've kind of picked up on is, is that if you actually can like um, repeat it in the prompt itself, you get a more enhanced version of the style. So um, my syntax isn't great. A crowded music amphitheater with a band in a magical redwood grove, extremely detailed. Um, layered paper. I'm going to type actual layered paper and see how that actually enhances this. Yeah, and I was really just in mind when I started to fill it with people, I also got like a really like a very similar composition which is nice in case we want to do like more like comparison against ours but just different looks and feels. Yeah, so wow, it's really kind of taking on two different looks and feels, but still, again, similar composition. And the layered paper effect, as you can see, is kind of doubled up. It's like super, oh, wow. <laughs> a lot of depth being shown. Um, I'm actually not sure what I'm about to get, but I'm gonna hmm. put layered paper in twice and see if that even gives us more spe spe uh, specificity. <laughs> and I feel like when you do it, sometimes like putting, I don't know if it makes a difference, but like sometimes I have, like you'll see like in my prompt, like a comma and then I'll write something else and then a comma just to kind of separate and kind of group certain things that I really want to be specific about. Um, so like extremely detailed on mine, right? I had like the comma extremely detailed, I think you do as well. Um, but then if I want like layers as well or like ingredient colors, I might just put a comma and then add that extra. So it doesn't have to all be like one sentence. Uh, you can also add commas to try and help like break it up. So there's really a lot more depth that's being shown now that I've put in layered paper twice. So this is maybe a tip we're kind of <laughs> discovering on the fly here, but if you <laughs> double up the actual prompt, you start to get even more extreme versions of that particular style being applied to the image. And so I think this is a really cool look. It's starting to feel very um, like, just kind of like stylistic. It looks really cut out. And I feel like when you added an extra layer, it actually like removed a little bit of the detail. Like it's still detailed, but in a very different way. Like the people don't have as much kind of variation within themselves. They're like abstracted people, and then there's just a bunch of layers. Which yeah. Is cool. Yeah. It feels almost like it has been hand cut and like put together. Yep. And so I also like the, the the real warm colors. I feel like there's something kind of psychedelic about the vibe that you've got going on. And so maybe we continue to move down that direction kind of as two different options. Yeah, and I just decided to change from extremely detailed to extremely simple, because I'm just really curious kind of what I'm gonna get with that. Again, I think that kind of flattened mine a little bit as well. It flattened it, but I really like the, that kind of blue that's happening in the background. Yeah, up here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as we continue to do this, I mean, I think there's a lot of interesting ways for us to continue to explore in this way, but I'm gonna actually start to add a few more of the styles over on the right to see how that actually changes things up because I think that's really the power in Firefly. Writing a good prompt is one equation, part of the equation, but like adding different styles to the prompt actually is this kind of secret power that you have within Firefly in order to like just add a little bit of maybe unexpected serendipity to what it is you're getting. And that's partially what I find really valuable about this for working with clients is that when you're working with clients, you don't always necessarily wanna bring, give them something like predictable. You wanna surprise them. You wanna like exceed expectations. 
Yeah, and I saw that Nova was asking in the chat like if spelling and grammar matters. I think sometimes you'll still be able to type something through, but it will let you know like if you spelled something and it hasn't isn't able to get it, you'll get that error message. So you can go back through and even when I when I spelled amphitheater wrong, and I think yours maybe had it I wrong for a little while, yeah. you'll see it underlined, so you will know kind of what word you, and you can kind of correct that for your prompt as well. And I mean. I actually don't know the technical background for this, but I've had lots of misspelled words go through just fine. I think there's a little bit <laughs> yeah, of yeah. <laughs> there's a little bit of the AI kind of doing some inference for us in that regard. I'm well, kind of liking this one too. I have still like the simple, but this one actually be got, became like a really colorful, like a lot of different colors in here. I'm liking like the shape of the amphitheater in this one as well. If we are doing music festival, because I do feel like some of them were really magical and kind of like abstract like amphitheaters. And so I did want something that feels maybe a little bit more realistic if we are going to use this for like actual, like, you know, social. And I love that one because it feels very like if, you know, this is a music festival in the Bay Area, golden hour is so beautiful. Uh, so golden yeah. hour is the time right before the sun goes down in San Francisco. And it really casts a beautiful light and shadow across everything. And so it feels very, very much like that kind of vibe you would get if you were at that amphitheater during that period of time. I like that, yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead. I'm realizing right now we're doing social media like um, as the kind of um, the example or the concept that we're generating in order to you know put forward these ideas for a client. And so I noticed that um, we've been working in landscape, but um, I'd probably want to do a square because we're going to definitely do some Instagram posts here. So I love that up in the upper right hand corner, if you're not familiar with this with Firefly, you can actually change the aspect ratio really easily. It's just this drop down. You can do landscape, portrait, square, or widescreen. Um, and so just to kind of give a better idea of what it is going to look like when we actually start to apply it in context, switching it to square is a, a very fast way to get that kind of um, compositional um, insight before necessarily bringing it into your app. Yeah, the one on the very right hand side has like the people have so much kind of texture. You want to make them a little bigger? Yeah. I'm curious. Oh, so interesting. I, it almost looks carved. It does. It looks there. like woodcut almost. Yeah. yeah, I think there's something fun about that. So I'm going to download that one as well. Um, I'm going to download a bunch of these. And so we can start to kind of put them into actually Photoshop and download them and um, add some additional text and stuff. And so, OK, we have now kind of two very clear styles, but <sighs> You know, what is what happens when you need some ideas around this for like a brand, for example? And so one of the things I've always really enjoyed doing is trying to get creative and thinking outside the box for the words you use to describe a brand. So I'm actually going to go over to Photoshop for a moment. Um, I've set up these artboards to kind of help in defining some of the different, like creating space to define some of the different styles. But I have over here on the left the text and copy for the festival that we're going to actually be using. And so a lot of times what I do is I'll actually start with text even in my Photoshop file. Just think about like what are some other ways to get outside of the box in describing what it is we're doing. And so um, I have these questions I go to all the time. <laughs> um, like. You know, what if this particular music festival had a celebrity spokesperson? Who would be the celebrity spokesperson? And that sounds like a really hmm. weird question to ask. But the reason I ask that is because when you start to think about things in terms of describing a person versus a thing or an event or a brand, you actually get more creative words that can go in your prompt. So I know this is, bear with me, this is a real stretch, but like <laughs> if this particular music festival was a celebrity spokesperson, who do you think it would be, Danielle? Ooh, I know. As soon as you said that, I'm like, okay, <laughs> how many celebrity names do I know? Do you have some <laughs> options? Uh, anyway, also in the chat, please, if you have like celebrity spokespeople for this, let us know. Who do I'm you curious. think of when you think of like um, redwoods or like camping, or, like glamping? California could be maybe part of it. I mean, that's part of what's really interesting about prompting is the words that you use can actually really help a lot in kind of coming up with an interesting idea. And I think, you know, a person might be a really interesting place to start. So I'm just thinking about uh, California. There's like, you know, the California bear. There's a bear on the California flag. Are you familiar? That I am familiar with, thank goodness. Yeah, I'm who's, familiar with the bear. Who's a famous person from California? <laughs> Steph Curry. 
<laughs> oh, okay. If we're talking sports, yeah, yeah, okay. Steph Curry absolutely <laughs> runs this place. So tell me a little bit about <laughs> Steph Curry. What, what's something you think about with Steph Curry? Um, words to describe Steph Curry. Just yeah. the general associations. Yeah. Um, I think joy. I think playful. Um, let's see. What else? He's tall. He's tall. Like Redwoods. Th th there we go. Yep. <laughs> There's no wrong answers here. Steffy boy. Hmm. He's fast. Yeah, he's versatile. Versatile. The best there ever was. No. The um, best there ever was. <laughs> I'm like, okay, where's the description? I mean, honestly, though, you can say goat. You can say goat. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here are some words. That Underrated. I mean, <laughs> now I'm on a roll. Now I'm like, you can't stop me. I'm just going to talk about Steph Curry for the rest of the stream. Okay. <laughs> so we've got some adjectives here that we might not have used when thinking about the original prompt. And so we can actually take those over and start to paste them in to our Firefly prompt. And again, this there's no wrong answers. This is just part of brainstorming, right? So um, like a crowded, joyful... So we start to just add these in, pepper in the ad different adjectives. Um, joyful music amphitheater with a band in a magical tall redwood grove. Um, maybe include just words, just kind of add them in. Playful. Um, I'm going to throw versatile in there and just see what that does. Um, and extremely detailed. Let's see how that actually changes things. And again, this is kind of just an experiment. I'm just like throwing these ideas out there. Like how Luca had put in like Willie Nelson, I'm like, oh man, we went with Steph Curry, which is I feel good about, but I also feel like I should have been more prepared. Oh, to talk I didn't about see stuff. Willie Nelson in there. <laughs> Willie Nelson's a, pretty a good one. Too. We should do Willie Nelson yeah. and Rufus Rainway too. We should try more. I think the whole fun in like thinking about a person is just getting outside your comfort zone, how you would necessarily describe a brand or a thing, and thinking about it in terms of different kinds of adjectives. Right, so, like different things you associate with different people. Because the other like like name, and I, I don't even know if he's from California, but when you first said things to him, like Tony Hawk, for whatever reason, that like, came to Hawk. mind. And I'm like, that's a totally different like style and everything <laughs> that goes with it. Um, so what I love about this is just like changing a few different words in the prompt. Um, we added tall, so we've got like really, really tall redwoods now. I think versatile and playful actually gave us a really nice color scheme that was a little different mm -hmm. and potentially a different color palette altogether just based on some of the inputs. Oh my gosh, I see John Muir in there, which is good, but I don't know how to describe John Muir because yeah. <laughs> he's a historical figure. I don't know too much, yeah. Historical would be one of the words then. That we historical. Use. I mean, yeah. that could actually this could work. could be interesting. Well, and playful, I feel like, also changed really, like, what people were doing. Like, they were very kind of stationary before, and I'm seeing, like, a lot more movement with the people, so I feel like it's interesting, yeah, just, like, kind of to see what the different words are, like, kind of adjusting in the images. So we can do the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to actually take off layered paper and concept art this time, but let's like use a few a question, uh, a few um, words from Willie Nelson, for example. Are you a Willie Nelson fan? I don't know too much about Willie Nelson. So my dad is a huge Willie okay. Nelson fan. <laughs> so he actually just recently saw Willie Nelson in concert and said, like, you know, he is still got it. So I think like kind of rugged. Um, uh, he's a lot of fun. Um, he's also really chill. Okay. Um, and uh, he's actually got a song right now out about California. I can't remember the exact lyrics, but I, let's like just add in rugged, fun, and chill, and see how that changes some of the prompts. Also, Luca coming in with Tony Hawk is from California, California legend. <laughs> <Nice>. Okay. <laughs> so me up. I'm gonna change playful to rugged. Um, and I'm going to kind of um, add in um, chill instead of crowded, uh, joyful music. I'm going to try to cha change it to chill and just see how that changes our prompts. Magic prompting, generating music <laughs> happening here. Okay, so it gives it a little bit more of a different vibe. Definitely. I feel like the colors changed to a little bit more muted, to be honest, than what it was before. I feel like when it was playful, it was a little bit more vibrant, too. Yeah, and let's actually, I'm going to go ahead and put in fun versus versatile. See if that helps. Actually, I'm going to say relaxed, because you know what? Willie Nelson, he knows how to relax. <laughs> All right, let's try relax. And still, like, kind of giving us a little bit, you're right, like, deeper look. I'm going to go ahead and download some of these. 
I like the trees on the... Which one on, on the right? On the right, yeah, they're interesting. All right, so I feel like we've done a lot now with this kind of look and feel already, but do we want to maybe take the, the more psychedelic one? Yeah, I feel like I want to try some of the same words so that we have the, a little bit of contrast going on too. Should we do the same people and like kind of same words or riff on someone else? Let's, well, there's other questions we could ask. So one of the questions that I also like to ask is, um, so if we were gonna take a car to, or a, a mode of transportation to the music festival, what mode of transportation would you take? Ooh. Bike. Yeah. Bike. And then how would you describe the bike? So like, I think of bikes as being, um, there's either like cruisers, like kind of like more relaxed, or like if you're going for speed, right, kind of like, I don't know, because there's commuter bikes and then there's kind of like road bikes where you're kind of going a little bit faster for efficiency. But I'm probably not doing that for this music festival. I'm just gonna be chill on a cruiser. When I'm, I feel like when I'm on a cruiser bike, like I feel free, mm -hmm. like it is freeing feeling. So free, um, free spirited even. I like that one. Um, yeah, I mean, environmentally friendly. Okay, so let's try some of maybe these words and then hop over to, to Danielle's and try them in her, in, with her seed. Go with an open, free-spirited amphitheater in a magical grove. What other words do we have? So, uh, free spirited, environmentally friendly. Okay. Friendly, I think, is a good one. And a kind of filled with a lot of. I'm trying to decide if I want to put like friendly people or like in a magical friendly grove, like where to kind of drop that in. Let's go with magical friendly grove. And we'll go from there, starting with that, and see what we get. It starts to change it a little bit. It changes it a little bit. I think I'm liking this feel. Like this gets a little space-like with this guy in the back. I wonder about like adding free spirited because I think spirited might actually give it kind of a misty look. Do you think? Well, I have free spirit in the front here, but it maybe did. it's not quite. Huh. Magical. What if we did more like whimsical? Yeah, in here instead? I like whimsical. I mean, there's a lot about riding a bike that feels very whimsical. Yeah. I like how Natalie put uh, in the chat an old hippie <laughs> like Volkswagen bus. <laughs> oh my gosh, Some we good should language totally there. Do That's that. actually pretty good. <laughs> that might actually be a fun next prompt to start on is like thinking about what it would be like if we were taking the magic bus <laughs> to the concert. Oh my gosh. Cuz that would also be very San Francisco. That would. Okay, I removed warm tones just to see what I was getting, but I actually feel like I'm going to add that back cuz I did like what it was doing. And sometimes I kind of like to remove and just see, like if I've made a lot of changes to my prompt and I'm curious like what was the thing that kind of tweaked it, I might turn it off for a second or just like remove one of the words and then kind of go back and forth sometimes. But I liked also like your trees. I feel like I'm, I feel like I need to be more specific about the trees in here. Like you had tall trees before. I think I'm losing some of the trees, which I definitely want from my prompt as well. So an magical grow filled with, I think I'm gonna put, Tall trees. Maybe tall redwoods. Yes, okay. Tall redwood trees. There we go. I think that helped a lot. I like where that's going. I really mm -hmm. like that second one from the left with the t trees look here. really tall, yeah. yeah. I like the lighting kind of coming in here as well. So I'll save this one just in case. I'm feeling like we're having a lot of good options. I may soon, like I think we'll riff on these for a little and then I may start adding some of mine to our library, like shared library as oh, well. Oh, that's a good call. To, yeah. So while so you're doing that, that, I'll add a few more because I, I'm thinking maybe we might want to just throw it out there and do something completely different. And like, so what would be a totally different option for this, like I do like the idea of the the school bus or the the Volkswagen mm -hmm. bus. What? How would you describe a Volkswagen bus? Um, I think they're playful. I think of like summertime. Like I definitely think kind of more season seasonality. Um, I think they're quirky. 
Yeah, quirky's a great one. And they can be loud, <laughs> super loud, um, kind of uh, uncomfortable. Retro or Ooh. I, might be a good word. Oh, I love retro. Okay, let's take these and I'm actually gonna compose a new prompt using um, original the original words. Like, so we know it's a music amphitheater with a band and a ma magical tall redwood grove, but we're gonna add in here, um, summertime scene, uh, quirky atmosphere. Um, and I'm gonna actually at the back of the, just say kind of retro vibes and see what that gives us. And um, again, kind of just spitballing here with the words we're using and seeing what um, what's built from it. I also think it'd be fun to figure out like if we want, people always are like, even with this like magical whimsical, it's like, do we want creatures or like something? Like I could also see us like oh, playing yeah. with just that as well, like taking an even more like super playful, like abstract kind of look at it. Yeah, let's try whimsical, whimsical creatures. And I feel like everything we've done so far is like some version of bright. So maybe we try like dark forest. Mm. Or it could be like nighttime versus a lot of ours oh, kind yeah. of day. In, Although I do feel like mine, maybe some of them have a little bit of daytime or like dusk or I don't know, words, like evening. <laughs> Ooh, so we've got like this moon vibe like going on moon. here. It still does feel a lot like, I, so I think we need to come up with something a little bit different. So let's maybe try over here on the right hand side, really playing around with these different styles. As you can see here, there's like the all, there's popular movements, themes, techniques, effects, and materials, and concepts. There's a lot to choose from over here. Do you have any go-tos, Danielle, that you like to use? Um, let me look. From here, I mean, I always, I like the, I mean, I used the Synthwave one already on mine. I think like looking at materials, you did layered paper. I sometimes like to play with the technique, like like a doodle or line drawing, like the lino cut one. Sometimes I feel like it just gives you like a little extra, like the hand drawn look. Like something totally different. Yeah. Let's try like line drawing and see just like what that does. Yeah. Or, and watercolor is also an interesting one to kind of get like yeah. a really drastically different look than I feel like at least we've been playing with so far. So the line cut kind of gives us a little bit more of an illust um, illustrative look. Yeah, I feel like it gives you just a little bit more of the like outlines on everything, a little bit of a darker and like detailed look, especially on like the trunks of the trees, I feel like. I'm gonna add watercolor and see what that does. Oh, in combo with line drawing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, so it starts to kind of give you the li like the lino cut like lines around it, but then also like a little bit of a watercolor fill. I'm digging this. Um, Maybe we kind of come up with a style that's a little bit more, I feel like retro vibes is like a little bit being missed here. So I'm gonna actually take that and put it at the beginning and see if that changes how I'm getting stuff. So maybe like retro style, um, maybe we add like 1960s retro I was gonna style. say, I think with retro also, I feel like there's like kind of pops of color. Like I feel like there's a difference in the color that I might associate. Let's see what that gives us. Ooh, so definitely a little bit more like a hand drawn. I kind of oh, like this. Way more hand drawn, yeah. Feels a little bit like um, like a an illustration book. The trees over here are totally wild. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. The moon in the last one's funny too. I know the moon is pretty great. I'm very gonna download abstract, that one. I like abstract. that one a lot. Um, awesome. So I'm gonna download some of these. Well, and I went over, if we go over to my screen really quickly. So I'm actually working, like gonna work a little bit in Adobe Express and then I think you may end up in like Photoshop. So we'll like kind of show two different tools of like how you might take your things from, from Firefly and bring them into the next phase of starting to like composite things and bring it together for social collateral. So I, we have a shared library already set up and I have in here like some templates, um, just one that I kind of already saw that might be a good like poster option. And then for the assets, I just clicked on add assets and very quickly like brought in all the Firefly um, downloads that we already have and that way they're on my computer and they're on yours so you can access them um, and we can just kind of share and start to see what we want to build out. 
And so while Danielle's doing that, I'm actually doing the same thing. I'm just starting to drop all my stuff in the library. So you'll actually Perfect. probably see it start to pop up in her library as well. Yeah, and I think I might just start to dive into and just start to see, like, even in this template, I'm just, I may end up looking for other ones as well because we have specific kind of like dimensions. I'm trying to decide like, do I want a social post where this is like the entire background image and I just layer stuff on top or do I want it to be like cut off kind of and just kind of in the background, like just bits and pieces of it showing. So like, I'm just gonna see like, what do we have in here that I might wanna replace it with? So I'll go over to the libraries panel. Um, I already clicked replace for this image and then the Redwood Grove, which is our library. And now all of those assets are here and I know yours are still loading in. Um, but since these were all kind of like center aligned, I'm just curious, maybe I'll click this one. Oh, interesting. This. So it just pops right into that template in, in Express. Yeah. So Danielle's gonna be working in Express, I'm gonna work in Photoshop, so you'll kinda of see a little bit of a different uh, approach to each one of these. Yeah, and I do have to rotate this because the one previously was angled differently. So let's kind of expand this out. I feel like I'm only going to be able to get a little bit in this kind of view. So this may not be the best template for what I'm kind of thinking about. So I may play with another one or I could kind of riff on this, send this like to the back and kind of start to like layer things on top of it. But I think I'm going to check out some of the other templates they have here as well. Let it save, let it do its thing. Yeah, and I think Natalie said, I think for yours too, like what about pop art that was popular in the 60s? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, we can also, I mean, one of the nice things about doing this sort of exercise is that it helps with writing the prompts, but it also helps with thinking about things like the font you might choose within the application to kind of help to um, to enhance the, the style that you're showing your client for the particular image that you're pairing it with. Like, Sometimes I think about actually picking a font is a lot like <laughs> picking a prompt, right? Like if you think yeah. about the feeling and the words you would use. Um, so there's a lot of really similar correlations there to that. Yeah, and I decided I'm gonna go through and maybe find an Instagram post template that already exists, knowing that we kind of already have that square format and just kind of look through here. I'm seeing seasonal travel, kind of minimal ones. I can do that straight in the editor here, or if I go back to home really quickly, I may also just search for like music festival overall and see what kind of templates there are. Here we go. Soundwaves. I could do something really simple to start with, which is basically I could just have the background kind of like in the back and then put some text on top, like maybe change out like this icon and do some different things like layers in here. So I might start riffing on that. So I'm gonna replace this back in our libraries. Let's see, Robert Grove. Was there one of these mystical, magical ones that we liked most? Oh, oh, I'm seeing a lot of yours now too. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to view all. We have a lot in here <laughs> to play from. I, I mean, realized. that's the nice thing is like when working with Firefly, it's so fast, you can iterate so fast. So like, People talk about like, you know, what are the advantages of using AI? I mean, one of them is just the number of options you have. I mean, yeah. like a lot of times in photography, people talk about like, what is the secret to a good photograph? It's taking a lot of photographs. So it's kind of like photographs, um, taking a lot of like ideas and just building them out really, really quickly. And it gives you so many more opportunities. When I feel like the cool thing too is then if we have these two drastically different versions. Like I think if we go over to your screen, you're starting to kind of pull these in so we can see them a little bit closer. We could take that to the client and start to say, this is what I meant by these things. Like which one of these is resonating with you or what are the things that you're liking about each of these? And you do that a lot faster than you could before. Like before you'd just be going and like spending quite a bit of time to make these. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when you're kind of coming up with a style for a client and you're working through all these different options, it's really a conversation that you're having, right? Like you're trying to figure out what's inside of that person's head and get it out into their actual, um, their brand collateral and their their uh, poster or their social media post. Um, and sometimes it's kind of a little bit of a game of back and forth. And that's what's really nice about 
um, generative AI and Firefly, just this ability to be able to come up with lots and lots of ideas to have those conversations. And I'm just scaling some of these. Um, right now I kind of have kind of four different looks. The, the two on the right sort of are kind of looking this similar. I'm gonna probably go back through and see if I can find one that's a little bit more different just to give that variety so that the like there's a really good conversation with the client about like what it is that's resonating or what sort of options they like. Um, kind of being able to combine different things. I'm gonna actually take, I'm gonna replace this one on top with this one. Cause I kind of like this sort of like weird tree growth thing. <laughs> Um, and so as I'm starting to put this together, I actually, one of the things I really enjoy doing is, is pairing these words that we use with the prompts with, you know, the text. So we know that it's gonna be, the, it's gonna say the Redwood Grove Music Festival. And this is kind of a little bit of the difference between working in Photoshop versus Express. Express sort of starts with an idea and you start to modify it. Whereas I'm kind of working with the blank canvas here. Um, so Redwood Grove Music Festival. I'm just gonna start with highlighting it and going up here to my fonts. And I've got, oh my gosh, a lot of fonts to pick <laughs> from. It's always so daunting, oh my gosh. Um, so I am a big fan of Adobe fonts. Um, and sometimes I just like to start from scratch instead of just looking at the list of what I already have. So um, going up to actually my Creative Cloud little uh, icon in the upper right hand corner, I can actually go from where I've been working in the library that we have to a place where I can actually look at what fonts I have activated on, um, on my Creative Cloud subscription and go to browse more fonts. And this is always a ton of fun. I love <laughs> I love going to the Adobe Fonts website because it's kind of like being in a candy store <laughs> and just being able to pick stuff. So I'm thinking about some of the words we were using when we were actually doing our prompting. And this is where the tie-in comes in, right? Like, so um, Danielle, do you remember, like, was this like psychedelic? Did you use the word psychedelic to describe this one? This no, upper left I hand? think I had like magical, maybe whimsical in there as well. Okay. Yeah. So using that same exact word from the prompt actually to kind of um, look at um, how we might search for a, a, a font on Adobe Fonts. Whimsical. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that out, see what we get. We have this one from Design Army. I love Sans. I'm not feeling that one as much. Let's try another one. We have a question coming through in the chat around like how long until the tools come out of beta and can we use them for marketing? I don't know if you wanna speak a little bit towards that. Yeah, so we're still working on that strategy. Um, we One of the things that's been really exciting about Firefly is that we put it out in beta so that we could get feedback on how people would want to use the product. So we've heard pretty loud and clear that uh, people wanna be able to use this stuff commercially with their clients. And so we're working on that strategy. It's a still TBD. It's um, something we're in the process of doing, um, but it hasn't quite gotten to the point where we can use it commercially with clients yet. So that's part of the reason why we're doing this in terms of kind of like a bit of a mood boarding sort of exercise. This may not be the final collateral that we would deliver to a client, but it's a way to get feedback on the words we're using and the styles that are really resonating with them so that we can develop it and use it for things like also picking a font or picking other imagery that they might want. And so it's kind of a st jumping off point, really. So just going back to my fonts, I still haven't found one that I'm really super stoked on. Let's see what we have here. Um, one of the things I love about Adobe fonts is that similar to Firefly, you actually have these kind of styles over here in the left where it kind of gives you ideas before you necessarily have to dive into them. So I'm gonna use brush pen as an example. And as you can see here, you start to get kind of these more whimsical type of fonts that you might wanna use. And so I'm thinking, um, I really kinda like Air Royale. So I'm gonna view family, quickly activate one font, hit okay. Um, and what you will actually see is, is so this is going to be um, called Cinema Script. So over here, I will actually look for Cinema Script in my really long list, as you can <laughs> see. Uh, I have a font problem. 
a really bad font problem. <laughs> I'm like, uh, meanwhile, I'm an express, and like <laughs> my fonts are very different options here. I mean, I was starting to play with, um, so I have like one of the images in the background here, and then started to take the text, and very quickly, like there's this option to kind of have like curved text, which was one thing I decided to just like mess around with, and it made me think, well, maybe I can put something kind of in the center of this text, like maybe a little like tree icon, like little drawing or something like that. Um, I probably want like the music, like the festival date on here as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit more text too of just like when this is happening. Um, but I, I think based off of the layout, like of this image, like at first I sort of had like bold text kind of in the center, but I don't want the whole thing like fully center aligned. I'm not, for now, that's not what I'm thinking. So I'm just gonna go over to like design assets or actually there's some shapes in here too. And I already typed in like redwood tree and I was thinking of maybe pulling I don't know, something like this in. I'm gonna change the color of this though. Scale it down. And just start to play with something here. I don't know, it kind of looks like a little bit of like an emblem or something that can start to like mess around with. Oh yeah. Um, and like put like more of like a bold, like the date that people should kind of know about this thing. But dang, I'm really into this like layered, uh, <laughs> textured like cutout image you made on the back, in the back here. That's definitely one of my favorite styles on Firefly. I love the textured layered um, look that you can get from it. It's just so unique and something so different than you can kind of find anywhere else. And it would be such a hard style to be able to do by making it yourself. Like, I would take so long. It's saving so much time. Yeah. And so as you can see here, I'm just kind of adding some text to each of these to sort of pair them up with different feels. I'm like, what dates did we say this was? July, okay. So I'm just curious, like maybe, I'd love to hear from like the 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 um, community, but how many of you have used Firefly for mood boarding so far? Is this something that um, you have any experience with? I'd love to hear like other ideas around like how this works conceptually. This, for me, I feel like Firefly is just such a great like serendipitous generator of ideas. Um, and so um, I'd love to hear more and more ideas from the community on what you all have been using this stuff for. Because for me, it's not just about the images. It's also about like the fonts and the colors. I mean, like even here, I would probably start to build out a little bit of a color palette um, around like uh, what, what Firefly produced here. You could bring a color palette from this. You could bring textures from it. There's so many different things you can start to like build off of this based on just just what Firefly produced for you. Yeah. Yeah, I see in the comments, let's see, your font <laughs> your font list looks just as chaotic as mine. I, I like know. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my font list is a little bit of a um, like hot mess right now, so apologies for that. But I mean like that's kind of the reality of being a designer, right? We all love fonts. <laughs> And sometimes you collect a few too many. I mean, that's one of the reasons I love Adobe fonts is because like, as you can see here, you can activate and um, unactivate them as much as possible, but I don't really unactivate them very often. I'm sure I'm sure someone, <laughs> someone <laughs> is judging me for that out there, but um, I just really, really enjoy having them all at my disposal all the time. And um, that's one of my favorite things about the Creative Cloud, honestly, is the ability to be able to kind of try lots of fonts all of the time. And sometimes it can be kind of overwhelming. And actually, you, as you can see here, I'm actually able to um, kind of uh, sort my font list here in Photoshop based on some of the different filters that they have. Um, decorative is a fun one, for example, where you can get kind of some crazy ones if you want, um, but trying them there on Canvas is one of the advantages. So just kind of going through, making some changes. Again, I don't necessarily think it has to be like perfectly designed for something that you're just showing to a client. like. Just getting their reaction is so important and so helpful. Yeah, and I'm just starting to mess around with like this layout a little bit more. A couple of the details in here, the date and where it is. I liked it the other way. There we go. And I know we're almost at time, but one of the things I did want to kind of like talk a little bit about before we jumped off is, is just like we really we're doing text to image this whole time, but there's a lot of really fun mood boarding kind of stuff you can do with 
the um, text effects module as well. And so before we go, I'm gonna just for fun put in um, Redwood. <laughs> Whimsical Grove. And actually my text is gonna be Redwood. And just see what we can do with that. Sometimes it provides with um, like just a new and different idea that I would have never thought of. So generate. Oh, I spelled. <laughs> Woo, designers writing Redwood. words. <laughs> oh, wow. So that actually gives us a pretty cool effect there. I like the W. In this one. The W is really fun with, and then it's just kind of all these like little gnarled bits and pieces. I think that's a, this kind of experiment is just, I think also really helpful for, for thinking about how you might write the prompts too. Let's try. And I know like Albert was responding a little bit to your like how question to the chat, which was like, how do you use Firefly today? Um, and Albert was saying to generate elements to be used in composite and Photoshop. So definitely a lot of like compositing, generating those assets. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here. I like, I'm such a big fan of compositing. I feel like it's such a magic art. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it all come together. Um, I think that for especially being able to use the different elements and kind of getting that vibe and getting things that you might not be able to create really quickly, like how long would it take you to actually composite something that looks like this? Yeah. Well, and for those, for those of you that have seen the new like generative fill, I feel like that's also like kind of a different way to composite now um, and kind of think about like adding elements into your images. So that's also like, there's kind of a lot of cool different ways to be generating images and doing compositing. And so, yeah, I mean, I know that we talked a lot about generative fill before the two of us came on today, but if you are just tuning in and you're not familiar, we did launch generative fill today, which is the ability to be able to kind of go in and generate things right there in place by masking different parts of the image out, which is a lot of fun. Um, but for example, we'll do a really quick one where maybe we put a hat on her. And it matches the style too, which we were just chatting about before this, because I feel like I was playing with the one where it's more of kind of like a painted, illustrated look. Um, and I was like changing, adding someone's like hair to the person and it oh. looked pretty good. Wow, that looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good hat. So like, yeah. Yeah, I want to see the other hat options. Oh, puffy. very fuzzy hats. Oh, well, that's okay. That was an interesting one. I put in puffy one. hat, so I guess it's yeah. really using a lot of um, just like uh, taking a lot of liberties with the word puffy. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of fun stuff to check out on the Firefly website. We're always updating it. That's the other thing. Like, there's things that are being added all the time. We've ha got have um, generative uh, recolor. Obviously, there's some things that are coming soon too, and so we encourage you to take a look to see what is going to be here in the future, and checking back often. But um, today, our go-to has been text to image for kind of putting together these ideas around like creating styles and prompts for. Um, how we might work better with clients. Yeah, because generative fill, it's basically like new, like try it out on if you're in the like beta. Um, that one's like going, that one is in like Photoshop, so that if you are like a Photoshop user, uh, really fun to like check out how you might use that within the application. And then like Samantha mentioned, all of these other ones, like you'll see the, a little tag that says in exploration on the Firefly flight um, site. So you can actually see like, what is it that like we're working on, like text to pattern or text to vector. Uh, text to template, sketch to image, like all these are very cool and you'll just continue to see them like pushed out that you guys can play with and give us feedback. So we just gave this little you... critter a skateboard. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we also give him a little cap. He I needs like know. a little tiny hat or like a bow. Maybe a bow. Oh, wait, something. hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, was, I was a little trigger happy there. It was just too exciting for the moment. I'm regenerating. And Brian was asking, is generative fill available for the Photoshop beta on Mac? So it is available on Photoshop beta. Um, so definitely check it out. Yeah, if you go into the creative, your Creative Cloud app and you go over to um, the, what is it? The beta, beta apps in here. Yeah, beta apps on the left-hand side of your Creative Cloud. Um, over here to your beta apps, then you can uh, grab the latest version of Photoshop beta and that's where you'll be able to test out the new generative fill. And if you don't have it, you can definitely just go to the Firefly site. 
Um, but yeah, appreciate all of you who have tuned in today. Uh, we're like really excited that we were able to spend the time. Uh, thank you again and check out the new beta, check out Generative Fill, um, go over to Firefly and leave us uh, some feedback and uh, play around with the tools. And just have fun. I mean, that's kind of the whole point in this. And that's what's been really fun about working on this particular project is, is that it's been as much fun working on the project as it is <laughs> actually using the product. And so it's really exciting to see all of the amazing things that you all make. So continue to keep making things with Firefly and contribute it back and share it on social media and put it into our, um, into our gallery. <laughs> we like I, seeing it all. We yeah. love seeing it all. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. <laughs>